Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to the Pulp MX Show, presented by Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, and Decal Works. <laughs> Coming at you! It's Monday, July 1st. Happy Canada Day, everybody. Happy NHL Free Agent Signing Day as well. We'll break down all the Toronto Maple Leaf signings soon. 702-586-7857. You got a call? You want to talk Southwick? You want to talk something else? Let me know, man. Uh, love to have you guys watching and listening. Thank you for all the support over the years, and thanks for using the codes to save on Uh It's great. Great to have you on board. Nice show today. Nice show. I think we're going to learn some things. We're going to listen. We're going to learn. We're going to laugh. Joey Savacci will call in. Joey Savacci from Triumph. Uh, he will uh, talk about his uh, top five race in Southwick. Our resident grump, Phil Nicoletti, 9-9 for eighth overall. Phil will be on the line. Kyle Webster's from Australia and uh, raced his first ever AMA National to uh, got a seventh in the second moto. We'll talk to Kyle Webster from the uh, Firepower Mobile X uh, Honda team. And uh, Adam Cien Cirillo, which I got to admit, and I'm going to mention this to Adam, kind of weird to see Adam interview guys that he was racing with uh, two months ago. But, um, yeah, lots to get into tonight on the show. Uh, thank you to Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, Race Tech, X-Brand Goggles, Renthal, Michelin, a Chair Beast, Firepower, Maxima, OGO, Renegade Race Fuels, Atlas Neck Brace, Guts Racing, Pro Filter, FMF, Works Connection, MotorSignatureJobs.com, Get Data, WUSA, Wisco Piston, Rocky Ridge Trucks, Factory Chassis Parts, MTX Braking, Ethica, Luxon, Troll Training, all on board with us tonight. And uh, as are you people as well, 702-586-PULP. Like I said, uh, give us a call. Give us a ring. In studio with me from RacerX, Pulp MX, Kiefer Inc. Testing, the Chris Kiefer. What's up, buddy? Hi. Thanks for that cough in the beginning. I thought my mic was I know, off. I know. Usually my mic is off. Usually it is. So, yeah, you're, you're my right. bad. Uh, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, you're jet lagged? A little bit. A little bit jet lagged? We'll be all right. I got some coffee in here. brought my uh, sidekick to yep. help me drive, yep. so we're good. I've got your teammate on the line. They're calling in. Joey's My teammate. Here. Yeah, your exactly. Teammate? Yeah. Joe, Joe Dog. You're just going to poke all show, aren't you? Uh, no. Would I do that? No. I wouldn't You do would that. never lead anybody to the edge, would no, you? No, I'm not going to do that. No, of course uh, not. But, uh, huh. 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 <laughs> uh, taking your phone calls over there in the corner, holding these down. The Talon Taylor. What's up, Lone Wolf? What's up, Steven? How's the e-biking going? Uh, it hasn't been great the last week. We've been busy, but um, okay. All right. apparently I'm getting my own official e-bike, so yeah. we're going to hit it don't hard. Don't you got to put so many miles in to get your own? Yeah, though? yeah. He's jumping the gun. Okay. I don't know what the requirements are, but we uh, will do whatever it, it needs fired. to happen. I would that. say put 100 miles in and he gets a bike. We need to see effort. That's all. We just need to see yeah, effort. We're not, we're not seeing it right now. It's also 115 out right now, but well, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll make it happen. How bad do you want it? We, we want it. How, how's we things, want it. How's things at motorsport.com? Good. Yeah. Uh, rental bars, purple bars. Get them now. Okay. They're in? Yes. We have been placing order for them, and people have been receiving them. Okay. So, yeah, Fantastic. we should be good. Good to know. The rental uh, limited edition purple bars. Man, people love I can't believe they, they – I don't understand. People it. lose their minds over these rental like, bars. The rental bar is good, but yeah. the, the color, purple, Dude, isn't – If you if you have a certain kind of bike, great. Right. But – What do you do after that? A Honda? No. No. A blue Yamaha? No. Suzuki? No. No. KTM orange? No, no, <laughs> and they're selling them. <laughs> they are. Crazy. We are in the minority. With I the wonder purple. if that makes them want to sell other colors. I don't know. Hmm. We could call Paul. Yeah. Uh, working the cameras today. Uh, first time solo mission. Yep. On his own. Yep. No tethering. Nope. Nothing going on. Nope. The Nick Powers. What's up, Nick? How are you? How you doing, boys? Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, Keep for us questions later yes. on the show. Oh boy. Are we gonna wait till later? Yeah, let's wait till later. Okay. People want to hear Southwick talk. And do they? Yeah, oh. they do. We'll save the keeper after <laughs> our talk. Uh, all right, everybody. Let's talk some Southwick. Uh, lots to get into. Uh, Deegs won again. That's four wins in five races. Jet won again. Four wins in five races. Uh, speaking of uh, Southwick, this man was on the mic this weekend. Jason Thomas, what's up, JT? Not too much. Uh, I wanted to add, I think purple goes with the KTM. Like a lot of uh, stylists would put purple and orange together so I, maybe leave ktm on the list actually he is right because the 24 ktm has some purple in it so jt is right okay um fly racing fly racing.com um jt the the 2025 fly racing will debut be debuted at washougal uh yeah we're actually doing it a little earlier than normal at uh thursday night motocross at oh, PIR. PIR. So, yeah um yeah 
Yes, that'll be fun. But yes, of course, for most of the people out there, they'll they'll see it at Washougal for the uh, yep. for Pro Motor Cross Race. So privateers are going to debut it. Yeah, that's how we will fly. Yeah, nice. We're not an elitist company like FXR and others. <laughs> we we give them out to everybody. Can we get a sneak peek of it at all? No, uh, sir. You you work for a competitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What am I going to do with some, like, what do you think I'm going to do? Yeah, we send it to FXR. Oh, oh my sabotage? God. Yeah, sabotage. They, exactly. All you gear companies see each other's stuff before it's out anyway. All you guys Corporate know. Corporate espionage? Yeah. You guys know what you, you're doing. Hey, for actually, JT, for the first time ever, maybe, and he's going to hear this from Andy, I'm sure, he's not wearing FXR shirt on the show tonight. He's actually not wearing it. I couldn't believe it. I do are get you, Are you coming back home? Maybe he wants the invite to PIR. <laughs> no, the I don't. The first time that you're coming back home? Good old days. Okay, uh, let's talk Southwick. Okay. Um, okay, so I think if you're Chase Sexton, you got another Giselle type of race. Yes, you do. Uh, you're gonna take. You're gonna take that win, and be like, "I got this. I can do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Is mine. Like, watch this. You know, he's only a few points out of the lead. If you're Jet Lawrence, you're like, "Bro, I could barely hang on. I still won the overall. Right. Let's back it down." And if you're Hunter Lawrence, you're like, hey, mate, I got the red plate. You guys can suck it. I've been the best rider with the most points through five races. Am I right on all of that, Kiefer? Like, every guy can legitimately justify their race. There's always, with those three guys, there's going to be a positive for everybody, right? Yeah. And what's weird about Chase is his MO lately, and JT can probably talk more about this, is there's always some glimmer of hope that he can leave with, like, He'll have something really disastrous happen, and then he will win the next moto. It's like he wasn't uh, really that good in the first moto, I feel like. He was no. okay. Yeah. But, like, the second moto, you're like, where did all this come from? And then he leaves Southwick going, oh, yeah, we're yeah. good. Everything's but, fine. But me, the neutral observer, the guy that's just watching him and has nothing at stake and doesn't, I don't care one way or another, Yeah, I look at a second moto, JT, and I'm like, yeah, you kind of only won because Jet could barely hang on. Nah. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there. Right. I mean, that's that's what makes racing great, right? Like the bench racing is all time, and I'm getting it from every side on, on social and and message boards. People are angry about Stay whatever off you say, boards. right? Stay if, off message boards. It's not no, I, I know, but it's just, I mean, it's what makes racing awesome, though, right? Because mm -hmm. if you are a Sexton fan, you can lean in the fact that he's, I, and I do believe he's the fittest of the bunch. Like he's the strongest guy, and he got it done, and he almost got it done at high point. So, yeah, there, there's definitely something there. He's, he's passed Jet a couple times now this season. Like, that's that's something, you know. He couldn't do it at all before. So, right. there's definitely progress been made. But I am a pretty big fan of Jet and, and his talent. And I also – and I said it on the, on the broadcast. Like, I don't think he's riding at 100%. I think he's kind of doing what he can. You know, the first moto, I think, was a much better depiction of what his top-end ability is. And at some point, you have to think he's going to get back to that. And when he's, if they're all 100%, I think he's the best guy. And and really by a bit of a margin. Yeah. So you're so, you're with me. Like you're with me. Where if, I am. If, I just if that. But but Sexton fans don't want to hear that. Well, right? I, yeah, so, that's fine. That's that's I get it. But I like that. I like that. I like the fact that everybody can kind of like the keeper said. Everybody can kind of take something away right. and be like have a legitimate argument. Yeah. I may not agree with it, right. but it's legitimate because last year there was nothing. It was just like, if you were a Sexton fan or if you were anybody fan other than Jet, you were just like, yeah, we're getting our butts kicked here. Like, he, what are we going to do? You know, He was better last year, faster laps, led more laps, uh, won more races, super cross-wise. Chase was on the Honda than he has been on KTM. And had Jet not ate shit, and hurt his shoulder. I think Jets won every moto. I just. You I think just, he wins every moto still? I do. Hmm. I do, man. The oh, guy. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't think you can. I, I don't know I, I, how you could make an argument against that. Like for sure, the first moto hangs down. Yeah, he's, he's in on the lead. his way to checking right. out. He's on his lead. Right? Yeah. Second second moto, Jet or uh, Sexton crashes. You're going to tell me that Jet doesn't win that moto if he's healthy? Uh, I would take any and all bets against that. And then the moto at Thunder Valley against Hunter, like. I'm pretty sure he would win that if he was healthy. So, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I get, I take a lot of heat for being, you know, people call me a Jet fanboy or whatever, but I'm trying to be as objective as I can, but I, I'm also supposed to call it like I see it, and that's how I see it. You know, it's, it's crazy when people say a fanboy, but look at Jet leaves nothing on the table for us to really doubt him. 
Unless, he's won four of the That's five. what I'm saying. Racist. So, like, when you talk about him, you talk about him winning, and people just think you're automatically just sucking on his dong. But yeah. you're not. You're just talking about, like, how dominant sure. he is. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a history with them. I don't, I'm not necessarily friends with them or anything. Like, I'm, this is my analysis. This is right. what I see. And if it happens to be praise that I think he deserves, then guess what? That's what it's going to be. You know, that's, but there's, there's no other way to put it. Like I was saying off the top, though, like, and I, and I, and I, and I would never call Chase, you know, I would never say Chase is crazy for taking his passing of Jet and going on to the, to the lead as a confidence booster. That's what these guys have to do. That's what you have to do. And Hunter has to be like, I still got the red plate. I've still been the best rider through 10 motos. You know, but he has, has he been the best rider through 10 motos? Sure. I I'm question. just saying this is what I'm putting myself in a position of these riders. Um, right. And, and so that's cool. Like it's, and it's great for all of us to keep talking. I can see yeah. positive points for all these guys. However, again, me being the neutral guy off to the side, I'd have nothing to gain or lose by anybody leading. I think Jet's the best guy. Same and for me. And, and, I, I don't care who wins or loses. Yeah, that's not what we're there for. Yeah. When we yeah. talk about all this, I feel like you guys put asterisks on things. Like, oh, because of – because of this, because of that. Yeah. That's part of riding and racing motocross. Like, you're going to ride through injuries. You're going to be hurt. Sure. So, like, I don't feel like we should do that as much as we do when we talk about all these things. Like, but Jet you, is the fastest okay. guy, but he's hurt. Like, well, but when it you doesn't have, matter. But when you have someone who goes 22 and 0. I understand that. And, that, you know, it's obvious that. But that is the past. We're living in now. So, we got to talk about now. He has an injury. He's yeah. not riding up to his potential. But that's motocross. Period. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, but it's no. also leaning into what we're going to see moving forward. Unless, unless you are of the opinion that Jet just never gets any better than this. If you don't think he gets any better right, than well. he is right now, healthy, fitness, like nothing improves, then sure, this is what it's going to be. I don't personally believe that to be the case. Like I think he will con- continue to get better. I thought the first moto at, at Southwick was a huge step forward right. and much closer to what he's capable of which that's going to slowly come back. This was probably the toughest race on his body, right? Like yeah. you're constantly pushing and pulling the motorcycle. You're using your core the whole time. This was a big test. And I, I think he was, I don't know, 70% of the way back to where he wants to be. Like, I don't mean seven, riding at 70%. I mean, the first moto was a pretty good indicator that he's better than he was. And then the second moto was a clear signal that he's not where he needs to be. Uh, I just think he's going to get better from here. That's all. Let me ask this question, and JT, you might know this. So let's say we all agree that Jet is a bit better in general than everyone else, right? How do these I, other? I think it's really hard to say if not. Yeah. Yeah. How do these other guys? Okay, and they know this, right? If everyone's getting better, like, oh, Chase is going to get better, but Jet will get better as well. So there's always this gap, right, between each rider because he's that much better. Will we ever see anyone? close the gap because if Jet's not hurt and these guys, other guys are not hurt and they all race together, I don't see anyone catching that gap, right? I mean, we saw Ricky Carmichael and, <laughs> and James Stewart for a long time. Yeah, uh, That's I think, what I'm saying. I think Chase is yeah. capable. I, I think that Chase has the, the ability to do it. Uh, his top end speed, if everything's clicking, I, I think he can. We've seen it in qualifying sessions. We've seen flashes of it. The, the problem is, is that I think Jet, in most cases, when he's healthy, kind of sucks the air out of the room and doesn't leave you any room for mistakes. Correct. And Chase, unfortunately, has been prone to mistakes over the last couple of years, and you just can't afford those against Jet. So, yeah. to me, that's really the question, is can Chase be his best self all the time, which in well, turn will give him a chance to beat Jet in the championship. And, and let's not forget, like, he lost by 17 seconds in Moto1, but he didn't get second to Jet. He got third. Right. Like Hunter beat him by whatever uh, eleven seconds or you know whatever it was. Like Hunter was noticeably better yeah, than Hunter's him. been fantastic. Yeah. Make no mistake. Yeah. His rookie season. He's a points leader after five rounds. He deserves a ton of credit. No question. And I, it's it's wild to think he's getting overshadowed. Even well, in this conversation, he's getting overshadowed, and he's still the point. That player. was my next point. Someone on Twitter tweeted me that today. Someone on X. I'm still going to say Twitter. I don't, yeah, I don't I, know. But someone said, are, you, are we overlooking Hunter? You know, and, and I replied to him, well, there's ups and downs with Chase and Jet, crashes and injuries that, that, at that equals discussion. But, yeah, I think we are overlooking Jet – or Hunter, sorry, a little yeah. bit. Absolutely. Hunter's yeah, been really I good. think we, we talked about this Sunday night. You know, at what point – and I don't think you really wanted to kind of go there yet. But I think at one – at 
some point here, if the status quo keeps going the same way and we don't have anyone really break away, at some point we've got to really take Hunter seriously in this championship because he's still going to be leading the points. He's still hanging in there. I think right now there's this unfair feeling of inevitability that Jed is going to retake the points lead and start to pull away. Yeah, that's me. Well, yeah, 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 I'm I know. And, and, and deep down me too, you know, but I'm trying to be objective and fair to Hunter because he would probably stick his hand up mm-hmm. and, you know, his heart of hearts and say, Hey, like, don't forget about me. I'm, I, I took the points lead and I haven't given it back yet. And we've raced a bunch of motos since then. Jason you know? Thomas. So, from, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, no. I was just oh, going to say at some yeah. point we have to, yeah. That has to become yeah. reality. We, of like, hey, man, like, this is getting real now. Well, we have, we, it's 22 motos. We're 10 down. And he's at the red plate. Yep. Right. Uh, Jason Thomas, fly racing, fly racing.com. 25 years of fly. Come on back, Kiefer. <laughs> come on back home. Uh, yeah. Come on back. FXR is great. FXR great company. is awesome. Great company, but come on back. <laughs> we need that uh, K Dub drop. The uh, yeah. come home, we <laughs> miss you. Yeah. Uh, about Hunter. If I'm leaning towards who do I have to choose if we're just removing Jet for a second yeah. between Chase or Hunter, I'm going to lean towards Hunter for the rest of the series just based on bike, period. Yeah. Because the Honda has been more consistent for their riders than Chase has with KTM. Chase, I don't think there's – none of us three on the line can dispute that Chase's highs are higher than Hunter, right? Yes, but the lows are way lower. Right, right. But, but I'm just saying, like, is that – we all agree on that? I would say, like, well, like, so far, go, so far in in motorcross, yes. Yeah, but I, mean, I think in, in supercross, that that wasn't true. Really, you I, still don't think so? I, the lows were. I don't think Chase's lows were low. Like Hunter had some really poor races in there. Oh no, I just meant. So I meant. Can we agree that Chase's highs are higher? Oh yeah, than yeah. Well, yes. Keeper said the lows are yeah. not as low. Right. I think yes, in motocross that's been. Yeah, true, yeah, but. yeah. I just think Chase has been setting you know himself up for a good bike, and he's trying to do that, but. Um, it it seems obvious every track they go to they're chasing something like yeah. that bike is never know, the same and we talked to, we're like leave it alone right and then, yeah. and then he said well i ran my hangtown spec and it i it didn't work yeah so you look at the honda they're back on what they like from last year suspension wise yeah. and it's been great yep so right hey so give, you got to give chase credit though on the podium all he said i've got to ride better Waitley, yeah, right. He has not said anything no. other than, you know what the problem is? Is me. I'm not riding well enough. So I, I, I give him a ton of respect because he is a guy that wants to change the bike all the time. And we've seen guys come in and say, yeah, I just I missed the setup. I went in the wrong direction. I did this and that. And I know it drives Steve crazy. So when they don't do that, even if deep down they think like I should have changed to this or that or whatever. When the camera's on you yeah. and a direct question is asked, when you just take it head on and say, yep, I got to ride better than that, I, I think that deserves a lot of respect. Riding like a sack of potatoes. Well, I like it that I know that's not the case. It's the bike. And I think he's tired of saying, I got to change my bike. Or I got to um, do this. I even, think he's just well, he's just like, look, I'm going to take it on myself for a while. And I like that because I know for a fact it's more the bike than it is him. Okay, Sure. Um, but I like I, I just like JT. I like the fact that you just own it. Yes, you just own it. Absolutely. Because in our sport, most of it is rider. Most of it is rider. At that level, though. Yes. Ah, but still, most of it's rider. Man, I don't know. Carmichael and his uh, awesome setup there. You, you think that that thing worked pretty good for, for him? For him. Seven zero two five eight six seven eight five seven. We got a lot of people on the phones. Uh, coming up with Joey Savacci as well, and um, yeah, Savach. So uh, Keith. Keith. Keep for I think to just to touch on that before we move on, yeah. he's still giving instruction as to what to do with the motorcycle too, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, yeah. the technicians can only go off of his direction. Yep, you're right to a certain extent. Uh, but at some point, a rider is going to not know what to do. He's going to need help somewhere, sure. right? You yeah. know, here's what I'm feeling. What can we do? And yeah. How up. many times have we all seen riders just spin everything in circles, though? Right. Like you just. Try everything and get back to where you started. You don't even know where you are. As yeah, far as but, like I, I've seen that happen. So but many times. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. I've seen it happen a hundred times. But you know, the teams, especially nowadays, not so much back in the day, but nowadays, if a team just says, "Hey, man, you got to ride better," that's the word these riders just throw in the towel. Then you have to just be oh, like, really? "Okay, cool, man." So if they say, "Hey, man, this is what we got for yeah, right now," they just you, say, no, "Fuck it." Yeah, you 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 have to be like, "Okay, man, sure, we'll try that link again." Hmm. Sure, man. We'll Placebo go back. effect works then. You know, be, well, if if the team's given up, then the rider, you know, right. he, he ain't going to. Pretty, uh, too, so. I think in that same breath, it's, you know, Honda deserves credit for being like, you know what? Okay, 
let's just go back. If, because it from – and I know Steve, you've talked to them about this as well. It didn't sound like this was a very easy change to make, to just go back to the 23 setting. They were not prepared to do this at all. Oh, Honda. Honda right? guys. They're yeah, like, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, so – on the other end of that spectrum, when you're talking about bike changes and going bike, they're just like, you know what? We're just going to have to swallow the fact that this isn't working and we're going to go back. And, I mean, if you want to give credit where it's due, Jet and Hunter seem to be right. Yeah, That's show up. better they've gotten. The components weren't available, I guess, and somehow then they had to make them available because what happens is yeah. a lot of teams just recycle this stuff and send it back to Japan or crush it or, or whatever. They get new stuff. But somehow Showa, Honda, everybody got together and – found these components to make it work like 23 um we have uh and it's, i mean it's working though yeah. like you can oh, yeah. tell how much better they are yeah. from you know those changes right uh brandon's on four he wants to uh, talk to you jt brandon welcome to the show uh what's your question for jt yeah i've got um well two things uh but first off i, I just wanted to tell jt he's doing an amazing job on the broadcast i think he really adds a lot Thanks, to man. it so i just want to say keep up the good Trying. work for that so you're not one of those guys on the message boards that hate JT then? Absolutely okay. not. Right. No. Cool. He's great. Uh, what else, Brandon? Uh, so I, I'm just a little confused on how we could say that. I mean, I know Hunter's the points leader, but I don't know why we need to take him for real. Honestly, at this point, I mean, Jet's going to get better. I'm, I'm pretty sure Sexton's going to continue to improve and win motos. And they're both just three points down, and unless you think – Hunter's going to come out and win the first moto at Redbud, then that points lead yeah. gone. Well, Brent, I think that that's the question, right? Is like we we're kind of asking at what point do we have to get serious about this? Because I would have thought it would already have gone away. Like I thought this would have changed. And I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I don't think that Hunter should be the favorite to win this championship from here. All I'm saying though, is at some point, if this keeps going this way, he keeps finding ways to keep the red plate, we're going to have to look at it at some point. That was really more it. Not that I'm there. I'm just, like, okay. wondering, am I going to get there, be forced to get there at some point? Yeah, you never know. I mean, the, yeah. He could just end up right. going second and thirds himself, and there could be some ups and downs more, and he's going to hold on to it for another week or two, you know? Yeah. I mean, since getting the red plate, has he – extended the points lead or has he always lost points every uh, weekend I think he's always uh, he won a moto when he won that first moto at thunder valley he extended it but then ever since then the last five motos it's gone the other way yeah yeah that's that's what i'm kind of getting at and i think we're gonna see that at red but i'm pretty sure it's gonna either be jet or chase who grabs that uh first moto yeah, i don't think you're gonna overall. get pushed back so i just it, it's just more of I keep waiting for it to happen, and it hasn't happened yet. That's really all. You know, oh. I, I'm, I'm on your side on that. I think it will happen. Okay. Just, Thanks. I just thought it was already already would have happened by now, and it hasn't. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks for the call. All right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Seven zero two five eight six seven eight five seven. So yeah, we're we're on the red bud. Um, you know, Chase is yet to win there, but loves the place. Closest to closest track to his hometown as well. Um, uh, we he got, does ride really well there, though. I mean, oh yeah. Go back to motocross the nations and. He's had some great so, rides. He just hasn't gone he, his way. Here's something that we don't have a lot of time to touch on. but So, Tomac's supposed to come back before the end of the Nationals. I don't know exactly. Something like Buds. Buds. Buds? Okay, no, yeah. Buds, They're yeah. going to try to do it for sure. So, that Buds is two rounds to go. Do you think he just steps into a podium speed? Because mm, I don't. I don't either. Ooh, I mean, he's a, a bad a dude. Really he's a ass. he's a bad dude. But at this point, if these three guys are still going and the championship's getting down the wire, I, I mean, sorry, man, I don't see it. I don't either. I, I think it's more of just getting some gate drops and racing before he gets to Charlotte. That that I think is the mm-hmm. the goal, yeah. right? I don't sure. think he's coming in hot. Like I'm I'm ready. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, is he the so, fourth yeah, place guy I don't though? Expect that. Sure. Yeah. Because there's a big gap. After the third, you know, there wasn't this weekend. Like Sakamoto, AP yeah. was all over Hunter. I know your point. I get your point. Right. But yeah. That yeah. Sakamoto, like uh, AP, was right on Hunter at the end. I just feel like he he is the fourth place guy. If he comes in, I think he's, he's still beating Cooper and AP. I think so. Uh, I yeah. probably. I, I just need pro- to know where how much yeah. he's, how much he's been riding. Like I, that that to me that's the question. Like if he mm-hmm. he rides for two weeks and comes in, like no, he's not going right. to be the fourth place guy. I just there's you know they're so kind of tucked away and we don't really ever know what's happening there so i don't i don't know i don't know what to make of that 
Uh, we got. Um, I have a I, question. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Tickle comes back this week. Yeah. Uh, for Red Bud. Yeah. One, what's his scores? And two, does he beat Phil? Who beats who? Phil or Tickle? Phil beats Tickle. Does he? Really? Really. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. There's nothing like racing. Racing's racing. I understand that. Tickle's been gone for two years. Yeah. Tickle's right around Freddie. Okay. Freddie? He's right around Freddie. Tenth place. That's kind of where Phil's been, though. Yeah, that's eight, yeah. eight to ten. Yeah. Phil, Phil's, Phil's ahead of Freddie. I mean, if Phil doesn't part. get the, a top five start, he, I don't know that he beats Freddie every time. Okay. Like, as you look, like, Harry Kulas, Kyle Webster, 9-10 at Southwick. Those are, those are sand results. Okay, well. You look 12. I think Tickle will be in the fight with Phil, no question. Like, okay. I'm not saying who beats yeah, who, yeah. but Tick is really in shape on a really good bike and really motivated. Uh, like there's just a, there's a lot to racing, right? Like there's a lot of variables. Does Tickle get a good start? Because typically he's not a good starter. Um, like he could get a bad start and never even see Phil. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah. No, Phil puts himself in great positions, and he's coming up on the show to probably complain about the track again. <laughs> he wants to know where all the sand went at Southwick. It's hard. Yeah. Those insides are hard away. packed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. They got like 20 inches of rain the weekend before, so which I guess would wash some of the sand well, away. Correct? Yeah, they just wash all the sand away. Yeah, they tried to bring it back in, but I just don't think you can get it everywhere that matters. Like you truck it back in, but it's not a natural distribution. You know, so right. the the hard spots are going to get harder than normal. Well, talking to Keith, I was talking to Keith Johnson today about it, and he said he thought the rain packed it more than ever. Well, yeah, it was packed. It was hard, yeah. like rock hard in some sections, yeah, but, but it, it wasn't the fluffiness. I'm watching actually 04 Southwick right now, yeah, and it is so much sandier yeah. then than now. It's unbelievable. Uh, Matt's on five. He wants to talk about the Deegan sound test thing. What's up, Matt? Hey, do you hear me? Yeah, we got you. What's going on? Oh, it sounds, it sounds great. Thank, thanks uh, for having me on this show. I've been a longtime listener. My name is Matt Hammer. I'm actually a privateer rider, and I race at Southwick, oh. and I wanted to talk about uh, just Southwick qualifiers, and I actually lost my fast lap time due to sound. I wanted to talk about it. And bring oh, it okay. Up. Yeah, bummer. Uh, they were yeah, they were enforcing sound this weekend uh, pretty hard, I guess. They've been doing it all year, but, um, yeah, there was more people who failed this week for sure. What, uh, what bike do you have and what muffler? So I have a YZ2FDF and I have an FMF exhaust. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, you know, they were failing a lot of FMF exhaust. Even the AMA official told me that when mm -hmm. he pulled me off the track. But I had a question for you guys. I just wanted to bounce off you and just talk about me, you know, a little bit. So in my first practice for Stuba DB, I got a lap time of a 210-117, um, which would have put me 30th overall in combined timing for my fast lap. Mm -hmm. And they pulled me over to sound test, and then they told me that my bike was three decibels over the sound limit, and then the AMA official said, you lose your fast lap time. I didn't even know that. They didn't start my bike. They didn't inform me at tech inspection or anything, because this is my first national year. I just do it for fun. Right. Um, I'm full-time professional firefighter and this is and uh, in the ministry, but this is just something I do for fun. And uh, they, like, go up to the, go up to the rig, get an insert, and, you know, come back out, and we'll test you the next one. They gave me an insert. They didn't give me any rings for the insert. So, essentially, it's like, you know, if I didn't have rings myself, the insert would have just blew out. And I wasn't the only rider who got uh, penalized. Benji Robinson, who, who would have had the fastest qualifier in 2DB with the 205, like the fast 250 class, got penalized yeah, we as well. Yeah, we debunked that. He FMF exhaust. We, we, um, we debunked and then, that. He, uh, he, did not, he would have not have had it. He actually, like, went off the track and then, was trying to come back on and yeah, so he. Was, oh he was really? Like, no, that was definitely not. Yeah, my it wasn't a legit time. Okay, okay. Then it was all right. So I was the only one in the top ten then that got penalized for time. So then I checked the two at the A qualifier number one, and apparently I'm I saw only Anstey got potentially lost fast lap for sound, but no other star rider. It it only said lost fast lap for Anstey, and then Benick and someone else lost it due to jumping on a red, red cross. But yeah. do you guys know if Anstey got penalized for sound? In the it was sound qualifier? from what I know. He did. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. Okay. He went from 7th so, so to 16th. Yeah. And then, so for the second qualifier, I put the insert in, and I go out, and they didn't even, you know, they didn't even sound test me at all. So I lost my first time, obviously. So I went from a 210 to a 214, which put me 56. But then 
in the second 2FDA qualifier, only two bikes failed the sound test, which were Jordan Smith and Daxton Benick of Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha. And what I don't understand is how, like, did their bike get louder, essentially, by sitting one hour on a bike stand under a tent? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it, like, it would. We, it would get louder as you put more time on the bike, as the, as the packing expands. Yes. But with the lap time being slowed down from the track being slower, mm -hmm. would they be on the gas more? Like, wouldn't their lap time be slower since they're on the gas and throttle less? You see what I'm saying? Uh, well, no, I don't think it matters. Well, I understand what he's so? saying. He's saying the track is getting rougher, yeah. so their lap time would be slower, yeah. right? But yeah. That the only Go ahead. Yes. Sorry, no, keep going, Keeper. That's what, that's what I was saying. So um, depends on the rider, so, though. Honestly, sometimes the rider doesn't put a great lap in on the A practice or in the first practice for the A guys, and they, they could have bettered their time the second mo or the second practice, I feel like. Sometimes that happens, even at Southwick. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I just I just think it's something that rarely happens at Southwick because everyone knows, especially being a local guy, that you have to get the time in the first session with the track being so smooth. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially the 2 group, like we get, I'd say, an advantage because we were the first guys on the track, so the yeah. track was the smoothest. And then, you know, the next guys go out, but everyone knows that track is notorious for getting rough pretty quickly and deteriorated pretty quickly. I love the track. It's one of my favorite tracks. Yep. Um, but I just, you know, when I looked at it, you know, if, my, if they did keep my time without it getting penalized, I was the only one in the top ten, I guess, that got penalized for time, I would have been ahead of Mark Finney, uh, yeah. Finnis, a club next rider, in front of Evan Ferry and Talon Hawkins with my time. Sure. But it was, you know, it was a race. And then, Yeah, definitely like FMF, said, FMF's got a bit of an issue with – well, with, with, here's with sound stuff. They, some of these riders need to take a, accountable for what they have. Okay, so if you're coming to a race, you know there's a sound, there's a tech. You guys don't repack your muffler. That's on you. Some of you guys don't run inserts. That's on you. You guys, I see. I walk the pits. I see what you guys are running. Not not everyone, but like, you guys pull the inserts out because of power. You're getting more power. You mm -hmm. think you're getting more power. I have more response. But sometimes yeah. on these Yamahas, they like back pressure, so they will run better with inserts in. But the perception for these guys is, I'm ripping that thing out. AMA doesn't really give a shit. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, I pass. See you later. But I've seen, like, Alec Nagy, he couldn't even pass with stock mufflers on his Honda. Mm -hmm. I gave him mm -hmm. a muffler. He still didn't pass. So there's a couple things. I think the AMA and the sound rule one is dumb. That's just stupid. Yeah. Number two. How they do it is not always apples to apples. And where they do it on the track yeah. affects sound. Granted, everyone has yeah, the same everyone, thing. It's the same thing. Right. right yeah. But I'm saying there has to be some accountability on the riders as well, especially the privateers knowing what you have coming into the event. Because I understand you're on a budget, but at least repack your muffler, put the insert in, and then roll with it. You might have been okay. So you're saying that you didn't pass tech and they put an insert in and then they, they stickered you, you were okay when you left? No. What I, so, yeah, so what I was saying is when I went through tech inspection earlier, like the day before on Friday, they didn't start my bike. Okay. They didn't tell me about the sound, uh, the new style implementation or anything. This is my first national of the year. Okay. I actually showed up as an alternate. I was denied to even race. This goes back even like deeper. I showed up as third alternate in faith and went in faith like, hey, I'm going to, I want to race. I already, you know, got coverage from work, invested thousands of dollars to get there and fuel and parts and everything else. So um, they didn't, like I said, they didn't even start it at all on Friday or let me know. It was after time qualifier session number one and B that they pulled me off the track well, and, yeah, you I know, mean, I get it. my laptop. I get it, man. I understand it. But rules are the rules, right? They sound test. Everybody knows it. We do it every, yeah. do it yeah. every week. Even if they don't tell yeah, you, no. it's that you know that there's a sound rule, right? No, I, I know that there's a sound rule. I guess, is it, you know, I think that the guidelines need to be a little bit more specific. And then I also, like I said, it seems that, you know, in 250A, they just, like I said, aren't all those bikes, the star bikes, the same, same exhaust? They're all FMF exhaust. They're all custom exhaust. I can't buy their exhaust as a consumer. Uh, I'm sponsored by FMF, you, but I don't have access to their exhaust, right? I, from what like, I understand, they, there's I, a couple of different cans. They run yes. different, There's a few different mufflers on there. Exactly. They're not They're yeah. not all in the same muffler, dude. Yeah, they, they, got, they, got stuff, they got different stuff going on for different horsepower packages and different cams and valves and whatever the rider yeah. chooses, you but, know? So, so my, I guess my last, my last thing here is that, 
you know, they need to they need to specify more on the guidelines because with Jordan Smith and Daxon Bank losing their fast lap or antsy, you know, should it be is it subjective? Like, should it be fast lap period or fast lap to that that uh, time qualifier? Right? Because you know they took their fast. It doesn't matter. They're all such fast guys in the in on factory bikes anyway. I'm not I'm not saying that. I just think there needs to be more in the rules and and just to really clarify there because they lost their fast time in set, second session when the track is slower, but they kept their fast time in first session, which essentially made the penalty meaningless. Okay. So, all right, that, Steve, that, that's you, what I mean. Yeah, got it. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks for the call. We got to run. We've got next guest on. Thank all you. Right. Thanks. Do you know the variance? Um, uh, the, three to, three decibels. Three decibels from the time you tech to the time into the moto. Yeah, I think so. Just three dBs any time. Okay. Yeah, you're allowed some got variance. It. Uh, all right, JT. Uh, thanks for calling, man. Fly racing, flyracing.com, Red Bud this weekend. Thanks for the time. No worries, Keeper. Yo, let's, let's talk. It's time, it's time to come home. It's time. Okay, we'll chat. The uh, the, the street lights are on. <laughs> the yeah. lights we, are we left the light come on. Come back home. We left the light on, like Motor uh-huh. Hotel Six. Yeah. <laughs> You're All gonna right. get me in See trouble. You. Get See off you. the phone now. Thank you. Uh, you know what? I can't. I can't flirt and, and try to persuade you. Yeah. They came and wooed you away from us. Yeah. That's bullshit. For turning the favor. Wait till you see the Doing 25 stuff. It is fire. I, I would love to see it. Why don't you send a picture fu- of it, JT? It's fire. It looks unbelievable. I can't. You would. You would pivot. Steve and, said fire. And do something Steve said nefarious. Fire. It's it's unbelievable. <laughs> you won't you won't believe how good it looks. Come home. All right. Thanks, JT. All right. See it. Uh, all right. Right under our next guest here. Uh, Brought to you by the folks at Renthal, Renthal.com. They got mountain bike stuff as well now. I don't know if people know this, but you can get it through Power Sports Dealers. So they got uh, 33, 35 millimeter stems, carbon bars, aluminum bars. Big mountain bike guys at Renthal. They got chain rings as well over there. Uh, so thanks to the folks at Renthal for coming on board. Of course, Honda, Kawasaki, KTM using Renthal. Uh, bringing you our first guest of the night, Joey Savacci. What's up, buddy? How are you? What's going on, Mr. Pulp? We did leave you hanging a little bit. I apologize, but that gentleman had a sound, you know. Issue, which yeah, all this. Who do I bill for the uh, for the weight? I you don't know, or but listen, you know who doesn't have sound problems? Akrabovich. Who? Akrabovich. No. Yeah. They don't. No. Um, listen, sound got you fifth overall this weekend. Thank you, Jordan right. Smith. Sometimes it's better lucky than good. So you crash on the last lap, second moto. Yeah, dude. Like I just yeah I. Finally stopped hearing the Yamaha behind me, and uh, I mean, honestly, it was, I mean, it was the dumbest crash ever, like, it was one of those things where, like, I just, yeah, it was, um, where I tipped over in practice, I don't know what that corner's called, that, that left-hander before you have, like, the, the middle, like, three rollers or whatever, the turning right, you know what I'm talking about? Mm, in the middle? Across in the, across in the mechanics area? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See how you go, you Buck- go to that right, but you, so you back it up, up into that left. Is that like Buckley Berm? Buckley or Berm, yeah, Buckley Berm. Yeah. So yeah. I just, I literally went up into that thing, and I had a little bit less mile an hour than than I had been having because I didn't have pressure, and I guess I just stuffed it, yeah, and just okay. dumped it over, and I, I was okay. I, I thought I was only going to lose one, but the bike was hot, so when I got up, it was having a hard time turning over. So it, it took me a minute to kind of get the thing cranked. Uh, you but probably, uh, Were you stressed that it wasn't going to even start? Were you yeah, a little bit. I was more just like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> again, it, you know, I, I didn't have Jordan breathing down my neck anymore. And it was, I mean, what do you have? I had that right, that left, right, left. I had left, five left. corners left. Yep, yep. And I'm just like laying on the ground at this point. Like, dude, I had nobody behind me. Like, what am I doing? It's one of those things I was kind of just pissed off in general. But, uh. But yeah, I, I, yeah, it was stupid. I mean, but if someone were to tell you Southwick, you're going to get fifth overall, you'd take it, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, before the season started, like I had a, um, you know, a, a quote scorecard for each round, right? Mm-hmm. Like where, for me, statistically, years past, like what strong suit, weak suit, um, you know, where am I good, what's not good, and Southwick for me, like before the season started, when the expectations were sky high, like I want to go win, you know, coming here, like hey, fifth is par. If I can get fifth or better, this is the equivalent of a win to me because, you know, it's, this is my Achilles heel. Like, the, yeah. this, that sand is something that I've, I, I'm i not the greatest in. And, you know, I, I mean, damn, dude, I, I worked hard the last however many months to at least be better at it. So, I mean, yeah, like, fifth was something that I was okay with. It's Starts just, are so big there, too. Starts are so big at Southwick. You get the yeah, grade, you, you know. thankfully, I got – two of my best starts of the year there yep. uh, or I guess three if you count the restart but uh I mean yeah starts are huge like dude you can't 
you can't be eating roost. It's just not not ideal there for you or the bike. And no. uh, yeah, so we made it work. Uh, five six on the day for Joey at, at uh, Southwick, brought to you by Renthal. Also, I, I tweeted this out, Kiefer, but the Renan Triumph look, yeah, is strong. I would say ninety percent of the time looks good. Ninety. Ninety. What's what does? There's it? a couple sets that look great. Okay. Uh, but it has been looking really good lately. Joey, I like the high vis white. I really like yeah. that look. Joey, what, what's your, what's your thought on the look? Um, I mean, I think it's clean. I, I think yeah. it's. I don't want to compare brands, but you know, Pete Fox's history. He's done mm-hmm. done well with where yeah. he's been before. Yep. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I'm torn because I, I love crazy designs, but also at the same time, like the simplicity of just of designs can make something look really good. Yeah. And a lot of the times, like, you know, we have, we have gear that is just very simple, clean yeah. cut style. Yeah. And, and to me, like, I think that is, that is what makes it work. Um, yeah. Sometimes I wish it was a little crazier, but at the same time, what I like, not what consumers like. So. Yeah. No, I like it. I think it looks really strong. Uh, almost every race, like keeper said, um, Hey, so it hasn't quite gone to plan. Um, I think you and I and Chris and maybe some of the listeners would be like, you know, there'd be a few more podiums in there. Um, you know, for you, there'd probably be some more wins from what you were kind of thinking a little bit. But qualifying speed's been good. Starts have been good here and there. Um, if you stay out of trouble, it seems like you're a top five guy, uh, but it hasn't. you haven't been able to stay out of trouble. I, I yeah, can't I boil mean, it down to that. Yeah, I would say my starts, to be honest, haven't been that great. Um, I mean, up, up until this weekend, I think our average starts in like 17th, 16th, like 16.2 or something after the first three or four rounds. So mm-hmm. it was, I mean, definitely like, uh, I mean, it's again, I'm not saying that that's the reason why we haven't done as well as I have, because I mean, I think we've watched Hayden do it, you know, it's doable for sure. Um, but yeah, it's been frustrating a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, to be honest, it's just, I know everybody works hard, but for me, it was like, I'm going to come into this as prepared as possible and do my homework and work on the areas that I know are weak and fix things and have open ears and open minds and, and listen to people. And it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, haven't had much to show for. And that's, you know, I think that's what bums me out the most is like, uh, I honestly, at this point, I'd, I'd rather be getting whole shots and just getting my teeth kicked in than, than kind of being where I'm at um okay. but yeah I mean speed has been good and like I said like I'm comfortable on the motorcycle mm-hmm. uh, this this weekend for me again it's Southwick I didn't expect to come out and go 1-1 you know like I mean it, it's just unrealistic to 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 think that something of that can change seeing as though my whole career it's literally been my Achilles heel you know so going into it it wasn't like hey I'm gonna win it was like hey you know Months and months ago, this is a game plan. Mm-hmm. These are my strong rounds. These are the rounds that I can get away with third and fourth. And there's one round, and I have a picture of it still from months ago, like Southwick. Par is five. So mm-hmm. it was, uh, I mean, it was what it was. I definitely, back to what you said, expected to do better. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't assume I would be doing better. But, again, there's yeah. much work I, I put into it. And as well as I felt like everything went, like, yeah, I wish I had more to show for. But. Um, you know, one thing that I am proud of is that, you know, the, the situation I'm in is it's not due to not being prepared, you know, mm-hmm. like I've done everything I felt like right leading into this and, you know, I, I, I busted my ass and it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, I think have we not had a bike issue and we eliminate three first turn crashes, like, yeah, we could be closer to that top five in points for sure. Yep. Um, yep. But, but then again, it's easy. Woulda, shoulda, coulda, right? We don't, we don't know for sure. So I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say that we could be closer to those guys because I don't know for sure, but I'm, I'm confident that, you know, like this weekend was on paper, maybe to most people didn't look great, but for me in my mind, it was, um, uh, a a roll of the stone for Momenta, if that makes sense. Sure, yeah. Um, how's the bike? Nothing like racing, right? We haven't talked to you since the Nationals started. Um, how's the bike? Honestly, the bike's great. Like, that's one thing that I, uh, leading into the season, was very unsure of. Um, just because, again, like you said, there's nothing like racing. Um, but, like, chassis-wise and suspension, like, I think 
I haven't been to around. I mean, High Point, I struggled just in general. Like, and I think we've kind of narrowed it down to spending the last five months, like honestly, riding sand almost every day, with the exception of a handful of times at Triumph. And then you know, you, you ride sand for so long, and you go to somewhere like High Point where there's ruts like that. Mm-hmm. It's just it's totally different. You know, in the sand, you're you're getting used to letting the bike move around and go where it goes and then when you're in the rut like you you know you can't do that so um yeah other than that though like i I felt really good i haven't come off the track and been like man if my bike was better i could have gone faster it's just uh yeah for for me i need to be better have you changed anything on the bike since round one honestly um i'm trying to think we did we went to some different races um oh oh, oh, you got races oh yeah oh crap we went uh we went Try to extend the bike a little bit um, for Southwick, and we did mess with the shock during the week. Um, actually, Drew, our suspension guy, came down at the Croom National we had, and um, we, we messed around with the shock, kind of a direction or an idea, and just honestly, I'm comfortable with where I'm at. Like my bike feels good. It's I, I'm kind of shying away from changing too much until I get to a point where I'm like, man, my bike is just not working. I can't go that fast. And I haven't gotten to that point yet. So, you know, for me, it's like I line up and I, and I know where it's really good and I know where, okay, maybe it's not the greatest, but I would rather line up with that and, and know what I have than constantly be, be throwing something and hoping that it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was watching Moto2 and Deegan was on your ass. Yep. And then I was like, all right, Joey, all right. And then you just kind of like, all right, go ahead. And you kind of, yeah. it, it looked that way to me. He, That's he what actually, it looked like. He actually answered this on Twitter today. Oh, too. he did? Yeah, but go, okay. no, it's yeah. fine, but yeah. It was. For sure, like, uh, honestly, it, it's a little bit of two things. One, I thought he was a little bit closer. That damn Yamaha is so loud. It's like an Air Force jet taking off behind you every time you get something. Yeah, so a little bit of it, I was like, man, he's he's a lot closer than I thought. But also, like, I struggled so bad in the second moto to find any sort of rhythm or flow. And I'm like, I know who it is. I know he's, he's the fastest guy right now. And I was like, I'm going to make it easy for him and I'm going to try to hop in behind him and see if I can, Jesus, sorry, fireworks going off. Right. Um, I'm going to see if I can learn something, you know, like maybe some blinds, maybe if I can find something that will make my life a little easier. And okay. yeah, I mean, I watched it. It was too easy for sure. But again, <laughs> it was, I didn't think he was that far back. And then the other side is I'm just older dude. Like, what am I going to hold him up for another two corners? Right. Like, uh, yeah, for sure. I'm going to put up a fight in a situation where I feel confident and, and I feel racy, but in that situation, like I just felt like I was kind of like a wounded duck and mm-hmm. I, you know, like I could have fought more for sure, but what am I going to fight for another two, three corners? Like it wasn't at that point in the race where it was a make or break. Like, Oh, if I hold them off for half, half a lot more, like I'm going to break them type thing, you know? So I think maybe, yeah, maybe I was, maybe it was too easy, but you know, my, my intentions were, were, were good. You know, I wanted to try to learn something and see if it would make my life easier, but yeah, it didn't, uh, didn't work. And yeah, definitely didn't look the greatest, but like I said, it, uh, when, when you're struggling, I was looking for something to try to make my life easier. And yeah, that, that wasn't it. Well, that makes sense. What about the class itself? Has the class you're racing in it now, has the class changed? Has it got better? Is it the same as you remember? Um, Sorry, I'm trying to walk through my kids sleeping. Um, it's it's pretty much the same, dude. They're sandy. I mean, like, dude, you watch yeah. you watch Deegan week in and week out have these moments where you're like, oh my god. But you know, for him, it's it's probably normal. It's kind of <laughs> like when it's like when we watch Barsha, right? How many times have you seen Barsha and you're like, wow, that was sketchy, and you probably ask him about it, and he's like, oh, what are you talking about? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, like that scrub in the second moto <laughs> yeah. for Deegs. Yeah, you just like... yeah. And he probably didn't even flinch at it. He's probably like, oh yeah, that was so sick. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so like that part for sure hasn't, hasn't gone away. Um, you know, that is something that we're going to take, um, into this next couple of days of riding and, and implement it into the next couple of weeks is my just opening laps are atrocious. If I'm being honest, like, yeah, you're, uh, you're old, you know? Yeah. You're, you're, but you're, 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 no, he's I, not I, old. He's, he's not even no old fa- yet. He's got no fast twitch muscles left. He's in fine. Him. He's in his prime. Okay. I'm AMA 29. Calm down. <laughs> AMA 29. I'm a, I just, you know, like, I think, like, yeah, sure, like, I'll, I would be curious to see on paper um, opening, you know, from the whole shot line to end the first lap. Like, I don't know if people, have, if anyone's passed more guys than I have on the opening lap just because my starts haven't been that great. Mm-hmm. And I've been able to make moves early. But, like, then 
when I get into a situation like this weekend where where I'm with the big dogs or or these young pups, is, I guess because they're kids, like I haven't had enough explosiveness practice of those super short, intense laps to to do what I need to do with the opening laps. And you know, like not that that's the answer, but I think if I can maintain or keep the gap a lot smaller early, I'll be better in the second half. Okay. Um, and that's just something that, yeah, we're going to try this week, try to shorten it up and try to get a little bit of explosiveness. Cause yeah, like you said, it, I feel it. Like I, my, that fast switch is, yeah, I need to, uh, okay. to activate. I, um, I spoke to someone who shall go nameless that thinks Joey, you sh- obviously look, you got your wife, uh, you got one kid, two kids, three kids. How many kids you? Yeah. Two kids. I'm not on the, I'm not on the school bus program like Zach. Okay. Um, you're not like Tony Alessi. You know, like Tony, yeah. um, but I talked to somebody who's like, he needs to go to Georgia and go ride with more guys like that up in Georgia. Cause I guess besides Jalik, there's other people there or I, I don't really know, but this person thought that you would benefit from riding up there more often. I uh, did. I but mean, you have a life in Florida. So I'm that, you know, I, it's understandable. Well, you know. Yeah. It's hard. Like, you know, uh, it'd be one thing if my wife didn't have her own business and could go with me, but you know, she's got her business and mm-hmm. she works, two other jobs and you know i got a four-year-old and a two-year-old and yeah, yeah. They're, they're at that age where they're you know like even when i leave to go on the race weekends they're like well how many sleeps are you going to be gone so, so at that age where like they like being around me and they're learning and they're growing so it's not easy for me to leave but i don't disagree at all like you know and that's what bummed me out when when zach got hurt and he wasn't going to do the outdoors not that he was full for sure yeah he's trying to right yeah but, you know, it, it looked likely, and then we had Wyatt Kerr down here doing the Canadian Series, and then Chambers was here before GPs. Like, at the beginning, it was a very good circumstance or, or situation because mm-hmm. there was three, four of us riding. Yep. And then, you know, Jack left, and then it was just Wyatt and I, and then Zach, and then Zach got hurt, and then Wyatt left, and then it's just been me. So, yeah, like, me riding by myself is – some guys make it work, you yeah. know, like Eli and RC. And I know there was a different era back then, but Stu, Reed, like they made it work. Yeah, they always had guys. Those Chad had Burner and Stu had Brownie. and Eli had nothing. Dude. Eli got nothing. <laughs> yeah. And, dude, Eli's an alien, right? Yeah. Like, I, he had Zacho and J Mart. Yeah. J Mart yeah. seems like the only guy that can last. <laughs> J Mart's yeah. like, I'm out after a while. Like, right. oh, okay, I'm done. Yeah, but then you know, like look at Jet and Hunter, like they got each other to yeah, push, and for sure. and Hymas is there, and he's probably got them to chase. So, yeah, yeah like, you and Jaleek uh, could really like raise your level, both of you, right? Like, yeah, yep. for sure. Yep. Um, I don't disagree, and like I said, if I had the the sure. freedom to do that, I would. But that's where, like, we had a we had a great plan, and like I said, it's unfortunate Zach got hurt because I do think, uh, I still think, and this is just me seeing what I saw from him riding. Like, I still think he could have been pretty damn good if he would have not gotten hurt and had a proper training camp leading to it like he still is fast and yeah it's just it's it's unfortunate that that happened but yeah i would agree i i could benefit from riding with guys and levi was gone the first three weekends um in california but Mm -hmm. you know we rode a little bit last week i think we're gonna try to ride we're gonna try to ride together maybe one day this week and just gotta try to get a crew together and try to yeah. How to detail that 38 machine, man. Yeah, he's uh, pretty he's good. good. He's pretty good. Strong. <laughs> um, now you can say besides the kids. The kids I can't wait good. for you to get a little faster and get up there, and then he starts insulting your age on the podium, or he's calling you the old man. Or, I don't know who the hey. 17 guy yeah, is. Yeah, who is the 17? Yeah. That's all right, dude. I got something in the back pocket for that. Okay. So I think yes. the, I think there's 17. I think he rode with my dad. Um, uh, tell you what, dude. I, I saw it in practice, but, you know, like I'm not in a position in points or, or anything, like, you know, to, to be sticking my nose where it doesn't belong. But mm-hmm. if I was that 16 machine or uh, or, or Levi, I'd be uh, I'd be doing – I'd be doing anything to stop the momentum right now because, like, yeah. I, I saw I saw Deegan messing with Vial in, in practice, um, revving his bike up at him, scaring him, coming into the corners when he was on a slow lap. And, you know, like, again, I have text messages from before the Supercross season ended. I, I was telling my dad, I said, if they let him, being Deegan, mm-hmm. win the finale and start building confidence coming in the outdoor, he's going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like <laughs> – He's there. <laughs> he, he, he's there. Like, yeah. he doesn't feel like he can put a foot wrong, and he feels like he has these other two mentally beat. And I would argue that he does. Like, you know, it's – he 
he talks the talk, but he walks it. And, you know, it's, there's, I can tell you there's nothing more frustrating than when someone's say, not even talking shit, but you know, they're just running their mouth and and they're able to back it up. And you can't do nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Take it and yeah, I mean, I'd be doing uh, if I was Tom Vial, I'd be doing just about anything, whether it be practice laps, lining up next to him for practice starts. I'd be doing whatever it took to try to try to do something. And uh, I don't even know that would work because he's the type of guy that he thrives off. Yeah, no, absolutely. Renthal bringing you Joey Savacci on the show. Uh, what's the bar band? What are we running these days? You got Fat Bar, right? Mm, yeah, Fat Bar. Um, I don't know. Okay. Isn't it funny how these guys don't fucking know what I they got? I don't. How well, do they not know? Dude, they don't okay, even know. No, listen. No, no, no. Calm down. Listen. Have you seen the last couple of years of my career? Yeah. I've gone from Renthal, ODI, Protate, like. Yeah, but you know what you class. like. You got. You know a yeah, band it, that you like. It's, it's the whatever the Carmichael band is in the Fat Bar. Is it a? Eight twenty. Eight twenty one. Eight twenty one. There you go. Uh, Chris, have you ridden Joey's like race bike? No, you, nothing. You've no. Never done I don't any. see Joey. I never see. Him. No, but I mean, just the motor, like not yeah, no, Joey's I have bike not. exactly, but no, no, I race parts. No, okay, all right. No, that's Ivan's territory. Okay, because man, you look at you look at Joey and Jalik, right? Yep. J- more Jalik starts than Joey's, but you look at their you look at uh, Harif Harumph. Harup. Harup. Okay, there you go. I called it Harumph. <laughs> we'll get there. Lewis was here. Uh, Harup and GPS. Harup. Like, yep. Looks good. Does bike's good. The bike is good. Look, bike is good. I, I got to give full props to Triumph. Like, when you look at Cannondale and Huskies when they came in, and even KTM's and over the years, and like it is hard to build a brand new bike from scratch. Dude, I'm non biased, but obviously I, I I can say whatever I want. But like, dude, the chassis is is extremely good in my opinion. Like they've they've done a great job. It is. Stiff, but not rigid, and it's not soft enough to where you're getting flex. Like, dude, they they did a great a good job. job. Yeah, no, listen, I full props to them, man. It's it's what they're doing is hard. They've won heat they, races and podiums and whole they, shots. They got and, good guys over there, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> and honestly, I think one thing too that like I didn't take into consideration, and in me being a rider and and hard headed and mm-hmm. everything else you want to call me, but like, dude, little things like having data from previous years, you just don't yeah. realize how much that yeah. helps. And, you know, so for us, we're going to these rounds and it's not that we're struggling, but like, if we are, we have nothing to fall back on. And, you know, like it's little things like that, that I guess I just didn't think about coming into it that have caught me by surprise a little bit Yep. that it's just like, oh man, I I get it. Like, we don't know necessarily what the right direction is because we haven't been here before, but yeah, like little things like that. But, you know, aside from that. They've just done. They've done a great job considering how much time they've had. I mean, Chris, uh, we rode the bikes three months ago. Hopefully, sometime soon, the media gets their bikes. <laughs> It'd be nice to ride one again. It'd be nice to get on get on one again and ride it. But <laughs> It'd be great. No, Come hang out, Chris. I'll let you ride mine. Yeah, no I'm, one even remembers. I know it he, was. On, we were on a high for a bit. What What'd you ride in Spain then when you went? What, what? I was Stark. I was on a Stark. <laughs> no, you weren't. Wait. I was Stark in it. He just got back from Spain. I was Stark. He was riding oh. Triumphs. Wait, didn't weren't you in England like the week before I went last year? Yes. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure if that what we were talking about. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what about Why what? Are we to be so weird about this? Uh, look at until Wait, someone yeah. says stop being weird. I'll, I'll stop you know, being... there's a four fifty coming. You're probably doing four fifty stuff. I don't know anything okay, about anything. All right, okay, all right. Hey, stop being weird. On a side note, was that is that Stark crazy or what? Stark's actually good. Dude, it's, it's fun. It's nuts. Do you think it could? Would it be? Could you qualify on an outdoor national right now on it? If it was just purely based on bike without the battery life, yes. Like you couldn't I feel, get two thirties in though. No, no way. There's no, no way. I, I didn't think you'd do that. But, but you like could just, set a heater lap, no problem. Yeah, really. Yeah, dude, the it's bike. Like chassis, that's got chassis KYB bike. stuff. It's got Magura brakes. It's chassis is a little firm, Joey. But like, you can make it good, honestly. And well, for, for you guys, you I, might like it because it's firm. Yeah, I just didn't know if it was like, like, would it break in half if you case the leaf? <laughs> No, no, dude, look at these dude. guys are launching at X Games. You're fine. Like, yeah, they're bikes. Yeah. No problem. Oh, well, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, hey, did you do that steering thing that we talked about when we saw each other? Did you ever try that? Yeah, I did, and I almost destroyed myself in the process. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> but I will say, it's, I think it's something that you've got to ease into. Like, I, I went from zero to a hundred and i remember, <laughs> and I remember you could steve you could ask zach i don't remember if, he, if him or dana saw but dude i came into this like high speed flattish corner and i started to lose the front and i couldn't stop it 
because <laughs> I, I just couldn't turn my bars, dude. And I just went into this two wheel, like trashing drift and I saved it. And I remember we had the Cardos on it and I pulled off right then. And I said, Dana, we need to go back and change this. This is not good. <laughs> so Joey and I were, I saw, we saw each other and we started talking about Jet's bike uh -huh. and he asked me about the steering. Yeah. And oh, I how go, stiff it was. Yeah. And yeah. I go, dude, it is like a dampener times 10. Like yeah. it is really hard. It, it He's was, like, it was bizarre. And we were trying, but it didn't feel like that on track. No, it did. Like every time I move the bar, the bike would totally move. And he, like yep. you know how you throw the bar yeah. into a jump? If you did well, that I on Jet's bike, that, but... the whole bike moves. So <laughs> we were talking about it, and Joey's like, maybe that's – obviously he's good, right? Yeah, we yeah. know that. But yeah. some of it, maybe that's how he lines up in these ruts. He jumps into things, and he's lining up perfect because he can move his bar a little bit, and that whole the bike whole pivots settles, around, settles right? In, sure. Yes. Yeah, this is a debate that we – like me, Zach, like I've had it with Kiefer. Like, dude, I mean, the kid's – an alien like there's no doubt about that right like yeah. like both of them are yeah. extremely good yeah. like you can't get anything away from them. but like when i watch jet at supercrosses especially when there's a lot of ruts he's always if you notice in the air he's always tweaking his bars just a little bit and that's what so i started the conversation with Kiefer, and i'm like hey dude like you rode the bike i was like if you turn your bars in the air does the bike move and he's like oh yeah absolutely so then i'm like oh my god dude if this guy's that's thinking the secret <laughs> Dude, I'm like, but there's like that even makes him more of an alien. Yeah. Because if he's riding and he's turning the bars to like to line to, up for to, a rut, right? To, to adjust just the smallest amounts, so I'm like, dude, he's on another planet because yeah. it's like it's enough to try to jump a rhythm and land in the rut. But if dude's in the air, like, up, oh, I'm a little bit off balance. I'll just tweak my bars and move it over. I mean, I'm probably reading too far into this, but I mean, then again, like, he's that good that it's possible so you know, how like, long did you give it before you, you yeah, bailed how, how on long it? did you try this for uh 20 minutes <laughs> and you were on outdoors though right yeah but again i think it's something that like i need to take it to 25 percent. ride like that for a week and then crank it to 50 and like just slowly over right. time did you put there. a damper because on or no just tighten the steering the fuck out of the just, steering just tighten the steering okay to shit. but i will say like <laughs> i think where it could be good is like this weekend in Southwick. Like you don't have to worry about that front end twitchiness. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like yep. if, if your front end gets a little heavy in the berm, you know, like I just think, I don't know. I, I still am not convinced that something's not there. I mean, they're doing it for <laughs> Joe, a reason. Joey's digging. He's digging. Look at I'm digging. He's a good rider, but there's something to that. You just don't do that for the, just for the sake of doing the it. The Mandarin Thanks. said that the starts were remote controlled. No, dude, they uh, – I don't care what anyone says. They have something, whether from the electronic side, yeah. they have something figured out. So what, you, know what, you know what we're doing, Joey? And Lars said Fletch. we could do this. I'm going to get on one of their bikes. <laughs> Kiefer's going to be on a stock Honda. I'm going to get on one of their bikes. And there's no way, right, that I should be able to hold shot Kiefer. There's just no possible way, no matter what uh, I do. I, I bet you could. Thank you. No. I'm, I'm going to get there's on one no of way. I'm gonna He's going to be on a stock bike. I'm going to no. have the factory bike, and I will yard Kiefer off the start. Stop. Um, dude, if Steve stays over the front, yeah, it's over. It's over. I doubt it. But 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 seriously, back to the other conversation. Like, yeah, you know, he they do the steering for a reason. Yes. And you know, like uh, to my understanding, they're not very vocal about it, which I get it. But I mean, dude, I spent how many months watching Supercross races, waiting to go race, and I'm like, dude, so I'm maybe looking too far into things, but. There's a reason. There's no way they run the steering that tight to what save the bearing. <laughs> Joe, Joey's like, come on. Joey man. is the man, dude. He's I, at home, uh, bored no, off his ass. I picture he's not Joey racing. like the the uh, guy from Hangover, the GIF <laughs> with yeah. all the all the numbers flowing yeah. at him. Yeah. That's how I picture Joey. Yeah. Yeah. You should ask Zach how many videos I've sent him. Like, dude, look at this. What, what do you think? This, I, I bet you there's dozens of videos of me sending to Zach of him doing it, practice, race, heat race. I'm like, dude, it's not okay. coincidence. Well. Let's 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 get the gentleman on the phone right now. He, he he's sponsored by Jets and Donuts. Hello, Phil. Oh my Hello, God, Steven. Okay, Phil. Who's that? It's Joey. Ha oh, ha. What's up, Joey? What's up, yes, Ob? Mm, just uh, okay. sipping on some red wine. Throw throw <laughs> the theory, throw the theory out for <laughs> Phil, Joey. Throw it out. Uh, Phil, hear me out. Okay. Uh -oh. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed how tight? Lawrence has run their, their uh, head stay. No, I've never sat on their bikes. Well, have you ever? Well, I, I did. I went by on press day at Paula and I turned their bars in. But this is like, this is nothing. <laughs> <my stuff. laughs> Joey casually walks by through the pits and just smacks his bars. All right, later. <laughs> what's up? What's up, Lars? Turns the bike, runs away. <laughs> just keeps going. 
I got them now. I we, got you we now. Wrote, but we rode them, Phil, at Washougal, and trust us, the steering is unbelievably tight. Like, yeah, yeah. Phil, yeah. Phil, it's insane. It's like you took an impact to the top of that thing and just had that thing until it stopped moving. Right? Yeah. So, oh. so oh. my theory, or my, I guess my theory, I, I just I was bored during Supercross, couldn't race, um, and was watching. And ever since I heard last year that they're on their steering head tight, I'm just like, doesn't make any sense. Like, what, what, for what? So, you know, when I start watching Supercross, and this is something that, like, yeah, maybe I'm crazy, but when I watch Jet, especially when the tracks are really ruddy, he's always mm-hmm. turning his bars just a little bit in the air. So I asked Kiefer, I said, mm-hmm. with the steering that tight, if you turn the bars in the air, does the bike move? And he said, yes, absolutely. So I'm like, Phil, that's okay. the first thing I noticed. When I roll down the track and I go up to Washugo, that little scrub jump, I went to yep, kind of like lean, and the whole fucking bike moved in the air, and I'm like, wow, that's insane. Yep. So I'm like watching these videos of Jet doing like these tiny little bar tweaks. So like, I, I feels like he's lining himself up with the rut. And I mean, maybe I'm crazy, and like Jet's an alien, and we, we just talked about this. They're both really good. But I'm like, if he's doing this while he's racing, then he's on another planet because it's hard enough to like – go through a rhythm lane and line up to a rut, but, like, I'm telling you, dude, go back and watch videos, and you'll see his bars. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what, Joey. After 18 years, you're just telling me this now. All i got to do is crank down my fucking steering stand, <laughs> no, no, and I'll be no. able to survive a fucking no. rhythm lane with fucking 30 no. ruts in it. I'm going to be fucking pissed. Dude. Now you know. You finally found out, Phil. Yeah. No, Motherfuck. Dude. dude, listen to me, Phil. I tried it one day and on an outdoor track, and, dude, I almost didn't even make the season. Dude, I can't, I, I can't run with it tight. Dude, I went down the straightaway into, like, this sweeping right, and the track was a little wet, but I started yep. to lose the front. Dude, I couldn't, I couldn't stop it. <laughs> no, I, like, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't turn my bars. Dude, yeah, I can't even jump with my steering sense. I ride it. Amar and Jamar both ride with their steering. I mean, cr- you can't go any fucking – like, they're crushing the fucking bearings. Like, you can't even turn it on the stand. I can't even ride down a water lane with it. Yeah, yeah. No. It, it, but I wanted it, to try it. it yeah, I, mm. I run yeah. it, but I run a, I do run a steering stabilizer though. Do you? because yeah, it does, it does, it does help a little bit just with a little bit of wander and a little bit of head shake. The the steering yep. stabilizer does and, does does help a lot. And Phil, so your bikes, you, your bikes, you got the rear wheel all the way back. You got a longer swing arm. You got your clamps out like you yeah you. Uh, let's just give away my whole fucking secret on fucking live radio steve he's no very listening. sensitive hey, to this yeah, right. Right. hey i'll end the fucking throttle body might as well put that out there too <laughs> what do you, hey, you got a smaller throttle body on there or what <laughs> don't worry Keith, about it Keith some hey, testing. You're in the class. What, i don't care what uh what, what kind of clamps are you on 24s or what uh yeah you know, uh 23 fives yep uh, <laughs> just throw it out there <laughs> Just crank down on that steering. You're going to get fucking fifth next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, Joey. I'm telling you, I will say, though, like back to like what you said, Phil, the steering dampener probably helps somewhere like where it's sandy, like south of where you get that little bit of front end twitchiness. Fuck, I don't know. I'm still getting fucking twitchy coming so straight away, well, dude. Yeah, but. Uh, I guess that's what you guys feel. If you crank, Phil, you crank down your steering, it gets tight. Do you feel like the overall bike gets heavier feeling? And yeah, comes? super heavy. I can't right. even jump it. Yeah. So like then yeah, you kind of get hate. arm pump. You can't lean in the yeah. corner right. It fucks you all up. <laughs> no, I'm 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 not fucking with you. I can't even ride it down a water lane with it cranked down. Yeah. I'll come back and I'll tell my mechanic loosen it up, dude. So when like, you are you the type of guy your bike's on the stand, you tap the bar and it just kind of falls down. And on it bounces. Own. And it, does it bounce? It, when it, it, it does. It doesn't bounce, but okay. it falls and just tap. Yeah, yeah, you know, right. just stays there. But it don't bounce. But yeah, I'm I'm finicky as shit with that. But Yamaha does make an electric one, or they're working on it. An electric steering. Yeah, remember uh, yeah. Cooper had it, right? For real? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I really want to try that sucker. Huh. Um, um, if anyone knows anyone at Yamaha that wants to let me try it, would be great. Right. But Cooper ran at one practice or one qualifier? What did he? The Jay <laughs> Wilson's helping develop that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If anyone deserves mm-hmm. it. Hey, uh, Joey, Phil, I was going to ask Phil this question, but let's start with you two guys. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, you're old AF, Joey. You're. You know, practically. AMA twenty nine. Um, where did all the sand go in Southwick? Brother, <laughs> when is, when has there been sand? Oh, back like, in back in my mechanic days there was Well, sand. yeah, but well, I wasn't even born yet. Okay. According to JT he's watching two thousand two and it was sandy and shit. 
I, w- I will I, say I that. I swear the, the, the front half of Paula was sanier than Southwick, it felt like. Amen. You Amen. Know? It's, well, I don't know it's what hard. happened. They, Southwick dude. is sandy, but it's like... But it's Burmy Sandy, and the base is so hard underneath. That's why every line gets blown off the track because you can't cut yeah. down out of anything. Yeah, 100%. And this is the first year they brought in sawdust. Wow. Yeah, why like, would you? That confused me. I had heard they were. I don't know. Yeah. And I, Where'd the sawdust makes, idea come from? They, they got uh, a lot of rain. Remember? Do you see those videos of how much rain they got? Did it wash all the sand yeah, away? Yeah, so take all the sand out from the the – the lakes that they have there that formed when they had all the rain and put it back on the tracks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird that, I mean, they literally had like six sec- sections where they had like sawdust. And I'm like, could be coming here for 18 years. I've never seen sawdust on this track before. Oh. Hey, Phil, through our first five rounds, what track prep has been the best? Mm. High point. <laughs> <laughs> Phil destroyed high point on this I show buried, a few weeks I, ago. I, I I buried that in my gut. I'm not bringing up High Point. I don't Wait, know. Why don't have, yeah. High Point? Is it because they didn't even try to make the track better the whole day? Oh, wow. Joey has some reason as well, just like every other 80 riders that were on the fucking starting line. You know? Uh, I'm going to have to go. Well, I didn't race Colorado, but at the moment, Hangtown. Hangtown. Hands down, dude. They crushed me. Yep. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. That's yeah. so random Hangtown because Hangtown's good. never the, no, the top it's pick. Not. Right? It, it was good, though, yeah. No, but like, dude, like so. even though, like Zach calls them windrows, but like the little berms that they built on each side of or in the corners to have like two or three lines, like stuff mm-hmm. like that at the beginning part of the race is so good because it gives you the freedom to move, and then the lines eventually move together, and you have like two definitive lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can kind of crisscross and whatnot. You so know? you like yeah. you guys like the little pre-made berms in the in the corners, like pre-made well, lines. Only to, only to start because then you know, like this weekend, Phil. I don't know if you if you. I, I honestly didn't watch. So did you pull two whole shots like always or no? <laughs> no, no. We're like fifth. He, you know, he, he, rode well, he, he put himself in good spots though, yeah. But yeah. so but so, but the opening laps, like there's corners on the on the track this past weekend at Southwick that if you took the outside, you couldn't get you couldn't stay on the track mm, without crossing no. a four foot berm that was from the inside. No. Yeah, and then if you did go outside they were fucking fifty yards longer to go around the track. You know, yeah. you couldn't even utilize it but yeah. i don't know it's just weird i mean i was I'm, don't get me wrong the track was rough as shit you know what yeah, I mean? I it was it. just yeah but it was just i don't know it's just a weird south like i don't i don't get it, it. The, the sandiest part on the track was fucking the start start straight it really you know? was yeah so well, i don't know so i'm glad right. you were there to see it steve you know yeah well sorry phil you know Sometimes Living his best uh, life, man. I was, I was in Italy at MXGP. I mean, I was. I've been. Uh, every, I've been everywhere. Uh, I'd take a weekend off. Is, uh, are we asking Joey about next year? Are we leaving yeah. that on the table? What uh, are we doing? That was on my questions. Okay. But then Phil got on. So. Okay. Uh, Joey, are we? St- you brought Phil on just. Are we trying you know. to change the Supercross rules still, Joey? <laughs> are we still complaining about that and trying to change that? Like, what are we doing next Phil, year? Phil didn't really like me until we hung out in Australia. I'm not gonna lie. I did not like Joey for years and years and years. <laughs> I actually really hated Joey. But I feel like this okay. starts the same with Phil. Yeah, I, I didn't like I, this guy. Colt but, Nichols, yeah. Joey Savacci, <laughs> you name it. Uh, Cade, uh, Cade, yeah. uh, uh, you name it. Yeah. yeah. It, it just, Joey and I are cool. It just took one night out with the boys, dude, to get it all patched up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Nothing a few CLs or a couple liquor shots can't handle, <laughs> you know? It's good. Good times. Um, what are you doing next year? <laughs> me? Yeah, Joey. <laughs> oh, oh, me? I mean, I hope I'm racing. Let's what, say you can't I mean, ride a 450. What are we doing? What What's going on? I don't know, dude. I don't really. So I mean, so uh, what do I want? I mean, th- this is where I'm at, and I and uh, Mui or uh, Pelletier. Hope you guys are listening. But like, I've spent the last however many months, you know, r- adapting back to the 250 and learning to ride it. That I would like even if it's an exemption for one year to race the bike, just so I can have more than 11 rounds of outdoor and then have to switch back to the 450. So, like, and I don't even want to stay in that class long. Like, if you give me one year to ride it regardless of the result, then at least I feel like all this work I've done is for something. Mm. Um, but, I mean, if I can't, I don't I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, dude. I, so, I, the, the rule, but how does... Um... Did a rule get changed for Vial to be able to stay another year or no? Yeah, I don't know. I read that too. 
how does he stay till 27? How does that work? 27. Yeah, yeah that's a hurt. Yeah, he can stay till he can stay through 26. Yeah. Uh, he can race in 25 and he can race again in 250 and 26 from what I heard. I don't uh, know. Yeah, I thought he could just race next year. He's got well, next year to defend it and then he's got to go cuz it's been three, yeah, well, three I think, years. I think if he doesn't change win, somewhere. He's got one more year, I thought. Mm. No, he uh, he was supposed to be out regardless, but yeah, I don't I don't know. I God. I, I would say, oh, you know, if they didn't let Joey race, I'd think, oh, yeah, sick, go race the GPs in the beginning. But, again, you can't ride no. MX2 there, so it's fucking, yeah. that's a waste. Well, there'll be, a, there'll be a spot at Club MX next year on the 450 side, Joey. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Phil's, oh, Phil? Phil's, Phil's leaving. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Phil says, you know, after he tightens his, his head stay and he goes 5-5 uh, <laughs> five, five this weekend, yeah. he's back maybe one more year. Yeah. Well, now that I know I just got to tighten it down uh, so I can do better in Supercross, maybe I will come back next year. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I'm taking it to Twitter right now. Um, <laughs> all right, Joey. Uh, thank you for the time tonight on the show. Uh, appreciate it. Um, yeah. Good job, Joe Dog. Good job at Southwick. Yeah, good job. And uh, keep it up. All right? Crushed it. I, I said you were going to make the podium this year, so please please. He's got do. that front hump please. on his seat, too, and please all that. Do. Yeah. yeah. We're, uh, we're trying, Steve. We're trying, I promise. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, buddy. Good job, 17. Yep. Hey, Joey. Joey. Right. See you. Thank you. That's Joey Savace, everybody. Phil Nicoletti brought to you by Luxon. Luxon makes uh, the best parts you can buy, advanced engineering techniques to develop products that are unlike the rest, tighter and stronger with optimized stiffness. Pulp 2024 is a code to save. Phil Nicoletti using the Luxon clamps as well, Fast Freddy as well. They're designed, engineered, and made in the USA. LuxonMX.com, code PULP2024 to save. LuxonMX.com. Get the same clamps that uh, Phil Nicoletti runs. Phil, uh, good starts again, man, this weekend. Uh, nine, nine, eighth overall. Normally you get screwed and stuff like that. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty mm -hmm. good pretty good day. Um, and I did want to talk about your team a little bit because Marchbanks runs out of gas, I guess, 10 feet from the finish Damn. in Moto1. And then Finnis and Jet Reynolds, who both did really well in Moto1, their bikes Two won't shit. start for Moto2. And, and your mm -hmm. team put out a, a press release that explained what happened. The battery was drained. Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is awesome, by the way. Um, that's mm -hmm. all we want in the sport, you know. But uh, let's get to your day, I guess. How much gas did you have left? Um, well, enough to where I didn't run out. You no, know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, no, I know, but did, they didn't tell you anything? Uh, no. no. No, did not tell me. Uh, you know? Do you guys so run bigger tanks? Really, but, uh, yeah, we run the, the WR tank, okay. you know, the Omaha one. So mm -hmm. it is it is pretty big, but I don't know. The gas situation seems a little, I don't know, to me seems a little bit weird because we ran that tank last year, all year, um, after starting after High Point because when G got on the box at High Point, mm -hmm. they revved his bike up at sound afterward, and the bike ran out of gas at sound, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. So then we went to the bigger tanks, and we were fine the whole time. So... Something, yeah, something doesn't add up somewhere in that period, you know. I don't know if something got missed after the parade lap or what, but I I didn't run out of gas, but obviously I a bit easier on the throttle yeah. than G2. Yep. Um, but Wait. regardless, that shouldn't have happened. So I uh, I should have went 10-9 on the day, but I, uh, yeah, where was it? Uh, the tabletop before the finish line, you go right into the finish. Well, I see G hit the tabletop, and I'm coming up behind him, maybe four seconds behind well, he lands, and then I take off, and when I take off, I see G just, like, rolling off to the side. I'm like, where the fuck is he going, you know? <laughs> and I, I got him literally. It was like, yeah, it was more like 20 yards from the finish, but, wow. uh, yeah, he just, Dude. yeah, that um, kind of sucks. But Impressive for him to come back, though, and run that pace right away. Good job. I mean, basically yeah, seven, no. you know? Yeah, I mean, he, uh, yep. I He's always had that skill to where he can come back and throw down burner laps and stuff like that. Yep. You know what I mean? Me, it takes a little while to to do that, but um, yeah, he was uh, he was he, he were really good that first one, and obviously he's still a little bit unfit at the moment, but um, yep. it'll it'll come back quick. So, so with the week off, how's the knee? Uh, how we where are we at physically wise? How bad was Selfwick for you, or how how uh, surprisingly good was it? Yeah, I mean, I I did one fast lap in the first qualifying session, and that was it. And then um, I did two in the second one, kind of just tried to feel flow of the track, and then that was it. It was just like, like we were just talking with Joey. The track was so fucking skatey and stuff. Like I'm dragging my leg around and dabbing it, and it hurt pretty bad did it? yesterday yeah. and today. So. Oh, okay. So um, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest. <laughs> no, no, it it was not the greatest. But it's 
it is, I'm just starting to manage the pain a little bit more. And, you know, when I do dab it, it does, you know, my knee like slips or mm-hmm. shifts. So it's just like just getting used to that now when it kind of happens to, you know, know that it's not, yep. you know, going to wreck anything else. And they just got to get used to it. So it is what it is. <laughs> Are you getting it fixed after? Yeah, after September, I'll get it fixed, you know, just go in there, get it cleaned up and whatnot, because my meniscus is all ripped apart or whatever, which they are on both knees, but it just got to the point now to where it's just like, I need it. It needs to get fixed. How's uh, how's cycling? Uh, Cycling actually makes it feel a little bit better, you know, Um, but it's just the dragging, the you know, fucking riding a dirt bike, dude, I... And South Africa obviously is not the easiest on shit, and the high point wasn't either, but we're able to get through and... um, you know, it's nice when I can just click my laps and not have to worry about anything. So, um, I ran six for a long time in the first moto. Uh, I wish maybe I could have stayed seventh or eighth, but they just had a couple bad laps where guys kind of fucking blew my doors off. And then, um, yeah, it felt good. So yeah, it's nice good. to get back up there again. Yeah, yeah, God, you're just nailing these starts. It's it's, it's impressive. It just puts you in such a good spot. You sprint for ten minutes. You know, you've got the endurance. You know what? You're a veteran guy. You know what to do. You just you put yourself in good spots by doing that. Yeah, and, you know. yeah. It's like, uh, you know, but the hard part is like again, I qualified bad, so I'm kind of on the outside, <laughs> and the ruts at Southwick weren't great, and you know, my second start really wasn't the greatest. Um, but I found a hole in the first corner where I could kind of shimmy through. So, mm-hmm. um, but my first my first moto start was actually really good. So, um, it does help on a track like Southwick though because. The first couple corners is kind of, you know, it's like a train, you know what I mean? You can't really move around all that much. So uh, getting an extra 10, 12 seconds on the guys that are back in 12 make a big difference. Do you think uh, the right-hander, obviously we know left-hander is a little dangerous, but I feel like that's such a high-speed section that soon off the start with those rollers and jumps. Is it sketchy? Uh-huh. Uh it's just sketchy because it's so fast. Like when I grip my bike, I'm okay, but I just, I don't know. When I was watching Chase come down there, you know, I was watching the the videos and even Jet and Hunter, but like when they're strong and they're fit, the way they come down in there and the way their bikes are working, I mean, they're going probably five miles an hour faster than me down through those sections, you know? And that's like, fuck, there's no way, you know? And I wish it was just a little bit slower, but Southwick is a fast track. It's kind of underrated how fast it is, you know? Yeah. yeah Those long straights going down, man, are just... No, the one by the mechanics area and all that. Yeah, dude. uh, dude, That's where Chad KO'd himself in uh, whatever year that was. Um, I'm looking at that straightaway and the mechanics boards. I'm like, I ain't reading that board. (laughs) Yeah, you know, and like where Vial crashed in the second moto around that right hand. like that section is the worst section on the entire track because it's just like downhill. It's off camber. You're trying to give it gas. So big. Front end's light. (laughs) Yeah, it's just like, oh, it's miserable. So, but it is what it is. Um, It's good to go 9-9 and have points work out in my favor. Tyler has been on hold to talk to you since the beginning of the show. So let's get him in here. Luxon MX bringing you Phil Nicoletti, Pulp 2024 to save with Luxon Clamps. What's up, Tyler? You want to talk to Phil? Yeah. So uh, I went to Southwick, and Phil, you signed my replica jersey and my son's jersey, and we appreciate that. We're probably oh, yeah. first, awesome. first ones at the trailer waiting for you. Oh, wow. Uh, cool. Big cool. Mike, Mike B. was out there hackling people with uh, free motorsport gift cards, so that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> just want to, you know, say thank you like you guys are legit and it was nice to just come up to the trailer and talk to you meet you guys um we met barsha um you know we do the j days so we've seen zacko cool. and ricky russell mm-hmm. those guys so it, it's nice to see you guys out there doing what you're cool. doing uh, awesome well, i appreciate you, you getting a jersey oh uh, it's awesome did you ever consider doing the tunnel jump like hayden was doing uh, I did first moto first lap and I had a fucking brain fade dude. And I didn't even, I nose bonked the shit out of it. And I'm like, what was I even doing? You know, but no, I, I wasn't doing that. And normally jet, like jet was doing it all last year, but he didn't do it this year, obviously, mm-hmm. cause he's a bit mangled. Um, but when you did the four, some of the four fifties and Hayden, when they pulled that trigger, it was kind of unbelievable. So definitely a lot faster. <laughs> We we had a bird's nest VIP, so we were right above the starting line there. And, yep. I mean, that was huge when Hayden scrubbed that. Like, it was unreal watching yep. that. 
Uh, cool, well, man. Then, was yeah. it smoother to jump on that whoop? Was it like when you did it, was it okay? Or is it just hard no matter what? Uh, it was just hard no matter what. Okay. Uh, thanks yeah. for the call, Tyler. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ken- man. Kenny's on one. Uh, Phil Merch question. What's up, Kenny? What's your question about the merch? Hey, guys. So uh, last time I called in right after the San Diego round, Steve kind of put me on the spot and asked me if I had any uh, of Phil's merch. So I was going to say, uh, I'll be at Dillo Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this year. You want to put a little extra money in your pocket, Phil, and if you got any uh, XL, double XL swag laying around. There you go, Phil. Come Bruce. over and buy it out of the, out of the pit. Ah. Yeah, I wish. I'm actually sold out. I got new hats coming. Um, my guy Shane from Fuels should be here this week. But I'll tell you what, the t shirt is such a pain in the dick, dude. Like, I'm over it, <laughs> you know? Uh, I, yeah, like, it's such people whine that they want smalls, but then you only sell a couple smalls, and you're stuck with small. Like, I'm, I'm over the T-shirts. One, uh, one, yeah, I, I do the same thing. I, I stock it all myself for the pulp stuff, and I don't even stock smalls because you don't sell, and you got to buy minimum yeah. quantities. and. And uh, I got a bunch of, why yeah, it, you know, it, it's, yeah. Why does it sound like, like teams and riders sell at the race? Uh, they can't. They, they're the official T-shirt uh, vendor for the Nationals. The, the riders uh, get a piece uh, of it, but, yeah. Uh, well, all right. And Steve, if you ever want to get rid of that uh, cardboard sitting behind Keeper right now, get that thing signed, too. I'm not getting rid of Flat Phil. He stays in here forever. <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks, buddy. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Phil Nicoletti here on the show. Uh, Phil, I want to talk about the race itself um, a little bit. We talked about this with JT off the top of the show. Chase, you you know he's going into Redbud being like, I just caught and passed Jet and won the second moto. And you know Jet is like, my shoulders, I I won the damn overall. And my shoulders, you know, at whatever percent you want to put Mm -hmm. it Mm at. And then you got Hunter who's like, I got the red plate. I know how you riders work. You guys all have to work on something mental. But um, it is interesting that everybody can sort of take – something out of Southwick and bring it into red, as a positive, right? Mm-hmm. No, a hundred percent. And like I said, I chase wrote a phenomenal second moto. I mean, I, I think jet knows that, you know what I mean? But, um, it's hard because jets in a position where it's just like, you know, what, what's his one percentage, 70% or even higher, but like he knows he has the overall. So like he's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, like, to go one two, still win the overall, but yet he got beat in the second moto. It's like that's all that gets talked about, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. So who yeah. who was the best guy that day? Who do you consider, Chase or Jet? Jet. He won the 100%. overall. He won the overall. He won the overall. Yeah. That's the end of discussion, you know. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, people are or whatever. But it, I think Hunter's but, still not done yet. You know, yeah. I think Hunter rides red bud really well um but i'm just so saying I like chase that, is like hey man i caught and passed the dude and you're not even thinking about his shoulder if you're no you're, no you're, no you know, no but the way chase caught both of them the way chase passed both of them and the way he left both of them yeah shows that he is right now the fittest guy you know mm-hmm. um but then when you look back at southwick last year when it was hot when it was gnarly jet still outstood chase too you know mm-hmm. so that kind of leaves you a little bit wondering, like, all right, well, how much is Jet really it, suffering at this point in time? You what know? what happens? Take us through this, and Kiefer, you can talk about this too, even though you know you know I suck. You know you know feels level, but <laughs> and I'm not. What happens? Like this is impressive to me because I obviously I sat in a lot of mechanics area, and you know you watch your rider, you're just like, okay, well, we're getting fourth today, or what? You know what I mean? Whatever. How does what changes in Sexton to you know whatever ten minutes in, whatever that was, where you start doing four seconds a lap quicker like mm. what changes what what do you do you think he's just like hey i fl- i rip that turn and i rip that turn let's go like i don't like know. what what because I, I i find it hard to believe that he had that speed in him from the start and decided at that moment let's kick it in these guys are sprinting as fast as they can the whole way right i have a theory but phil's so, gonna know more so about like, this than me what goes on where you're like oh now it's time to go because I feel good. Do you rip some turns? Do you, do you just decide to? F- I don't know, Phil. What? How do you do that? 
Uh, you're talking to a guy that at the end of the moto is always going four seconds a lap slower. I've never in my life found four seconds at the end of a fucking moto, you know. Yeah. So I don't know where I don't know where it comes from. I don't know where what happened or whatever. Yeah, you know, because at it's, some it's point you're like, because I don't again, I don't think it's like Chase being like, okay, now it's time to go. I mean, he's trying to go as fast right. as he can from the start. So yeah. something happens, something changes. It's, it's Phil can attest to this. Okay. It's riding and racing is a feeling, right? Uh-huh. So, like, with some of the bike stuff that we've been talking about with Chase, maybe in the second moto, 10 minutes in, he, you know, completed, what, four laps or so. He has this feeling of the bike. He has the feeling of the track. He's like, okay, now I know what this feels like. I can push harder, and I can attain this level of riding for an X amount of time. I just think people – underestimate that racing and riding a dirt bike is a feeling if you have a good feeling with the track and your dirt bike you're gonna go faster plain and simple and if you're in shape obviously chase is he Mm -hmm. can he can hold that red line for a long time normal people like phil he's a great one of the best riders but he probably has a red line and he starts to taper down he you know you're Mm -hmm. off four seconds phil like that is that's completely normal but then you have guys like Chase where, okay, I got this feeling. It's time to go. I bump but up my lap time, you, and I can hold that. Do you get that feeling from finding a line? Absolutely. You, you can. You, That's yeah, one of the yeah, things. You, you're like, hey. Look at that. Like, you know, I ripped the turn. You and find I, something yeah. that you're like, okay, I just that's doubled, good. I just doubled in to Correct. the turn. And, you Again, know. feeling. Yeah, I yeah. might have hopped right. this bump. I did this. Right. Put that section together, and then it all comes together. It all together. comes together, and you're like, okay. And then there you go. All right. Well, fuck. Yeah, but this still, but it still doesn't make sense to be able to go that speed though, and to be able to process that speed. Correct. And it, it's it's I don't I don't get it, and and to find it out of nowhere because normally like when you start with a certain pace, and at 15 minutes into the moto, that's your pace. But to find the extra four seconds and like when your body is fatiguing, you right. know what I mean? You're already at. 90 minutes of redlining throughout the entire day and to be able to maintain that is is kind of wild you know <laughs> like i went the fucking other way you know i couldn't imagine <laughs> trying to the way my body was feeling trying to go four seconds a lot faster i'd be getting medevaced out of there you know? <laughs> but you've been on the podium before you've podiumed outdoors so you know how to do that right you've gone a level that is better than most right yeah, yes, but and those days are far and few between, but I just don't understand how Chase did it. He never got squirrely, never lost form, never sat into a G out, never did anything. Like, it was just mind-blowing. He stayed the sta- same fucking stature the entire 110 minutes, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I I don't get it, but it was fucking an impressive ride. Uh, you know? Joey's on one here. What's up, Joey? You got a question about drug testing? There we go. Yeah, I mean, kind of about drug testing. I heard it pop up today. <clears throat> I mean, what are they getting tested for? I haven't done any research on, like, what these guys get tested for, and I'm not trying to stir, like, a pot or anything. Travis Pastrana put out a, a video about stem cell, and, and I hear Joe Rogan talking about stem cell. Is that like a common use with these top guys? I mean, we're talking about amateurs not being able to get to the top or not necessarily get to the top, but it, it's a tough road. Uh, you know, we talk about kind of the wealthy really have a chance to get there. I know hard work gets you there, uh-huh. but the wealthy kind of get there. Are, is it common? The, it, like, are the riders recovering with a lot of stem cells? Hey, can I injections? answer some of this? Yeah, sure. Sure. Let me ask you that. So let's, just, let's say we're going to shoot Phil with HGH. Okay, we're going to put okay. Phil, HGH, let's just say peak Phil. Yeah. HGH, stem cells, whatever we can get. Phil's going to do a little better and recover more. But Phil's right. speed is Phil's speed. There's, I think people mistake, right. like, doing this stuff is going to make you faster. It might make right. you a little bit more aggressive. It might make you last longer in the moto. But your speed is your speed. That's what I think the difference is between talking about cyclists, where they can out, you know, uh, their output. Yeah. is more because of this stuff versus we have to twist the throttle, we have to think, we have to have technique, all these different variables. So, yes, that is out there. I'm sure, uh, of course, these guys at some level, some of them have done something. I think there's stem cell stuff going on, but that's nothing illegal, I don't right. believe. You I'm just, just saying, yeah. I, I think it gets misconstrued sometimes. Like, you do this stuff and you'll become a champion. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, and I'm not trying to bring in, like, the controversy behind it and, right. and like, baby fetus and all this stuff. But I'm just curious because these guys are world class. They're going hard. We're talking about where to chase, get those extra four seconds, recovery time, and they're pounding motos week in and week out. I'm just curious. You yeah. know, I raced. We- we I have many back we, in the day yeah, we have that. much better drug testing than we ever did, right? We work with the USADA now, and uh, right. and there's 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 somebody on the watch list. I, it's people still on the watch list, right, Phil? No, we're we're not USADA anymore. No, I thought we I thought we I know we dished WADA, but I thought we stayed with USADA. No, no. no. Okay, no. Uh, we're doing we're doing uh, P tests, um, and yeah. That doesn't really tell you shit, though. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I thought. Oh, we, good. I was just curious. You know, I haven't. I've, I just Pastrana came out with it. I kind of I keep on I keep on tabs with the YouTube, all the all the influencer guys out there, and nobody's touched it. And I'm, besides Pastrana and like Joe you hear Hogan. all different kinds of things. You hear Deegan's putting oxygen up his ass now. All these new things that you hear about, like uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I know the stem cell stuff's right. been used by some guys for like you know they 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 take it and they 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 spin your blood and then they put it back into you. There's that stuff that right. platelet stuff or whatever they do that. I think some riders have done that. I don't think it's illegal though. It's, it's taking your own blood, yeah, no, and, I, you know. So, right. I mean, my dad. My dad had stage four bone marrow Hodgkin's lymphoma, about to die. They did the stem cell thing. He's he's alive and well, playing golf every day. So yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, thanks, curious. man. Thanks. thanks for the call. Yep. Thank thanks. you. Yep. Um, appreciate it. All right, Philip. Um, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Good job this weekend, Southwick. Yeah, good job. Yeah, good job. Red Bud, too. You love Red Bud. I know you Oh, hey, we had this debate earlier in the oh. show, Phil. Mm. Uh, Tickle's coming. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, the Who beats who, Tickle or Phil? Where do you think Tickle is, is about for speed-wise? Um, I still think Brock finished 7 through 10, yep. you know? I, I, mean, I, had you, I had you beat a tick. Yeah, well, me and Brock might meet up around the 20-minute mark, you know? <laughs> he comes from about 15th up to 10th, and I work my way from 3rd back to 10th. So <laughs> we, might, we might have a crossover, you know? So, But now that I know the 938's out there, yeah. uh, I'll have to uh, run that fucker wide a little bit, you know? Yeah, let's do so, it. He can't come off the no. couch and beat you. He just can't. You no, know, he Brock puts in more time riding nowadays than yep. yeah. I do or anyone else that's been riding right. or racing at the moment, that's you know? Point. So his, uh, there's no excuse why his bike isn't as best or better than anybody else's that's on the line. But I'm I'm excited to have Brock back. So it's it's good for him and everything he's been through and whatever. He deserves to come back. And it's really cool that Cowie's given him that opportunity to yeah. do so. so. I agree. Um, like it's – Cowie don't, doesn't have to do that. And – um. You know, he's it's, doing it's cool more too. I think he's have. doing buds too. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's doing buds too, which I don't know if that'll be the end of Brock's stuff, but he definitely deserves another shot on a factory team just to ride off and do whatever sure. you know. I think he's happy what he's doing. Honestly, man, I think he's stoked. Yeah. He gets to do all the stuff that he likes to do and get to race every now and again. It's like the best of both worlds, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it it'd be good. What uh, Keith, are you uh, Loretta is bound? Everything good? What, yep, we're all deal? good. Um, yeah, just you know, paying the piper with all that money I got to spend to get Aiden there yeah, and everything how, else. How deep are you? Well, I just paid for our entries, and it was uh, for both of us to go it was eighteen hundred dollars just for entries. So that's awesome. <laughs> mm. Mm. Is that a, uh, a motorhome pass and a golf cart? Yeah, pass you gotta have it. You gotta have passes for everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then your entry and okay, yeah. So right. you uh, you can uh, have Jamie give you my start map. I'm out on that thing. Fuck that thing, dude. You can use it just to go to the first corner. Yeah, start map might be all right, huh? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, that thing is too fast, dude. Look at Phil. I don't know how you hang on that thing, Phil. That's impressive. <laughs> Uh, it's really well, impressive. I, like you don't understand, I, Steve. That thing is so fast. Like it's, it's I, I can't bad. even imagine like riding that, especially at a, a race like High Point. For the start, though, it's good. Dude, but High Point ruts. I'm. I would be like, this it's, thing he's is not riding. Fucked. It's just start map only. It's gone. No, no. I rode what he races, not oh, besides the start oh, map. Besides yeah. start map. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, like it's it. it's unbelievable. Yeah. All right. Like well, it's he's impressive. more of a man than you. Yeah, he is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Keeper, keep, I told you how far I made it on your map, right? Oh, yeah, no, I heard, yeah. Yeah, yeah we heard. I, hey, and I, what's, what's really fucked is yeah, I yeah. really thought about this because I knew. I was like, I can't make it too slow because he's going to bitch, right? And I'm thinking, ah, oh, this is kind of a blend in the middle. And then when you said that, I'm like, well, I just shit the bed there. That's yeah. fucked. Vet map. 
Oh, I love it. Well, <laughs> I'll be at Loretta's for two days, so I'll be there so, to support. All right. And can't also, wait. too, it sounds like Kiefer might be going back to fly, too. A little no, bit. I am a little not. Bit. Well, JT, put it out there. I you am know. not. Okay. FXR. You know, I, well, you know, fly needs riders at the moment, so I mean, I could see how they're out there head hunting. You know. I think they got one. They, did you hear this? Nope. Okay. They, they did get one. I think they got one. Like a single digit guy. Know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know nothing about anything. So oh, I'm I know what this could go. I'm because... trying to confirm it, but I so I don't want to say anything oh. right now. I'm trying to just okay. lock it up. But JT's not going to say. But right. Yeah. So. Yep. Hey, did you see that uh, Milt Milt race mammoth? I did. I didn't even know he was out there. Yeah, he's uh, he re- he actually did pretty good. Yeah, do you get second and plus sixty? All right, yeah. we got, our guest is waiting. Oh, so let's sorry. not talk about Milt's results. Okay. Hey, what no, we, but seriously, okay. Steve, twenty twenty six, we're doing Loretta's. Thank you. Get him oh, like on board, me? Phil. Yeah. Me? No, I, dude. What I, about twenty five? Hey, did you watch Dark? I, Dark didn't even come close. That, that's where I'm at. Dude. I'm telling you, that fucking video of Dark fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I was sitting in my house alone, laughing so hard, <laughs> I was crying on my fucking couch. He, I was crying, dude. Oh, uh, we had him on last week on the show. He explained everything. He's from some sort of lights or something, and the locals knew about dude, these lights. He sent it to me, and his head was like yeah. moving around, like, what's going on, dude? <laughs> and then the second dude, that, he let out. Dude, yeah, oh my it's great. God. That video needs to go fucking viral. Uh, it has to. Uh, It'll be as fucking famous as the Hawk Tool Lady, you know. <laughs> Hawk Tool. Uh, uh, all right, thanks, all right, Phil. Fellas. Later, Phil. Yeah, see so, yeah, right. That's uh, that's Phil Nicolette, everybody. Brought to you by the folks at LuxonMX.com. Uh, next guest, uh, this gentleman showed up from down under seventh in Moto Two on uh, on the Firepower Honda. Brought to you by the folks at Wisco. Pulp Twenty Four is the code to save at Wisco. Full range of performance components. For dirt bikes, UTVs, ATVs, and more. Two-stroke and four-stroke pistons, of course. Uh, Honda HRC's teamed up with Wisco. It's worked pretty well. Uh, let's get him on here for his Pulp Mech Show debut. Kyle Webster. What's up, man? How hey, mate. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey, sorry for keeping you on hold so long. Uh, Phil Phil just keeps talking, so we apologize. No, that's no problem. No problem at all. Hey, uh, Southwick, man. Um, you're a sand guy. We we got a lot of listeners in uh, Australia, so I got I started getting tweets and DMs about you coming over and what a, what how fast you are in the sand and be ready and Kyle Webster and this and that and obviously you ride for your Reeve down under great team they've done a lot of good things. Uh, were you happy with? I mean, the first moto you crashed, you worked your way up from way back, but seventh, dude, you got to be happy with that. Yeah, yeah, it was a it was an awesome weekend. It was, obviously it was a it was a really cool experience. Um, I was bummed about the first race. Going down the first turn definitely made life hard. So yep. that one was a little bit of a write-off. But, yeah, managed to get a good good start in the second race. And, uh, yeah, ran sort of ran the pace there for a little bit at the start. And, honestly, the intensity was through the roof. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah, gassed a little bit. But, no, it was good. I'm, I'm happy to come away with the seventh. And uh, I think it's a nice sort of starting point, I, su- I suppose. And... Lucky we have another weekend here to yeah. stay for Red Bud, so it's uh, it's really cool. Yeah, it's going to help you at Red Bud so much. Just the practice order, the intensity, what goes on, right? Like you're going to be so much better prepared for Red Bud. Yeah, I think so. Like I, I really had no idea how anything sort of ran on the day. So <laughs> right, <laughs> um, I, I know I was uh, I was freaking out about the qualifying being in the second group because everything that I ever heard about yes. being in the B practice at Southwick is. Not where you want to be. So it was, uh, yeah, that was freaking me out. I was going to ask you about that. So yeah, you heard all about this. Like the green flag drops, and you got to go. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and luckily I got to do. The guys got me on for press on on Friday because we started sort of walking the track again on Friday afternoon. They were, and one of the AMA guys was like, "Oh, you're not you're not really allowed to to walk the track here." Um, I was like, man, I don't, know. I don't even know where half of it goes still over the back. So <laughs> yeah. managed to sort of sneak around and see some of it. And yeah, it was it was pretty full on there. Yeah. Um, no, it's really, really cool to see. And, and like, you know, that Kresanoff from Estonia showed up and, and Oslin from Sweden and you came. It's cool to have you guys show up and, and at Southwick and race. I think it's really, really a, a benefit to our series. So that's pretty cool. Um, why did this come about? Obviously, Uribe's got a team here. We all know, uh, you know, how well Max did this year and Dean and all that. Was it just like, hey, I just I just want to race two American Nationals. I don't care which ones or or obviously you being better in the sand, you're like, let's do these two. Or did you have to 
convince your Eve? Did you have to earn the ride and the spot or how did it come together? Um, yeah, I think it was obviously, I think Southwick and Red Butter two really, well, it seems to be two really iconic races. Mm-hmm. Um, and ones that really stood out to me being sort of on the sandier side and Southwick obviously is, is pretty sandy. So that was why I wanted to do those two especially, but yeah, I think that, um, Yareev sort of gave me some goals that I had to had to meet to okay. make it a possibility, and um, I, I kind of think yeah, we're just in we're in good form in Australia this year, so it all sort of worked out well with um, the whole Firepower team being over here, obviously, mm-hmm. and they were sort of in a bit of a downtime, and it just uh, it all kind of fell into place to be honest, uh, pretty smoothly. Nice, nice, and you've never been to America before. Uh, I've been over here. I've never raced. Okay. I just came over, yeah, in 2022 to MTF a little bit with the Firepower guys just to do a bit of cross riding. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so you've been a bit. Yeah. Um, and so I'm guessing, like you mentioned earlier, this, the intensity, was that the part where you were like, you know, because I, I kind of equate Australian motocross a little bit to Canadian motocross. I'm Canadian and I follow that series. And, you know, those like uh, Dylan Wright and Jess Pettis and, you know, are really fast guys just like you. But they tell me the same things. Like they, they come down to Indiana and Bud's Creek. And, like, Dylan Wright's an amazing rider, and he's just like, dude, every corner someone's on you, you're in front of – or you're right behind someone. It's just a new game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, those few laps, I don't even reckon I took a breath. That's probably my problem. But <laughs> yeah. I think it is just – yeah, it's just the whole thing of being there for the first time, I, I think, and managing to come out in a good position. And, you know, when you see those guys right in front of you, it was a pretty cool feeling. So, yeah, I think if I can – uh yeah, get off to a good start mm-hmm. again at Red Butt. It'll be nice to try and run that, but the intensity was definitely, it was through the roof. It was something else. <laughs> so you, you're beating Christian Craig in Moto2. You're behind Justin Cooper in Moto2. Are you like, hey, those guys, that's a pretty good, pretty good pace. Like, were you thinking to yourself, like, I got this, this is easy? Were you like, holy shit? Like, what were you like in seventh? Um, yeah, I was trying not to think about it too much, but uh-huh. I, knew I, was in a, I knew I was in a pretty good position there and, I just started to, started to hit the wall towards the end, um, unfortunately. So, yeah, the tongue was in the sprocket there for a little bit, but I I was I knew Christian was sort of starting to catch me towards the end, and uh, I was thinking, oh, I would love to I'd love to hang on to a seventh year. So, I, uh, I once actually, I sort of got got to the end of the race and finished it, I was yeah I was stoked. Yeah, you cost me twenty bucks. I bet twenty bucks that Craig would beat you at Southwick. Oh and, really? Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> And in the first moto, they went down together or close to it, and then he was about four spots behind you the whole moto. And I'm like, okay, all right. Like, you know, he needs to beat this Webster kid by a few spots in moto two, and, dude, you never cracked. He couldn't, couldn't catch you. So I lost 20 bucks, Webster, because of you. So, yeah. But, hey. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. No, good job. Also, Kiefer, Yo. number 762 this weekend. I saw that. I thought you'd be excited. About I was that. excited. That's my number, Kyle. Yeah. That's, that's the number I run. Yeah, I heard. I heard. Yeah, it's very. I heard when you uh, picked that one for me, he told me. Yeah. Does, it, does you think Kyle knows whose number that was back no, in the day? No, Kyle so? doesn't know. Well, maybe you Reeve told him, but. No. Did, Do you remember Mike Kodrowski, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he told me that. He said this number's got two people attached to it. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's why that's why he went he went with it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's cool. I I I ran it because Kodrowski had it, and I thought it always looked really good, and. I wanted a three-digit number, and then yeah, Webster shows up and does the 762 proud. Have it's you watched seven. Kyle at all in, in Aussie? <laughs> I have not. MX. No, no. So I've watched a little bit of these okay. every now and again. Yep. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, but he has a blend of like he sends it, um, but what I see like he's so dominant in corners. Like I've been watching some of these tracks, and some of them are pretty janky tracks and shitty tracks, but he's really good in yeah. corners and rolls his corners really nice. So mm-hmm. I guess is that one of your strengths out there? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely, definitely try to. I think our tracks are a little bit different to what they are over here, obviously. So I, I think like you sort of learn to ride those kinds of tracks and we work on that sort of stuff during the week. But yeah, I would say that's, that's one of my strengths for sure. Yeah, he's, dude, it's, it's impressive how, how he can come through if he doesn't get a great start. He's, um, he's where, a good rider. Where are we at with Medi? Still sixth and seventh place, Medi? Yeah, eighth around there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. just He's rocking it. Yeah. Yeah, he, he still rips. Dude, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Like good 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 on Medi for still still riding and, all, and doing all that. Um how close was your bike to your race bike Kyle? Like were you able to bring everything over 
and uh, basically build a race bike, or did you have to get – were there some things different? I imagine it was probably one of Dean's bikes that were laying around that Nate grabbed some parts for, or how was it? Yeah, yeah, it was one of Dean's bikes, um, and Nate built it up for me. All the guys did. They did a really, really good job of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, they pretty much just put my suspension settings into a set over here, and away we went. But the bike was really similar. The engine was obviously a little bit different. Okay. Um, I guess just the power was a, a bit different and the uh, your fuel over here is uh, different to home. So that was really the only difference with it. So it was it was nice to have not much of a, well, not a big transition to yeah. riding that bike with not much time prior to the race. Yeah, I was going to say, so it wasn't much different then for you to get used to, really? No, not no. really. It was nice. And Dean's coming back. So Dean's, Dean, Dean needs his bike back. So he's coming back to Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find the the engines a little bit snappier here than at home, or is is it vice versa? Um, it was actually a little bit more mellow, to be yeah. honest. Okay. Yeah, so it was quite nice to ride. Yeah, so maybe that'll but something it, you can adopt at home. Interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it's like on uh, or at Red Bull. I guess where I'm assuming the track's a little bit faster or whatnot. So yeah, what about the leap, Ooh. Kyle? You thinking about the leap? Oh, I've been thinking about that since I knew I was coming here. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know what? It's actually, it, you just, from, from people I talk to, you just get behind someone, and it's really not hard once you just mark somebody. Just don't deck it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm really hoping I'm not in the B practice again, and I can just jump onto the back of somebody and do no, it on you, the second lap. You won't be in B. They'll put you in A, almost for sure, I would think. <laughs> but yeah, like, for people I talk to, they're, yeah. like, they're like, dude, I was scared shitless, but like... It really is just a speed jump. There's no English right. needed. You're just going as fast, you know, like third wide open. Well, when it's deep in the morning, though, man, it's got to be like you yeah. think you're going to be like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah. The third jump or the yeah. third, the landing's big. They have built it up over the years. Yeah. 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 I remember watching it for, at the Nations when it was there in 2022, and yeah, it was scary from the sidelines. So I can't <laughs> imagine what it'd be like going up to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, get ready, buddy. Get ready. Just don't Google yeah, well, Alex Ray it. at Redbud, and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many rounds are, are left in Australia? Uh, we have three three motocross rounds left. Okay. And then uh, and are you leading yeah. right now? Yeah, at the moment. How many points you got? Seven over Jed Beaton. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's been pretty tight all year, really. We've been about... One or two points separated most of the way. <laughs> yeah, really, right? Um, well, yeah, and, you know, you, for your Reeve, too, you know, taking you to, to the USA, like you said, you, you, you met certain goals and they decided to do it. But, like, yeah, you're, in, you know, you could hurt yourself, I guess, is the thing and lose Australian title or whatever. So props to your Reeve for, you know, letting you chase this a little bit while you have the points lead, you know? Oh, definitely. And, like, yeah, we spoke about that. And I guess it's one of those things, really. Like, you can get hurt riding at any point. So mm-hmm. yep. I think it's just... Nice to go and do something different, especially while, I mean, I guess I'm in good form at home and uh, probably have the best shot at doing doing well while we've got so much support over here. Yeah. So, and, and yeah, too, it, was, like, it, was, it was big of him to let me do it. Yeah, and two, you head down under. Say this all goes well, you just got a seventh. Red Bud, you put another couple top tens together, and it goes all goes well, and then you have some more confidence down under, right? So. Yeah, exactly, exactly, um, and it's... Uh, Still part of it. It'll be really cool to come back maybe sometime in the future, and it's just one of those things like had to take off the bucket list. Sure. When you pa- when you pass Phil in the second moto, did you hear him yell "fuck" or anything, or anything like that when you passed him? <laughs> no, I didn't hear anything. Okay. All right. I'm sure he was hurting right about then. Is your end goal to come here to America, <laughs> or what's your plan? Oh, I mean, I'd love to one day. I mean, it's it's hard to get a ride over here, but it would be really cool to come over here and do and do some more racing. Definitely. Yeah, it's it, well. I mean, look, uh, you, you know, I I don't know what your Reeves plans are, but you got the perfect sort of stepping stone, right, to do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, how's the Supercross skills? Well, I'll be honest; it's been a bit of a rough run. Has it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, unfortunately. So, hopefully, we can have a bit of bit, bit of a better go this year. Um, yeah, I've had a few injuries during this during the series in Australia. So, and obviously, our Supercross series is so short. Yep. So I have missed a few of them. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Webb's here on the show. Brought to you by the folks at Wysco. Whether it's two-stroke or four-stroke pistons, garage buddy engine rebuild, kitsch, clutch and valve train components, check it out. Pulp23 is the code to save with um, uh, with Wysco. Uh, Pulp24, sorry. Yeah, so me and Steve, we both – I don't know a lot about you, Kyle. So 
I like to buy in on people's personalities and the backstory and everything about you. So give us your backstory a little bit. How'd you get started in writing and, and what's your, what's your deal? Like, cause I don't know much about you. Yeah, well, I just uh, started riding when I was real young back in South Africa, um, when I was about four. And uh, we moved from there to England. I raced for a few years over there. And then, uh, yeah, my parents weren't a real big fan of that. And they, they moved over to Western Australia when I was around about 10. So pretty much just, yeah, raced my all my junior stuff in Western Australia and then um, started racing the Australian Nationals. Uh, from when I was about 19 and uh, I've just been sort of chasing that over there ever since and sort of progressing through and you know started riding for Uribe in, in 2020 and working with him and uh, yeah we, we obviously had those COVID years there that sort of put a halt on things and I was actually lucky enough to go and do a fill-in in, in Europe with Jackie Martins for a few rounds Okay. Uh, during that during that COVID time um but I did one of their local races and got cleaned up in the first turn and got hurt, so I didn't actually get to do the GP that I went there for. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't remember anything yeah. about this. Yeah, oh, damn it, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was definitely a bummer. And then uh, got stuck there for a little while during, during COVID. <laughs> during and COVID? Then came, <laughs> yeah, came back to Australia and got back into it. So, yeah, nothing nothing too crazy. Just, yeah, tra- chasing after the Australian titles for the most part. And, mm-hmm. um I, I got selected to do Nations in 2019 at Assen, which was which was really cool. That was probably the biggest race I'd done. Mm-hmm. Great, um, great on, weather, on great day that was. Which, great day. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, that was that was wet. That was wet, oh, but it's still, it was an awesome experience. Yeah, that was that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. And then, yeah, yeah. Fast, fast forward some years and some good racing, and yeah, we're here. So yeah, brief summary, just yeah, lots of racing in Australia. Just, Seventh in a moto was awesome. I mean, look, take away that um, that crash in first turn and all that. I mean, you probably go top ten both motos. Uh, that's that's impressive because the class, you know, it's not hit by injury right now. It's not. It's beefy. It's, it's it's deep. Yeah. You know, so that's that. You got to be stoked on that, Kyle, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was I was really really happy with that. Was is was Nate your mechanic? Yeah, he was. Did he just tell it you was story? Really cool Did he just tell you about <laughs> Andrew Short and Blake Baggett stories or? Oh yeah, yeah. We we speak about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. he was he was telling us some stories about when we were, who the guys he's been with when we were there, and yeah, you know, he's he's awesome. Uh, do I understand that you're staying with Max? Are you roommates with Max? Yes. Oh boy. Yes, I'm staying in his house. How for, funny is that, for a Max? Max leaves Firepower for Star, but then right. your Reeves rider Kyle stays with. Him. <laughs> like it's funny how it works. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny. I mean, it's cool. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. We we get on really well, so it's nice to obviously don't get to see each other too too often, and yeah. unless when he came to Australia a couple of times. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Kind of, no, it's nice. It's nice. He's uh, looking after us well. Right, right. No, it's kind of kind of neat to do that. When does the Oz uh, MX start up again? Uh, we have one weekend off after Red Bud, and then the following weekend okay. we're back. Got it. Nice. Yeah, well, so we just uh, get back into it for the last three. Yeah, nice. Uh, well, hey, man, thanks for the time on the show. Congrats at Southwick. Yeah, good, good job. job. Um, and, yeah, it's cool, cool story. Um, I saw on the sponsor sheet, we were talking about this on a review show. Uh, Did you hear about this? Yeah. Yeah, it was an accident. So on the, What's it say? On the sponsor sheet behind Kyle, it says, sponsor, me, M-E, like Ricky Bobby. Okay. Remember when Ricky Bobby yeah, was sponsored right. by me? I thought that was really funny, and then JT and Weege are like, "No, no, it's like Mobile X or something, or you know, some the sponsor that Reeve had on the weekend, a oh, cell phone okay. company." But what was the story, Kyle? No, it was my bad. I was having a meltdown when I was trying to enter the race and get my <laughs> national license and all that started. Okay. Um, and I, I, I don't know what I did, but I, I, I wrote me in something, and I didn't realize that's what it was. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't think anything of it, and. And my my girlfriend sent me a thing like a few days later when she saw my results on online. Yeah. And she was like, I think you need to change that. And and oh, we had a good we had a good laugh about it. Oh. Obviously, it's just been saying That's awesome. I funded the whole the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. You, for, forget <laughs> Yuri, forget what Yuri did. It was you. It was all you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, so we've, we've been we've been joking about that, but yeah, it definitely wasn't all funded by me. I had some great people <laughs> helping. So, but for the record, I was right. It wasn't me. It wasn't Mobile X. JT and Weed are like, no, it was 
supposed to be like mobile, like something screwed up in the AMA, which obviously it's possible. Be. It's possible, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, no, it was it was my fault. I was just getting uh, frustrated with it also by that point, and yeah, I must have put something in the wrong spot. <laughs> That's great, Kyle Webster, <laughs> me, like uh, like Ricky Bobby, didn't he? Wasn't that Ricky Bobby? Oh yeah, the, with the Bobcat or the right. cat? Yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah it's great. Um, Hey, man, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Great job. Yeah, great job. Even without that, that nah. crash, you, you move forward fast, and that seventh is amazing. So. Enjoy Fourth of July weekend at Red Bud, buddy. Yeah, it's going to be cool, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be an awesome experience and a good weekend to be here. Awesome. Well, thanks for the time, Kyle. Appreciate it, man. See you, buddy. No, nah, thanks for having me on. All right, see ya. Uh, that's Kyle Webster, everybody. Brought to you by the folks at Wysco. Wysco Piston Pulp 24 is the code to save. Nice guy. So he's he's South African, Aussie, yeah. he's a mix. Yeah, like uh, Ro- like Rob Herring moved South Africa to, to yeah. UK back in the day. Yeah, I guess same kind of deal, I guess. Hmm. Um, Seems mellow. Yeah, yeah, Aussie. You watch Aussie motocross? I love I love dirt bikes, dude. Well, I, I, like, I, I mean, I watch Canadian. I like Canadian. I I ride. I watch some of that. I watch Canadian and I watch G- MXGP. Yeah, I will not watch Australians, I but maybe I need to. I will watch Oz a little bit. Tumba Wamba. Yeah. I, I like Luke Tumba. Clout, and I like his brother. Yeah, uh, so I was, Clout's cool. Yep, yeah. I've been trying to follow him, so okay. I, I'm seeing Kyle indirectly. Right, yeah. right. Uh, Pulp 20 is the code to say with Maxima, MaximaUSA.com. Uh, Great company, and uh, whether it's uh, fork oil, whether it's filter oil, whether it's uh, SC1, all of it, MaximaUSA.com. Uh, Pulp 20 is the code to say with Maxima. So, uh, yeah, get, you know who uses the code at Maxima? Andrew mm, Short. Andrew Short. The great Andrew Short. Still spends his money on dirt bikes. Yeah, he's still he's digging. Gotta love him. Him and Turd. Yep. Digging deep for Loretta's. Is he going? Like, is Shorty going? He, I think he's going. Because he said he wasn't going if, if Kid didn't. Make I don't it. know. He, he, I mean, he went to Colorado and qualified, so, I mean, I don't know. He and, he, and he qualified for three classes, which you, you only can race two. Oh, okay. So he's got to choose which two he's racing. Is he going to? Does he beat Brownie? Yes. He does? Yeah. I only say because Brown in Loretta's. Look at it. Not Brown. Brown anywhere else. Right. Yeah, Brown, yeah. yes. Good. But it's Shorty. Like, I feel yeah. like he's going to be so, fine. So he beats you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Are you kidding me? Unless his bike breaks. Yeah. Uh, also, Pulp20 at ProFilter.com. ProFilter.com. Thank you to those guys for coming on board. And uh, pre-oiled, ready-to-use air and oil filters for uh, your UTVs, dirt bikes, and more. And uh, we do have the X-Brand tear-offs, but Phil's not answering. Phil, no, Phil? No, I tried twice we, and he didn't uh, answer. He's we, probably asleep. He's, out. he's got that we, wine we, in him. We <laughs> had Phil. We had Phil on. Oh, I forgot to do it because uh, I suck. Uh, so we'll just do X brown goggles with me and you, maybe. That's it. Okay. Not now, but right, we'll right, come right. back. Uh, Adam Cien Cirillo still coming up. We're going to talk more two fifties. I, I have some information about the Deegan sound test stuff as well. So I want to get into that. Uh, uh, Jordan Smith as well, docked and all that. Phil's oh, calling Phil's us right calling now. Right now. Hold on. Let me put him up. Philip. Right. We forgot to do the X brown goggle tear outs with you. Since when do I do the x spring goggle tear-off? Well, we thought we would do it with you. Can, can you. can you do it right now? Yeah, oh. fuck, sure. All right, let's do the x spring goggle tear-offs. Let's do the intro here. <laughs> it's the x brand tear-off segment. 15-second rapid fire. Rapid QA. fire. These questions are by Corey Moser, Phil. Are you familiar? No, never heard of this dude. Okay, x brand goggles, Pulp Show 24 is the code to save. Phil's goggle. The factory ride goggle mm-hmm. looks a lot like the X brand Lucid goggle. Okay. Uh, and Hunter Lawrence's Alpine Star goggle looks a lot like it as well. Okay. So three brands, same great goggle, I believe. If you want to go OG, that's what you need to do. Then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, so uh, please check it out. Lucid goggles, fantastic. I'm telling you, I get more more people asking me about my purple goggles. You know. What's with the purple? The purple goggles. Everything purple. Bars, goggles. I know. Yeah, Blue Crew. Purple All right, here we go. 30 seconds on the clock. Rain. Nick, shall we do this? Well, let's rock it. All right, we'll start with Steve. Yep. What team manager would you like to see JT interview? Anybody but Lars. <laughs> oh, like, just anyone <laughs> but Lars. Just <laughs> Jensen once in a while, but goddamn, it's Lars. And look, Lars is a good-looking man. He is. Good-looking. And he's a, he's a smart guy. He's awesome. Talkative. Can we, can we get Dan Fahey? Can we get? Nah. No? Let's keep Lars rolling. Coker? Nah. Just Lars. Lars. Okay. All right. Lars. <laughs> All right, Keeper, who is a current rider and retired rider you would like to see in the booth? Current rider. Uh, I think Phil would be good in the oh booth. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? 
Phil would be good. What about the swear? If we had a, if we had a pay-per-view, hone it in. no, if we had a pay-per-view version yeah. of like the race where like we a, get the ma- mic'd up, the people. Manning cast, yes, like an alternate, yes, alternate, yeah. Get Phil in that because we don't have to bleep him out. I would love that. I would love that too. <laughs> and then retired guy, I honestly miss GL. I liked GL. GL was good. I miss GL, so that's what I would do. All right, thirty-three seconds. Can you imagine still still being like? He fucking saw God or right there. Phil and GL at the same time. Oh, yeah. God, that would be a tag team. You know, it's funny. I, I think Stu's great. Like, he's not perfect, but I think Stu is, is awesome. You had to choose RC or Stu. Who you Stu go? I'm picking Stu. Sorry. I'm choosing RC. Are you really? Yeah. Okay. Nothing against Ricky. But... Uh, I like Stu. Okay. All right. All right, for Phil, percentage pie of how – uh, this is typed out weird. Percentage pie of how lucky you are, the reason you're getting so lucky with your starts, is it technique, talent, bike, luck? What is it? Uh, it's got to go, I don't know, third, a third, a third, right? It's uh, okay. technique, bike, um, and what was the other option? Uh, a little luck. more. Oh, luck. Uh, no, no. I, I don't know. And, and Jamie, like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's got to be the bike, too, but, like, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, you don't really need luck with the star. You just need to know what the fuck you're doing. So is you know? there anyone – I mean, obviously you're not going to tell us, but is there something that you know that works that maybe other people don't? Um, It's a yes or no question. Certain, yes, yes. Okay. That's yes. all I needed to know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there is something there we, that he knows about. We had a question last week. The guy's like, why the fuck are these riders? He didn't say fuck. But Grab the crotch. Grab the crotch. Everyone's grabbing their crotch. Everyone's dipping down. And we're like, yeah, dude, they're, they're pulling their pants up yeah. for the starts. Like it really works. They're grabbing their junk. They're yeah. pulling it up. And this guy thought it was like mm-hmm. some sort of like perverted like, rider, right. <laughs> rider thing. No, you, you, you kind of have to pull it up because if you don't pull it up, like it's like – an extra half an inch that slides back, and it, yeah, it's kind yeah. of a whole deal. You yeah, know what I mean? I so did it once see. just as a joke, and it really helped. Honestly, I was yeah. like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I did it. Yeah. Uh, Heather was on the side, and I grabbed it and pulled it up, and she nodded at me. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, always got to be in the right state of mind. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. For Steve, if Tomac and Webb come back, where are they finishing? Uh, we just talked. I don't think Tomac touches these three guys if they're still racing. So four to seven with Webb too. Yeah, Webb's in that mix too. Okay, I'm done doubting Coop. I'm done. I you can't. I'm done. No, I, you should doubt him because then he'll win. Maybe, but like I'm like, oh shit, look how fat he looks, or look how slow he looks, or I don't know, dude. Did you see his uh, shirt off the other time with uh, the pitcher? He's has got abs. I'm done. I'm done doubting Coop. He's fine. All right, for Kiefer, which manufacturer is dominating the amateurs right now? Ugh. It's tough to say because it's actually it's been kind of equal to Kawasaki and KTM. So I would say Kawasaki and KTM. All right. All right, for Phil, what do you have lined up for work after this season? Uh, <laughs> uh, still working on it. I'll be with FXR for sure doing some stuff and then um something else hopefully as well right. like what two gigs what does stuff mean like what does that mean i think he's gonna he's not I, gonna, I think he's gonna like race vets two strokes you know that kind of shit like brownie like, program like he's, the carson brown of fxr yeah or brownie the mike brown um, he's gonna be like brownie but coming like, for Kiefer and all his fucking little titles that he gets yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're gonna little titles. <laughs> what little titles do you have? I have a I have a Loretta title. You do. Have I have Loretta, a vet yeah. title. Yeah, you have world vets mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, so Team Guam. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. Phil. Yeah. Come on. Guam. Yeah, you ain't never seen one of those ever again, dude. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'm kidding. Not really, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would like to uh, strike a deal with Mr. Nicoletti here. I'm not dealing with Myrtle. Like, I will not talk to Myrtle. But I would like to strike a deal with Phil to get him in here more. Yeah, I think you he know? would do that anyway. Well, yeah. I don't He's know. He's going to have more time, right? Uh, he's got to fly across the country. He's not a big it's West Coast guy. It's not that bad. Like, he's not a big West Coast guy. Nothing like going to Europe. Fuck yeah. that. Keeper was just testing to try and 450 for a week. I Phil. was not. I was testing a Stark. No, you weren't. <laughs> All right, for Steve, what is eating kitchen? Can he turn up the heat? Mm, what is eating kitchen? Yeah. 
Crash second moto, I believe. Uh, got this. What would have happened if no, no red flag? Dude, Kitch was leading. Vial was next. And then someone else. Well, Deegan. Uh, Deegan. Deegan would have No, but Deegan was fourth. I was going to Deegan would have won then. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, if Deegs, all, the three guys ahead, right behind Deegs were ahead of him before that red flag, and I was like, oh, snap, here we go. Right. But maybe not. Maybe I mean, Deegs. Look, just, we've seen what he sure, can do, right? Maybe like, he does that scrub again and <laughs> sends it. How did he not crash? I don't know, man. Like, uh, <laughs> crazy. Squirrely. Uh, all right. All right, for Kiefer, what is a pro national track you would like to ride? Ooh. I would love to go to Ironman. I'm going to go to Ironman next week to do the Honda yeah. intro, but I would like to – that would be a fun race to go do on national weekend. Okay. Cool. Last one for Phil. Phil, what has been your best and worst investment? It doesn't say anything about what industry, financial, whatever it is, but what's your best and worst investment? Cryptocurrency. <laughs> Fuck. I've gotten burned on that. Does that work or no? Is that one? Yeah. One? No, that works. Yeah, um, crypto. You know? I mean, I don't know. Fuck. I lost some money on you, that shit. Do you know if Coy ever got his money out of that crypto? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Probably, but somebody else is using the money now. I know, but you know? at one point, Coy told me he had like $13 did million in crypto in or something. Did you ever get involved in I that? did. I, I did get involved in it, and then I got out. I was like, this fucking shit. I had some, too, and I got out as well. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm done. So... I actually forgot I had some, and then I sold it. But oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Right. I made that okay actually. I forgot to mention this last time. Oh. Uh, are you single now? What are we doing? Are you got a chick? Oh, uh, yep. Nope. We're just uh, cruising around. Only thing that treats me good nowadays is my dirt bike, and uh, it's all we're focused on till September. Kiefer. Ah, dang it, Phil. Damn it. It's tough to hear. <laughs> we're just. Uh, well, you know, it's the way it goes sometimes. I know, but it just sucks to date in your 30s, dude. It, I would fucking hate it, dude. A lot of peaks and valleys. <laughs> a lot of peaks and valleys. <laughs> it is, dude. Professional life, private life, we're just fucking hanging on know. by thread over here, dude. I don't know what's worse, riding, or, you know, racing career or dating. It'd be either or screwed. Uh, um, try doing both. At oh. the same time, it's like I don't got the doesn't energy. work, dude. No, I don't. I don't. That's why I don't do it. You know, so you don't just focus on riding a dirt bike. Yeah, you have to because you can't go on dates midweek and do all the shit. Like that's no, no way. Nah, just like to ride two days a week, go to club. Yeah, it's just it's impossible. Yeah, impossible. I know. So there we are. All right. You well, know, thanks for picking back there. up, Philip. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I'll uh, if I struggle tomorrow riding, this is why. Happy okay. Fourth of July, Phil. Yep. Um, hey, is your kid not doing the combine? Uh, Iron Man. Probably not. not doing Red Bull. Dude, don't, don't, uh, he's probably not going to be an Iron Man either. Let's no, no, it. let's go to Iron Man. He's just, bro, he's, he's going to do some uh, futures. He's going to do the combine. He sucked. He's gonna do, he sucked like, at like, Supercross. I'm not putting him out there, so he okay, sucked. Okay, that's fine, but I guess he's going to suck it because he was doing combines no. last year too. No, he wasn't. <laughs> he did a combine last year at Paula. Yeah, okay. suck it, Steve. Yeah, but he, why, well, why wouldn't he do Red Bull? It's like it's a good race. Because uh, he just started riding again from his injury. Oh, so he's not doing Loretta's? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's he just got, started riding last huh, week. He's got, dude. About, got about three weeks on the bike, right? Yep. For Loretta's? Yep. Yep. Mm, wow, fine. Yeah, be all right. It's like one 20 minute moto a day anyway. Nah, he'll be you fine because he won't be burned out. Yeah, yeah. That'll be good. That'll be good. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. thanks, Philip. Thanks, fellas. See ya. All right, everybody, we're going to commercial break here. Come back. Adam Cien Cirillo still coming up. He was. Did you find it weird to see him interview Chase Sexton? I did. Yes. And I have a bunch of notes oh, okay. that I took. All right, fantastic. Yeah. All right. Uh, for Nick over there working the cameras and Talon as well, uh, we'll take a commercial break. We'll be right back after this, everybody. Thanks for watching and or listening. God bless. 25 years ago, greatness was born. Since then, the only thing that mattered was riding at motosport.com. We've made it our number one priority to make your next ride your best ride. With free shipping on all orders over $79, dedicated and knowledgeable gearheads, and a huge selection of parts, gear, and accessories. Here's to 25 years of never missing a ride. To celebrate 25 years of greatness, Motosport and KTM are teaming up to give away a 2024 KTM 250 SX two-stroke. 
Don't miss out on weekly prizes and check out the bike at each round of the Pro Motocross Championship. Scan the QR code on the bike during the broadcast or enter online at motosport.com slash win. Now, let's get out on the track, trail, or open road and make that next ride your best ride with motosport.com. You likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross, in fact, they have many off road, hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions including industry leading, built to order, G3S custom shocks. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. Established in 1989, Eric Phipps had the idea to manufacture factory-styled products for the everyday rider. Working out of his garage, Eric quickly gained a reputation for producing quality products and having great customer service. In just a few short years, the factory team started calling, looking for products as well. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. history. Fast forward to 2024, and they are on their 35th year of producing high-quality products while still providing exceptional customer service. While they are no longer working out of a small garage, they are still producing the finest products available. Teams like HRC, HRC Honda, Honda, Star Racing Star Yamaha, Yamaha. HEP Suzuki, Phoenix Honda, Bar X Suzuki, AJE Motorsports, Solitaire Yamaha, and countless privateers still rely on the same quality products that are available to you too. Products like their Pro Launch Start Device, Radiator Braces, Skid Plates, Clutch Perches, and tons more continue to be a staple in the Pro Pits and Amateur scene as well. Check all they have to offer for your ride at WorksConnection.com. Use the code PULPMX20 to save 20% off your order. With over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA-made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. WiseCo is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or WiseCo.com to find products for your machine. Rocky Ridge Trucks, your ultimate off-road vehicle capable of getting down and dirty. Rocky Ridge has a rich history and has been building custom vehicles since 1983. Proudly partnering with the finest OEMs including Chevrolet, GMC, Ford, Jeep, Nissan, and Ram, we bring you the ultimate turnkey custom truck on the market. Each vehicle is easily financed through your local dealership and, best of all, retains the factory warranty. Say goodbye to the hassles of DIY customization. No more waiting for parts, compromising ride quality, or risking voiding your warranty. Drive the vehicle you've always dreamed of today. Join the Built for the Bold family at RockyRidgeTrucks.com.
Factory Chassis Parts, established in 2018, is the home of the original high-performance FCP Racing Engine Mount Kit, designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Used by top-level racers and race teams worldwide, including Phoenix Honda, Justin Starling, the FNH MXGP Kawasaki team, Rock River Yamaha, and many more. CNC machine parts out of high quality aluminum and titanium. They are easy to install and bring drastic improvements right away. Stop by fcpracing.com to learn more and order today. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. I'm Cooper Webb, and I choose OGO. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Jerry Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane McElrath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Talon Hawkins. Target Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Cole Nichols. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Diallo, I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jiren Ferrandis, and I choose OGO. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started GUTS Racing. GUTS stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GUTSRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2024 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line, and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. 
and then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in a wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. 25 years ago, greatness was born. Since then, the only thing that mattered was riding. At motosport.com, we've made it our number one priority to make your next ride your best ride. With free shipping on all orders over $79, dedicated and knowledgeable gearheads, and a huge selection of parts, gear, and accessories. Here's to 25 years of never missing a ride. To celebrate 25 years of greatness, Motosport and KTM are teaming up to give away a 2024 KTM 250 SX two-stroke. Don't miss out on weekly prizes and check out the bike at each round of the Pro Motocross Championship. Scan the QR code on the bike during the broadcast or enter online at motosport.com slash win. Now, Let's get out on the track, trail, or open road and make that next ride your best ride with Motosport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team. Long-time Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. Rocky Ridge Trucks, your ultimate off-road vehicle capable of getting down and dirty. Rocky Ridge has a rich history and has been building custom vehicles since 1983. Proudly partnering with the finest OEMs including Chevrolet, GMC, Ford, Jeep, Nissan, and Ram, we bring you the ultimate turnkey custom truck on the market. Each vehicle is easily financed through your local dealership and, best of all, retains the factory warranty. Say goodbye to the hassles of DIY customization. No more waiting for parts, compromising ride quality, or risking voiding your warranty. Drive the vehicle you've always dreamed of today. 
Join the Built for the Bold family at RockyRidgeTrucks.com. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line, and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Established in 1989, Eric Phipps had the idea to manufacture factory-styled products for the everyday rider. Working out of his garage, Eric quickly gained a reputation for producing quality products and having great customer service. In just a few short years, the factory team started calling looking for products as well. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. history. Fast forward to 2024 and they are on their 35th year of producing high quality products while still providing exceptional customer service. While they are no longer working out of a small garage, they are still producing the finest products available. Teams like HRC, HRC Honda, Honda, Star Racing Star Yamaha, Racing Yamaha HEP, HEP Suzuki, Suzuki, Phoenix Honda, Barrex Suzuki, 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 AJE Motorsports, Motorsports Solitaire, Solitaire Yamaha, Yamaha, and countless privateers still rely on the same quality products that are available to you too. Products like their Pro Launch Star device, radiator braces, skid plates, clutch perches, and tons more continue to be a staple in the pro pits and amateur scene as well. Check all they have to offer for your ride at worksconnection.com. Use the code PULPMX20 to save 20% off your order. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun. Building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Cooper Webb, and I choose OGO. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Darren Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane McElrath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Talon Hawkins. Stargate Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Colt Nichols, and I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Diallo, I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jiren Ferrangi, and I choose OGO. You likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. 
For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high-performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross. In fact, they have many off-road, hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions including industry-leading, built-to-order, G3S custom shops. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. Factory Chassis Parts, established in 2018, is the home of the original high-performance FCP racing engine mount kit, designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Used by top-level racers and race teams worldwide, including Phoenix Honda, Justin Starling, the FNH MXGP Kawasaki team, Rock River Yamaha, and many more. CNC machine parts out of high-quality aluminum and titanium. They are easy to install and bring drastic improvements right away. Stop by fcpracing.com to learn more and order today. With over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA-made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. WiseCo is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or WiseCo.com to find products for your machine. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport, and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2024 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. 
We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in a wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. Welcome back, everybody. Pop Mech Show presented by Motorsport.com. Fly Racing, Decal Works. Chris Kiefer brought to you by Decal Works tonight. They is the official graphic kit of the Kiefers, Aiden and Chris, and probably Heather. All using decalmx.com. Pulp, pulp uh, 24 is a code to save with those guys. Red Bull Factory KTM, Husqvarna Off-Road using Decal Works. How many graphics sets do you even have for what bikes? and? Dude, and it's a lot. Like, we have our little section in the shop. Yeah. And it's like it's just this thick of, like, just graphics. Yeah, just different bikes because you, you're getting these bikes from the numbers manufacturers. And, and like Die cut numbers, though. Yeah. Good I mean, times. In, in that case, I don't blame you. Right. Right. Just slap and go. Just yeah. slap and tickle. Right. Uh, that's what we're that's what we're talking <laughs> about. Uh, so thanks to the folks at Decal Works for bringing you Chris Kiefer on the show. Also, factory chassis parts. They've got some uh, races now, adjustable races, race cups they call them, and uh, they're available at uh, factory chassis parts. And uh, use the code PulpMX dash chassis to save. You've put a test of these yeah. up on PulpMX. You had them on a YZ450. You're really a big good. fan? Yeah. yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of races in general just yeah. uh, because it doesn't mess with rigidity. So uh, people always bitch about cost of the races. But if you look at the cost versus what you're paying for triple clamps, sometimes triple clamps are warranted. But if you don't want to mess with the rigidity, having races does help. And in this case, the Yamaha, I think, needs it. Yeah. So I'm a fan of that. Uh, check it out, man. And also two engine mounts as well, used by Starling and FNH Kawasaki, Phoenix Honda guys, Rock River Yamaha. Matt you have Parts engine Cowie. mounts too, right? I have engine mounts, All yeah. Right. yeah. They're work, working well. And uh, discount code is pulpamex chassis at Factory Chassis Parts. Uh, what's the website? Is it FCP.com? FCPRacing.com. Yeah, FCPRacing.com. Um, so please check that out. And, uh, yeah, the races are a game changer for sure. Grant Harlan's using them right now. Freddie Norman's using them. Something that uh, factory teams used for a long time, and they could never – ever uh, really figure it out for, for, for aftermarket, but now they can't. And uh, 7 o'clock hour brought to you by the folks at Acherby's. At Acherby's USA, they got a really cool website now where you can pick your model, your bike, pick the color you want, build it all out, look at what it looks like with different colors of plastic. Acherby's is the world leader in accessory dirt bike plastics. Whether you're simply needing a new fender or you want to personalize your bike, Acherby's is there for you. I saw a, a gray KTM at Berluti's. How'd that look? Look good. Really? Yeah, gray with the black frame, or orange frame, sorry, orange frame and oh, gray. That does like, look good. Dude, look pretty sharp. Yeah. Cherubis plastic also. Thanks to the folks at of Cherubis. Uh, all right, we talked some 450s. Let's talk 250s a little bit. Um, so we talked about the sound earlier with the privateer guy that yep. called in. Um, Max Ancy failed in qualifying. Jordan Smith failed in qualifying. Then Jordan uh, failed again after the race. Three-point penalty to him for a second violation. And... Uh, from what I gather, they wanted to try Deegan's bike out, mm -hmm. roll it in there, stopped working. Hmm. AMA's a little leery. leery of what's going on. Um, look for... Stop working like... Or it doesn't run. Like, what is it? Uh, wouldn't run. So, bop, 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 yeah, like that? Yeah, wouldn't run. And from what I gather from talking to different people... Yeah. Look, it, it, a lot of star bikes failed. Hayden's running a little different muffler, FMF muffler, than the other guys, probably to make sure that he passes. Correct. Right? You don't. Yeah. Also, too, look, FMF's a big part of our show. They've been a number of years on our pulp show. But let's be honest, FMF, between privateers and teams, they fail. Sound. More than that. But, like, you're pushing it. You're pushing to the limit, right? Yep. You're trying to get the most horsepower you can yep. out of these bikes. So I would look for the AMA to test Deegan's bike before and after the race. Maybe this weekend. They were a little suspicious of what was going on. Right. Why his bike wouldn't run. Because it took the it took the overall win and now it won't run. Here's my thing too. I'm just saying I'm not accusing anybody of anything. The AMA though is scratching their heads like why won't this bike run? Right. For a sound test. That's all. Hmm. Could be nothing. Could be something. There's some things you can do to make it run like shit. Well, there are switches underneath right. the frames by the gas tanks, right? Yep. You, I, you've probably heard of these things. I've seen some things like that. <laughs> so, so, But you think they would have saw something? or? 
What do you mean? The AMA, if someone was messing with the bike? Uh, Well, apparently it didn't have eyes on it the entire time. Okay. So something maybe. We don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're not saying, hey, you guys fucked with the bike. They're right. also, they also don't understand why the bike wouldn't run after it just So when that happens, we say, okay, it's not running. Does AMA go, hey, we need to, can you try to make it run so we can pass it? Or they say, ah, fuck it. I think they said, ah, fuck it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, it's interesting. Hey, yes. If that's the case, kudos to Star for because, uh, you making know, it happen. Because you know how it goes. So what happens, people, if people don't know, so there's sometimes start maps. Correct. Or, sorry, sound maps loaded into the the, the, Correct. the um, switch on the handlebar. Yep. And then now what's been happening a little more sneaky over the years, because the Amy have gotten into that too, now a little sneaky under the years, is they'll they'll put another switch underneath the, the frame uh, by the fan. So when they but go the to radiator, crank it in, yeah. So so then they put they switch that switch into a sound map, and that's a sound map switch. And the AMA, because the AMA is not they, they're onto the sound m- switch on the bar, right? So they will flip it back and forth and, yeah, and see what it does. And see what it does. But my thing is, let's say they go get tested after the race, like they are. If there was, let's say, if there was a sound switch underneath that was hidden, yeah. How is that mechanic going to reach down in right after the race, bink, and put it on just in case they get tested? Like, I feel like that would be obvious, right? Yes, I agree. But this, well, his bike wouldn't even run, so they don't even know what happened. If there was another switch for that. Yeah. Or a second injector cut. Here's the thing about the Yamahas, too. They're just like, wait, the bike just finished the moto, and now it won't run. I'm not, they're not saying that started anything, and I'm not saying started anything. But AMA is very wondering why, what happened. Were all the bikes that didn't pass sound Yamahas? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. Because not only with Yamahas do you have to worry about the muffler noise, the intake noise yeah. is also going to uh, exacerbate that sound because it people run open snouts, uh, taller uh, covers with air blowing through that. So yeah. that is making it louder. like. There's more to it than just muffler. Even though they're testing behind it Mm -hmm. and there's a meter max, you still have all the other intake sound from a Yamaha that creates more noise. From people I talk to, too, the Yamahas are the most uh, most infractions, are Yamahas. I I would think so. Sound-wise, yeah. Because all of that intake noise. Yeah. Dude, it is loud. Yeah. I understand. Like, I'm not an earplug guy. Yeah. But you see the 250 riders running well, Joey open. mentioned it tonight, right? About being ahead of Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> open like airbox covers. Yeah. It is unbelievable. That's why I don't even run them because I can't. I can't stand it. Yeah. It is so bad. Right. Loud. It's unbelievable. Uh, so, anyway, so keep an eye on AMA and sound testing and Star going forward. Why do we have? I mean, I guess I kind of know this, but what's the fucking point of our sound rule? Like here in the states. Um. I know it's like in the GPS. Yeah, I think you want to look like you're trying to be proactive. You want to do something, you know. Obviously, for but nobody are, cares. But people who cares who, about this? Who people who don't race and ride do care. I mean, that's how riding areas get shut down. But we're doing it at professional racing at a track. Yeah, we have drag think, racing that goes to a, a, a drag strip that you can hear three miles away. There's no one sweating that. Yeah, I just think you want if you're the AMA and you're going to fight to keep tracks open and fight to keep land open and fight to do that it would be irresponsible for you to be like don't worry about this part of it like they have to try to do something because they that's what they literally do is fight for i mean you could separate i think close course sound yeah versus open land blm yeah yeah no i get that part too but i think i think the the ama is just like hey we're trying to be responsible like we just i don't know man you know um my race tech rant of the night by the way pulp 24 is save code to save at race tech race tech.com Love these guys. Uh, OEM, and uh, 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 they can help you with vintage stuff. They can help you with the modern stuff. They can do all of that stuff at racetech.com. Springs, too. Get your, some, get your suspension oil changed. Yeah. Just do that. Yep. The Racetech service centers are all over. I'm going to defend Star here a little bit. Okay. On the flip side of my Racetech rant. Look at you. We saw Hayden last year at Southwick. Not that great, right? So this year they go to the track. Yep. And they ride there, I think... Max Anstey did, Hayden did, and maybe Benick. I'm not sure, but for sure Max and Deegan went there. Uh, a few other privateers were there and everything else. Um, you can ride a motor, a national track up to 96 hours before the event or something. Like oh, it's I not, thought it was longer. No, I don't think I it's. I thought it was I two think, weeks. No, no, I don't think so. It's, okay. it's something shorter than that. Okay. It's fine to ride the track at some point. 
Um, you know, everybody's saying, oh, Star. first of all, they're yelling at Star for this. Like, other people were riding. Other pros were riding yeah. with Star. Yeah. Star reached out to Southwick, Keith Johnson, to see about riding the track because they knew they need that Hay needed to get better right. at Sand. Um, but everyone's so hypersensitive around the Deegan stuff. They're yeah. just like, oh, what the hell? I, I think it's, it's smart. Yeah. Good job. Good said, job to Star. Good job to Brian and Hayden and everybody for dialing it in. Kids smoked it this weekend. Looked great. Like, why are people mad about this? If it wasn't – whatever the rule is, and maybe 96 hours is too long or too short, I don't know. Clearly, they didn't break any rules. Because they're documenting it. Right. Because right. they're there and right. they're documenting it. So they're not breaking any rules. And other pros were riding. And even if they rented the track – and told everybody but the Star Riders to fuck off. Great on them. For sp- I, I saw these tweets and DMs about, why did no other, no other team do this? Why did no other rider do it? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they should have. Keith Johnson probably would have let them. Good on Star for doing this. Back in the day, it used to be on an off weekend, Southwick National. And the off weekend was always a local race at Southwick. Well, so you get and guys factory riders, which yeah. Billiman raced it. Uh... Uh, Ferry raced it. Um, a lot of guys would race that Saturday before the national. Right, I, I cool. did it as a local racer too. I, I, uh, one of my riders was doing it. Um, good on, good on Star and Yamaha for doing that. Yeah, like stop complaining, everybody. Yeah, I mean, a race tech rant. Like, worst, good on them. Worst thing that can happen is they say no. Exactly. So might as well ask. And they're not breaking any rules because if they were, Keith Johnson, Southwick, everyone knows they're there. They wouldn't let it happen. Right. So chill out and just applaud Star. Good yeah. job, Star. Good job, Star. Good, Good job, job, Star. Good job, Brian. Good job, everybody, for getting better in the sand. And here's the thing. What's wrong with that? Uh, even though they rode that track, it's nothing like what they raced. It's definitely not. No, right? it's, it's so, definitely different. Yeah, yeah, definitely different. It's like if they went to Glen Helen and if we had a national, and the week before it would not be the same as a national. No, so. no. So I don't – everybody wants to take shots at Deegan. I get it. You, you know, you love him or you hate him, right? The bed bugs are out. They love him. Other people don't like them. Good on them for doing that. I think the Deegan thing is actually good for all of us. I mean, even if you don't like him, I still think it's good for the sport because we need guys like this in our sport. We have no personalities. Yep. And it's nice not to like someone every now and again. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. Though? Yeah. Like, yeah. if everyone's just like, yeah, that guy's cool. I mean, just like, whatever. But right. you see a guy act different, you're like, fuck, that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. I don't like it, but it's kind of like, hey, yeah. you know? My whole thing is I just want the kid to be himself. I don't feel like he's himself. I feel like it's like WWE. That'll all work itself out. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe, yeah. He's going to get older or whatever, and he's yeah. going to do what he's going to do. Right. And you never know. Ten years from now when he's older and he's on the mic, he might look back and be like, oh, that kid that I was, you know, ten years ago, that's pretty yeah. – I laugh at that kid. Now, right. You know? Right. So yeah. you'd never know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, he's young, right? Right. So, uh, Bo is on one. What's up, Bo? Bo. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey, so my chick and I are listening. Uh, and we have a couple questions. Uh, Steve, I wanted to ask you a moto podcasting question because okay. I do some podcast stuff with music. Okay. Um, so my question for you is, who's the bigger douche, Waldy Wonders or Cooksy Media? I don't know, man. I don't watch either one. What the hell's Waldy Wonders? I wouldn't either. Um, <laughs> I, I don't under, what I don't get about these guys, and there's a lot of them on YouTube, I've said this over and over. Like, I love the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? Yep. Kiefer's got jet lag, by the way. I'm good. I'm so, just yawning. I love trying. the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I read about Toronto Maple Leafs, and I listen to podcasts about Toronto Maple Leafs because I want to know what's up with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Right. I follow writers who go to every game or who go to most games or who are plugged in with the team. They know the players. They know the league. That's who I choose to listen to. Writers? Writers. Oh, writers. Sorry. Writers. Got it. Because they're the most knowing what's going on with the Toronto Maple Leafs. There are guys who are just like me in hockey okay. where I'm just I'm just a knowledgeable fan. There's these guys out there that do podcasts and they have no connection to the team, no connection to the league, and no connection to anything, and nobody talks to them. So why do I want to listen to them? Right. So these guys on YouTube, and there's a lot of them, not just the two this guy mentioned, like why are Moto fans going to these people for information? Like – and I'm, I'm not saying go to me. I, say you don't like me. Yeah. Uh, go to Vital. There's one thing we know. You're DGAF. Yeah, go to Vital. Go to Anton. Say you hate me. I'm not. This isn't a plug to listen to Steve. Right, right, right. 
but there's 10 other media sources out there that are very plugged into the sport. Go listen to them. Like, they're the ones talking to riders, talking to teams, getting the inside info, just like the Toronto Maple Leaf guys that I listen to. They know what's going on. And so, I don't know, Bo. I don't get it. You know? Some, and some uh, of the, to uh, elaborate uh, on that, some of these guys that are like that, they said, listen to us. You oh, know? I know. We're trying yeah. to change oh, the media. Uh, We're changing dude, the way dude, people. Like, dude, this, this is the stuff that nobody wants to talk about. Oh, okay, cool, man. Like, who would tell you that? <laughs> who, 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 how would you know that, you know? Yeah. I got a DM today. Uh, what about the Lawrence's having diabetes? Like, where the fuck did that come from? What? I got a DM. What about rocks and a star? Uh, just like, I know it's out there in this fucking YouTube Facebook world. You just throw it up in the wall, see what's. I guess. Yeah. Or how about Kiefer? How many times have you gotten emails or DMs? Mm-hmm. This is my race tech rant. This could be a, how many with a fucking Photoshop of our CR five hundred in a uh, Honda four fifty <laughs> thing, saying, "Is this a twenty twenty five bottle, Chris?" <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, I know. I get that a like, lot, dude. What are you doing? Yeah. You just. Looking at Facebook, Photoshop, and like, yep, that must be real. It's the same people that drive in the fast lane and don't move over when there's no one in front Dude, of them. Dude, I don't get it, man. I don't know why fans, and again, this isn't a plug for Pulp MX. Uh, go listen to Anton or Vital or any Wygant, um, JT, I, all these people. They do podcasts. They do videos. You know. And here's the thing. There's, I guess there's room for everyone. If you like that kind of thing, cool. Awesome. It, I'm fine with it, but you're not getting real info. I mean, if they don't want it, I don't think they want it. Okay, then fine. I think they want right. to live in the conspiracy world. Sure, there's okay. a lot of well, those people out there. You're got a good point. So, I guess they want to live in the carrots, correct? In the ears world. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, Bo. What else? So my chick wanted to ask Chris a question here. Yep. Hi, Chris. I Hi. have a key for after dark question. I'll try to answer it. How can I convince my rider to try a four-stroke exhaust plug in his FMF shorty? How does what? One more time. She's laughing now. She she wanted to ask how she can convince her rider to try four stroke exhaust plug in his FMF shorty. <laughs> oh wow. Uh I might have to save that question for later on. I don't know if we can answer it right now, but I'll I'll work on that. Appreciate it, fellas. All Keep right, thank you. Work. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, goddamn. I mean it's, it's I mean Try it <laughs> if your chick wants. See what happens. You know? Only th- where's it going to happen? It doesn't fit. Kyle Webster using Firepower, firepowerparts.com. Please hey check now. him out. Dean Wilson riding uh, Dino. this weekend. Yeah, Red Bud. Dino's so- all around SoCal, man. Dino, man. He's ripping around. That's what he does. Firepowerparts.com. Uh, please check him out. And, uh, yeah, great guys. Uh, batteries, chains. A lot, of, a lot of good privateers using firepowerparts.com. Of course, they support the sport with the guys at uh, – at uh, Firepower Honda as well. Uh, Ethica, shout out to Foz. Yeah. Our guy Foz left Ethica. Damn it. Now you can't get Are shit. we okay? Are we still going to be all right? What do you mean? Foz is gone. Are we good? I don't know. Okay. I mean, thankfully, I have so much Ethica stuff. I'll say, uh, Foz was our guy. I think that was our connect to Ethica. Now that Foz is gone. Well, I still have a code and an affiliate with him. Okay. So Pulpamex20 is the code to save at Ethica. All right. Uh, Ethica.com. Socks, hoodies. Shorts. How what? many riders are just so fucking Dude. sad right now? Because <laughs> <laughs> Foz, oh, like, I don't get no more shit. Oh my god! Ah. No underwear. No, no socks. more socks. Uh, love Ethica. I got a lot, so I'm good for a while. You? I'm fucked. Oh, you are. Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah, oh, Foz. But you know what? I use your code to buy the stuff. Do you? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm not like Seth Rarick. Yeah. All the next twenty is the code to save with <laughs> Ethica. Shout out to Foz, our guy Foz. Um, all right, let's uh, let's get Adam Cena Cirillo on here. I do want to talk some more um, uh, Southwick, and I want to talk about your 2025 YZ, or CR250 test. Yeah, right. That's because that's, that's an old new, whole new bike. That's good. I want to talk about Ryder McNabb sometime tonight. We can Manitoba Zone. Yeah, he's a better rider than I was. Manitoba, he's got more titles. I want to talk about Ryder D tonight. How do we feel about Ryder D's year so far in outdoors? It's getting better. Good starter. Uh, I want to talk about Alex Ray because Alex Ray sent me an, an email. I've not heard of Alex Ray in a long time. Is he okay? I think so. Okay. He posts photos of his chick on Instagram. Which is nothing wrong with that. Right. I like that. So OGO, OGOPowerSports.com, Pulp15 is the code to save. They are running a special right now, a $100 uh, bag, the Covert, 
Covert Woody Camo Bag okay. Backpack. All right. It's normally 100 bucks. All right. It's 70 bucks now uh, if you use the code PULP15. Okay. So go to pulp, OGOPowerSports.com, use the code, save extra money off this bag. Normally 100 bucks. now it's 70 bucks. Summer break is here, but if you want to get your kid a backpack for back to school, boom. Oh, my God. ARA said this, this bag is perfect for all the kids who headed back to school. Oh, there you go. So like you, you and A-Ray. I didn't even know that. That makes Brilliant. sense. A-Ray's, look at, the, look at A-Ray. He's all grown up. Yeah, he's <laughs> all smart now and everything. Dang, A-Ray. OGO Power Sports. Check it out. Pole 15 is the code to save. Whether it's a 9800. I mean, look, if you're going away for a day or two, grab that 9800. Pack that shit out of that thing. Yep. Check it. Yep. Everything else. Pack the shit out of it. OGO Power Sports. Uh, I use the rig bag, the 9800 rig bag. I want to get a dozer bag. Might be too big. Certain someone I was traveling with. Oh. Use that huge one. What's that? That's the, a dozer. The thing is three wheels. I think he had to go to oversize, <laughs> pa- pack it to get his back. I think they put it in oversize. Did he have a lot of hot sauce in there? Uh, possibly. A lot of hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. OGO Power Sports bringing you our next guest, friend of the show, Adam Cine Cirillo. What's up, buddy? How are you guys? We're good. Thank you for the time tonight. Appreciate it. Um, I got. Oh, of course, man. I got to admit, man, it a little fucking weird to see you interview chase sexton you know like a little weird i did i did just stop it and soak it in for a minute um especially especially when i interviewed the guys you know That's what I, I, mean. I could tell, yes. like, yeah i could tell like they looked back at me like i remember yeah interviewing justin there on the line i remember those guys were just they seemed like they were super excited about it but it was definitely it was definitely a little bit different um, yeah, it, it definitely has got to be a little weird for them and for you as well. You've done some reporting before. I remember you were on the floor for a couple of Supercrosses when you got hurt, right? Um, yep. at, at some yeah, point. I so, did Minneapolis uh, yeah. 2022. So I know that with these things, there's a shit ton of prep and phone calls during the week. They really love their, their – um, really, they really love their um, uh, meetings, Feld guys and, and TV guys. So let me ask you, obviously you and I went and searched for Stu – Never found him. That was a great vlog. But is it Fantastic. cool? Is it cool to get to know James a little better? Oh yeah, man, so cool. Um, I never really. I mean, I rode at his. I rode at his place uh, for a couple of years there, or I guess really just a year around. I think it was 2020, 2021. Um, I saw him out there every once in a while. Mm-hmm. But but growing up, being at the races, I never really kind of, as I turned pro, it was kind of his last couple of years. So, yeah, I never really spent a lot of time with him or never was around him much. But uh, he couldn't be, he couldn't have been cooler to me. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was great. We were all even, yeah, just in our meetings, Mm -hmm. uh, our production meeting on Wednesday, we had like, you know, we were going back and forth, bench racing over stuff. And yeah, he's, he's really knowledgeable, obviously. And he's a, he's kind of like a moto nerd like me. So I, I think, I think it's funny that we, like, I can relate to some of the things he sees so much. And I think he, I think he appreciates that I can see it as well. Mm -hmm. And he's stoked to have somebody to go back and forth um you know with on that so yeah he was he was cool man and um the whole the whole day the whole even weege and jt they were all so helpful and uh it it just really felt like a team which was yeah it it just made it so much more fun it's come a long way since finding Stu. yeah Long way. Long way. <laughs> yes, we have. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, I didn't bring it up. No, I don't think they'll ever bring it up. Don't, don't bring it up. <laughs> don't bring it up. But, yeah. you know, another, the, the, the real legacy of the Finding Stu video was when it dropped, I was like, I got to lose some weight. <laughs> hey, that was your, that was really? your finding it was, right there? It was one, it, I, was like, I, oh, I was like, oh, you know, you never quite see yeah. yourself all that much, right? Right. And the video, and the, the video came out, and I was like, oh, I got to do something. Like, damn. Yeah, yeah. When was the, yeah, was that the start of the e-bike era? I think it really was. Yeah, it was. I think right around then. Like, when, that, when did we do that video? 19? 2018. 2018? Yeah, yes. Summer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I believe 2018. If I go back to my Strava, uh, 18 or 19 was – I think at 19 I got serious, but 18 I started. Yeah. So, you know, that's the real legacy of the Finding Stew video. Okay. Where me – because when I was laying on the gate, I was laying on the ground, you can kind of see my belly sticking out, AC, and I was like, ah, oh, that's not good. <laughs> 
Look, nice. look at us now, man. Look at, <laughs> look us, at now. us now. <laughs> no, but like I know that stuff about Stu because obviously I know you're such a you're such a fan of the sport, Adam, and you you analyze it and all that. And then really, since Stu came out of hiding, he's been surprising me with kind of how much he's a fan. Because oftentimes the elite elite guys aren't you know necessarily knowing what's going on in the sport. They're just super talented, hardworking guys. Right. Stu yeah. is, is not that way. Stu is smarter and more of a geek, nerd, geek, uh, intellectual, whatever term you want to use, yeah. than I thought he would ever be, Adam. You know, he's into it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, any anytime someone is that good, at some, I feel like across all professions, sports, it's – you know, it's pretty rare that you meet somebody that still genuinely, like, has a passion and enthusiasm for it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it, it, his love for dirt bikes is more, and the same for me, it's more than, like, what it's done for us or, you know, the way winning has made us feel. And it, it, it's way more It's way more than that. It's like a, yeah, I don't know how to yeah. describe it exactly, but a, a genuine passion that you can just tell, like, you can tell by the tone of the voice, the way he talks about it, details, and you know it's the same with me. And yeah, I I'm I've been, I guess, kind of surprised after he was so quiet for for a while, like how intricate and in depth he gets on the. Yeah, I think on the broadcast and also his podcast is is really good too. So I think yeah. it, I just think it's cool to have like a great of the sport that that has the love for it like that. So, question for you: Were you nervous? Were you a little? Oh, like, dude! Really? I was so nervous. Oh, man. okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, I had some people tell me when I was standing there, uh, standing there with my monitor, like as the motors were going on, that I, you know, I looked like it was no big deal. And I think as the day settled in, um, it was totally fine. Like you know, I, I've done it before, but it's, you know, it's different when it's actually your job and you're not, yep. Yep. you know, you're not a racer that's just kind of doing it almost for fun there's not a lot of pressure there and uh just the live just the live shots talking into the camera those are difficult to get used to those are a lot harder than what you would think they would be Mm -hmm. i guess even you know in my head um so i I definitely put some pressure on myself too i wanted to you know i wanted to be a value and it was i think especially we do a little rehearsal the morning of i think it's around uh, eight thirty or so, and I was. I think I had a little segment talking about Max Anstey, and the first rehearsal, I completely locked up, man. Like it was, <laughs> it was so bad. But Weed came over to me, and he's like, "Dude, don't worry about it. Like rehearsals, everybody always, you know, b- <laughs> blows those." And I'm like, "Shoot!" But once it got going, like once the lights came on, I was, I was fine. I was pretty locked in and, and focused, and I really surprised myself, especially once I settled in with with how much fun I had. Like, that's, that's the most fun I've had at a race in a couple years, I, I would say. I, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, I thought you got better as the day went on. It took you yeah, I agree. Uh, an hour or what, whatever n- amount of time before yeah. you started, like, being funny and knowledgeable and, you know, being the Adam that, that I know. You know, it took you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it's a, you know, it's a difficult thing, too. It's... It's a difficult thing is to, for one, in that role, most of the time, you know, they want you to keep it 20, 30 seconds. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to talk too much, and you also don't want to hog the mic either. You know, I, I don't want to be talking to Bondo every 15 seconds saying, oh, I can add on that, I can add on that. So you, you want to find your you want to find your spots, um, and it, it's, you want your personality to come through, but you also want to be professional and, you know, make sure you're not biased in any way. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of different things. And I'm sure I was overthinking parts of it. And yeah, once I, once I settled in and got comfortable, I felt like, I felt like I was just having a conversation like I am right now. Um, but it did definitely take me a minute and I think it'll take me, you know, that's why I need repetition. You know, it's just like anything else, you know, you have to do it a lot in order to be good at it so i I definitely will improve so ac gives me hope as a fan that is involved in the sport and i know a lot i'm inside the sport i see a lot i know a lot of things that other people don't but like when i have been watching these shows and 
when I don't have someone that hasn't raced or been there on the floor, I don't have any hope as far as me <laughs> learning anything, right? Right. So even though I think I know a lot, when I know, okay, AC's on, I'm going to learn something today that I may not know about. And it gets me excited to watch, right? So every time they throw it to AC, I cannot wait because I'm hoping I'm going to learn something or relate to something that I might know that no one else gets to talk about. So this was brought up on the, the show, which I thought was awesome. Uh, the line choice comment that he talked about where the writer has to decide, hey, I know my line. Uh, I got to make up some time. But if I'm scared to get off of this line because if I do, I could be losing time and not catch him. So that is so relatable as a writer. And that's the shit I get stoked on because now we're talking about core people watching this show. And that's what motocross is. We're core dudes. We're not some new right, fan. We have right. core people watching this show. And now I'm like, yes. Yeah, Adam, talk to me. I'm like, I'm pumped watching. I'm like, yeah, tell us about this because I can relate. Even the local racer understands that shit. The, the junior vet guy that can't catch the dude in fifth knows about what Adam's talking about. So these are the things that I get excited about because Adam is there. So that is what you bring to the table, dude. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm, glad, that, um, I'm glad that you got something out of that. And it's funny, and, and this is kind of to – to let you guys, I guess, or I guess I can speak to more how comfortable, um, how comfortable I was. But I, I sat there for a second, actually, and debated whether or not I, I had that in my head. And that's normally something that comes really naturally for me. Like I, that's something that I could almost think about and say at the same time. Like just start talking, and it'll work out. And, and just on live on live TV, I wanted to make sure I had the complete thought down before i you know before i asked before i said hey bondo i i can you know i can add on this mm -hmm. um so i think you know as i continue to do it and have more reps i can i can do that more often you know just as i get comfortable and and not really overthinking it or anything like that but um i i want to you know i want to give people that information like i want to keep the hardcore fans right. stimulated too uh, but there is also there is also kind of you do need to tailor a little bit to the people that know less. So, but I feel like I can do, I feel like I can do both. So hopefully I can do both, especially when it starts getting to like the NBC shows, Supercross, et cetera. I think you're really going to shine like in Supercross because I think there's more people that don't know the intricacies of SX versus MX because most of us that are enthusiasts ride MX, but I, but the fan doesn't understand what exactly is involved in SX. So I think that's where we're going to learn a shit ton from you when it goes indoors. I hope so. I'm, I'm excited. I, I have these, you know, I have Bud's Creek. Um, you know, my deal is just these two races. So, yeah, I think it's good for me. I'm just stoked to have these opportunities. And everybody, I, I almost feel like I, I, I feel like I don't deserve it. Like I did pretty good, but everybody's been so stoked. Even at the race, everybody was super supportive, <laughs> and um, it's just been it's it's so cool, man. To like, I've never felt so a part of this community as I do right now. And it's just like right after my career and just where I'm at, um, I'm super stoked to let be me, where I'm at. Let me ask you this: Did you have like sort of you're on the infield and you had did you have fans yelling AC and like? Oh, the... dude, nonstop, nonstop. So, okay. It was so cool. Okay, so I get that too. And of course, I don't know what the move is. What's the move? Say hi. What? Yeah, you just throw him a little wave. What? Do you, okay. I just, I just throw him the shaka, man. <laughs> okay. All right. So I feel like. Or if you're Phil, you just flip him off. I feel weird doing that. Why? I don't. I mean, I don't get it as much as Adam would or whatever. But you know, I got. I'm in the, the tower. I, I'm in the tower at Thunder Bay and people or Thunder Valley, Thunder Bay, uh, Ontario. Yeah, <laughs> Thunder Valley and fans are like Mathis, and I look. He's like, "What's up?" 
That's all uh, you gotta say. Is, you just yell it back. Yeah, what's up, man? Like the like the beer commercial. You what? No, this is <laughs> we, don't need to overthink. we don't need to overthink this one. You just need to own it, man. Yeah. You just need to own it. Like okay. you're a media guy, and you don't think you deserve recognition, probably internally. Think, yeah, I don't feel like you need to yell my yeah, name like I'm. Yeah, but like just I'm, own it, man. Yeah. Just own it. If they're saying hi to you and they're saying what's up. They feel connected to you in some way, right? That's what you got to think guess. about, right? I, I don't know. So you just got to be like, what's up, man? And just act normal. Okay. I always feel like if you, like the people around that person, like I don't know who said it. I don't know who, I don't know exactly who yelled it, right? Right. So I feel like I'm just like turning to like strangers that may be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? No, I mean. Like, why is this guy throwing us the hang loose sign? <laughs> I don't think that. I think you're overthinking Okay. It. All right. No, I think so too. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, good to know though. If uh, you know, if I can act like Adam, like personality-wise. What's your favorite AC insight from the from the weekend? Um, oh, it's easy. All right, I texted him. Oh, okay. I texted him. I loved it. Loved it. What was it? He said, "You know, sometimes you're not always going to be comfortable with your bike setup, but you just got to ride it, man. <laughs> you just got." And I just like, oh, hallelujah! Hey, hallelujah! Let's go! Praise Jesus! <laughs> Praise Jesus! <laughs> A ride sometimes they just get, sometimes they just gotta send you back to Florida with a flathead. Dude. <laughs> That's right. I just uh I, I'm a full believer like the team can get you ninety five percent of the way there, but that bike ain't gonna work in the whoops yeah. as it's gonna work in the turns. Correct. It's just not gonna happen and, and vice versa and all of that. And ride the damn thing. That's my so I loved it, AC. Yeah. Yeah, it's one thing a lot of times, you know, I've been surrounded by a lot of really good racers, uh, a lot of them better than me. So maybe I've always felt like, oh, man, it really seems like these guys are overthinking it. Like, it, mm-hmm. this this looks like what they're doing. This looks really hard. Like, they coming off the track, like, every two times, and they're super pissed off, and they're talking about shims and this and that and all this, you know. And I, I guess, I don't know, maybe I'm just not that picky. I was just never that way. Like, I don't think I've ever – come off a race and been like oh if i had this sh- i mean yes, i guess there's been a few yeah, times but no, the bfrc yeah, let's yeah. talk about the bfrc for a little bit that's like an elephant in the room though like come on i know it was weird yeah no i actually look back on that i think that thing was sick man <laughs> <laughs> um but you weren't the only guy saying that the jgr guys are having a hell of a problem too with it that's why when you told me well, that the, B- the, the yeah. only thing about that it was just it, as it got hot right as it got hot, kind of towards the end of the race, it was but, it was but a bit then, unpredictable. But those qualifying laps, bro, <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. But, like, when you told me that after some races, you know, off-the-record stuff, I would go to the to the JGR guys and be who were using that same shock, and I'd be like, what's the problem? And they're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, Adam's on to something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's on yeah. to something here. Like, I'm, he's not crazy. But, no, I mean – Adam, so when you said that, I was stoked on that. Uh, Chris, did you have a favorite Adam moment? I did. I talked about it. Oh, that That's was fa- okay. The line. Yeah. The line. What I do yeah. like though is when you see him interview riders, you can just immediately tell the riders are more, more relaxed. Yeah, we're going to get more out of the riders um, because they respect him. They know he's been there, mm-hmm. and and this is no shade. Not throwing shade to others that haven't done it. I just think in our sport, when you're talking to riders, they're going to feel more comfortable for people that actually are doing it. Mm-hmm. I saw it with Daniel. I see it with AC. I see even even with JT. Like I just think we're getting more out of our sport when we have guys like this that are interviewing our. Well, riders. and let's face it, Adam was the fastest guy on the track over these guys many times. Exactly. As well. So, so when you're you're like, oh, this guy got me in fucking qualifying sessions right. quite a bit. I mean, you just look at AP <laughs> when he interviewed AP. He's like, man, yeah. it's good to see you. Like, this is right. cool. Like, it's pretty cool. But it know? is AP too. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You're right. Yeah, yeah. everything's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was that was why I went straight to AP. Yeah. I knew when I, when I when I read the script, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm going. Where's the number seven? Because <laughs> uh, I knew he would be down. I was actually surprised before the second 450 moto that Barsh actually came up to me, and he's like, "Oh, what's up, man? You know, talking to me all smiling really? and oh, stuff." Wow. And I'm yeah. like, "Yeah," because I'm like trying to scout. You know, having having been a rider, you know, twelve days ago, I'm like, I don't, I don't really want, like, I wouldn't want somebody trying to interview me. Like, I, you know, I would yeah. make you guys think that I wanted to be interviewed, but I, I don't. Like, I don't want to be interviewed on the gate. Nobody does. Yeah. Um. And yeah. And Justin was was like, yeah, man, no problem. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, came, cool. It came up to me, so that was that was cool. That was probably the most, um, 
that was the coolest thing about my day, I think. Um, even when I was interviewing Chase on the podium, uh-huh. I, I really enjoyed, I thought maybe it would feel weird, but I enjoyed, like, facilitate. you know, it's his moment. Like, he just had this killer ride, and everybody stoked for him. And, like, I enjoyed facilitating that for him, but not being the guy that's getting the praise. Mm-hmm. And I mean that genuinely. Mm-hmm. Like it, it almost made me feel as good as some of the some of my like wins, to be honest. Sure. So yeah. I, I don't know. I guess um, that was kind of surprising. I don't know. It's like it's like the old saying, like you know, Christmas time. It's always better to give gifts than receive. Like I'm always the guy that's really weird when I get something. Uh-huh. I act weird because I feel like ah, I don't want to be the look, guy. So like, look you, how we feel about what we've done to Dark Side. Right. Look, look how we feel. Yeah. We've created dark sides. What did you guys do? Oh, oh my God. Look mean, at his life. Look at his life. Yeah. It's just turned around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we cut that pony off. We started with cutting that pony off. Yeah. Do you remember him when he had a pony? Yep. Well, we cut the I pony. remember the weekend. That, uh, what Didn't you do it on stage at Minneapolis? Yeah. yeah oh, I were think you AC there? was there that night. Were you there yeah, that night? Yeah, that's where I did that. That's the last time I did TV. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. We, we cut his that pony night off. changed his life. AC. We, after that, we gave him a YZ two fifty. Yeah. He's got a job at Vital now because he looks respectable. He we got have, him a girlfriend. He's got a girlfriend now. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a wrap. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, hey, how's the ankle? Uh, did you just rest, or, <laughs> dude. Do you need anything? I don't to- want to talk about it. Uh, Jess keeps telling me you got to go get it scanned. <laughs> like you got to go get so it. So it's at. still jacked up. <laughs> It's still jacked. It looks like a. It looks like there's a golf ball like Jeez. on the side of my ankle still. <laughs> Dude, can we go to an urgent care? Can we do anything? <laughs> I. They told me. They told me it was broken at <laughs> at St. Louis, and then yeah, I didn't go get it. I didn't go get it looked at after that because it's like I'm racing no matter what. <laughs> and then as soon as the racing got done, all I want to do is golf. So what am I going to do? Go and plus. How the last couple of years went, man? Like I get a little sick to my stomach going in, going into a doctor's office. So yeah, yeah. okay. Nah, I don't know. Maybe, okay. maybe once the fall comes well, around, I'll. It's not. It's I'll not, go. Uh, it's no gangrene. Is that? there? It's no gangrene or anything. Is there? Is all gangrene, good? not gangrene. <laughs> gangrene. It's not tangerine with gang on it. What is it? What's it called? It's gang green. No, oh. nothing. Uh, no frostbite or anything. <laughs> okay. Nothing. All right. Everything. So, yeah. It's just like if I if I uh, if I walk around too much at the end of the day at the end of the day on Saturday it was a bit. Mm. I had to elevate it once I got. I, the Skechers just didn't <laughs> didn't completely hide it. But I did buy two new pairs of Skechers for the weekend. Oh wow. Oh boy. Yeah. Getting serious. Flip ons too, man. Yeah. Flip ons. Wow, getting serious. Yeah, they were dope. That topic came up there. I don't know who I was with, but like, would you ever own Skechers? I'm like, I'm out. I don't think I could do it. They were buy one, buy one get one fifty percent off. And I'm like, well, AC well, does it. Like, yeah, he goes hard on the on the. Where are you at Skechers. with the? Well, listen, you got the Crocs though. Yeah, that's good track shoes. You have Crocs. I do have. Crocs. I'll never do Crocs. Yeah, that's true. All right, no hate comes. Yeah. So, uh, OGO Power Sports bringing you Adam Cincerelli here on the show. Uh, Pulp fifteen is the code to save with OGO, and for now, use the code to get thirty percent off. Um, the covert woody camo bag, hundred dollar retail value for just seventy bucks. Back to school. Yeah, back to school. Uh, Alex Ray. So you're doing buds, and then did they sell, tell you SMX? Yeah. Anything SMX or they don't know? Uh potentially. Okay. Ho- uh, hopefully there's some opportunities there. I did hear. A, um, I heard a spicy rumor about AC next year. Oh, spicy. I don't know if, I don't know if I'm Re- allowed to say. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, just, yeah. it's a rumor. Let's talk about it. It's spicy. a rumor. Spicy. Okay, go ahead. Oh boy. Brayton. And AC race day live. God, that'd be good. Really? That would be good. That would be good. Oh, that's the first time I've heard about it. Okay, like so this, yeah. Th- just them two? I don't know. With Dan, I don't know. Just Brayton and AC. I don't know. Yeah, that's good. But can you imagine them bouncing off each other? And oh, yeah. that'd be that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Brayton's good, man. He's yeah. good. He is good. Um, it, yeah, yeah. Th- but th- that'd be great though if that came together where two guys, because like, I think that's the secret of like. The, you know, our race review podcast is really successful. Weege, myself, JT, a mechanic, a media guy, and an ex-racer. And, you know, we're, sometimes we're just yelling at each other. So just that's not, together. not great. But I think just – and you guys were doing that. Like when James and JT got into, like, Big James's signals during the middle of the moto. That was good too. Yeah. Right. 
I think yeah, that, I was smiling. Right. I wasn't even a part of that conversation, just listening to it, and I was <laughs> yeah, I was laughing, man. So I think fans now they don't want they want some casual conversation, like they're eavesdropping. Yes, and I think well, that's what yeah. that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. as well, right. And I think honestly, this, that's a success of ours at Pulp MX here, like the di- various shows we've had, including Adam and Phil and. It's like you're just listening to a bunch of guys bullshit, right? Yeah, yeah. We're swearing well, sometimes. Like, yeah. And, yeah, and most of the time. And I think people like that. I think I think that's a reason why our shows are successful and the broadcast. You know? So keep I, that I up. agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's hard too, like I said. It's I do want to be like a I do want to bring like a brashness to the you know, that I, I want to be myself. Mm-hmm. I, I, I obviously um, be myself, but you, you got to do it. You got to figure out a way to, you know, make others better around you as well. And, and, you know, just how it all, you got to mesh in fit, you know, fit mm-hmm. in well. And yeah. it's just, yeah, but it's so, man, it's so fun. Like trying to figure it out. Sure. Uh, I look forward to like diving into it more. Obviously it's just one, one opportunity I've had so far. Yeah. So, Wow. A lot of room for improvement, fellas. So I, mean, I assume this is good. the long haul. We're doing this for the long haul. We're trying to. I would love to. I'd love to make a career out of it. That's cool. I mean, uh, good thing they gave him nice short flights to D.C. and Hartford, <laughs> you know, from, from from L.A. So that was nice. Nice short ones. Yeah, yeah. I almost <laughs> missed my flight, too, man. I'd never, I, uh, I'd never been a part of anything like it in my life. Like, I was all ready to go, man. I even, like, used ways and planned the drive ahead of time. I'm like, there ain't no way I'm missing missing this flight. Yeah. And it got delayed like an hour and a half. I got a text from Delta. And then, uh, like, right as I'm about to leave, to they the moved the flight back oh, yeah. to the, its original yeah. time. Oh, I Is hate that, that. Yeah. And so I went like 115 miles an hour, and I made it. LAX or? No, 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 San Diego. San Diego, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if you flew direct, but. Are you Cali guy full time now? Oh, yeah, he's Cali. Man, if anybody asked me that, Again, I'm going to lose my man. Shit. I'm yeah, sorry. Exactly. Was he been yeah. saying this the whole time? Uh, yeah, for years. Oh, sorry, he's dude. been Cali for literally years, man. Really? Years. Years. What? Yeah. God, yeah. Well, I'm out of it. I, now. No, I, I didn't just, know that. I'm just messing. I mean, I'm messing with you, but so many people are. I'm like, I, yeah. I'm like, I'm a Marietta, California guy. I Even guess that's like, just so really? weird for us because we know you. You're a Florida guy, and it's just weird for us to think that you're here now. He's here. All right. I know. Is that because your is your is your chick from Cali? Nope. No, oh. she's from England, man. All right. Yeah. No, it's just uh, it's just a lifestyle thing. I mean, we can talk about it. We can talk about it off air. But I just got a lot of friends out here, and where I was in Claremont at the time is like I was two hours away from my family. I barely I see them more now. I think because when <laughs> I go back, I just hang out with them the whole time. Yeah. You know, I'm working on getting a. We're working on getting a condo in, in, in Florida, so we'll have some place to the, go. De- but Definitely, the, if you do the TV stuff, the travel is so much easier on the East Coast, for sure, if you end up doing more of it. You know? Listen, man, don't tell me that as I'm as – I'm What? Just, uh, you don't even want to know how deep I am in renovations right now. Oh, I know. I've seen you on I've The seen number you on is climbing <laughs> daily. Steve. <laughs> yeah. How old is AC? Uh, 27? 26? Is he good for the rest of his life? Yeah. You're good. He's if he's good. smart enough, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're not flying private, but right. we'll be all right. I uh-huh. mean, he had – you count the championship year. You count the – how many full, full – I was acting f- like he wasn't on the phone. That's why I was talking to you. Oh, yeah. So five years of 450s? <laughs> Four years? 450s? Right? Four. Four yeah. years. Four, well, that's well, three and a half, I guess. Okay, but that's that's a million a year. Okay. The At championship least. year. Yeah, yeah, million – Plus the, the gear the, contracts. The, 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 I'm, I'm counting everything. Okay. Not from Cowie. Cowie deal is probably like three, 400. Then you got gear. And, then you got the title year was over a million bucks. PC, I mean, even at the PC, that's, that's 500K-ish. He's got, you know. Yeah. The ambassador deals nowadays is a quarter mil. I thought you'd be closer on these numbers, Steve. Am I yeah. off? Am I, I don't know. I'm just, yeah. listen, roughly math, the, the kids made $10 million. That's so cool, man. Maybe it less. Really, it, yeah, maybe, it's, maybe more. I'm I'd sorry. love to hear shit um, like this. That's right. like great. So he's fine. I'm incredibly fortunate. I'm, I have, I have paid for it in blood. Yep. But <laughs> yes, you have. Yep. <laughs> it's uh, no. The sport's given me so much. Like it really, not to get too deep, 
too deep on your on your show here right now, but just like looking at my life right now, it's I don't know when you're in it and you're you're racing every week and you're stressing every single result, and then especially with the injury and and all that, it's so easy to get tunnel vision and you just focus on your problems. But man, like I've I've got it, I've got it made really. Like so- I'm. I'm extremely fortunate. That's why, like, a little bit – look, uh, uh, Mike Alessi has done some dumb things on the track, and, and, and Mike's had – but I hear these people like, Mike Alessi's a bust. And I'm like, okay, sure. No. Never won a championship. Dude. I get it. The guy won 450 Nationals. He won uh, podium Supercrosses. Yep. He probably made $5 million or more. I don't know how much he's got left. I have no idea about that. But, like, if you t- – <laughs> I'll take that bust any day of the week. Like the point. The point uh, is, I, I, I look at. I understand everyone wants to win championships, yeah. but the point is to be able to make enough money for yourself to live for the rest Absolutely. of your life off a of dirt bike. Right. Right. Absolutely. So Adam, and just to be in the sport, I think to be in the sport for an extended period of time, yeah. especially at a factory level sure. for an extended period of time. I mean, it's just like. Like the, I don't know, you look at the NFL and the average career is like two and a half years or something, right? I mean, in dirt bikes, I think if you were to average everybody out, it would probably be pretty close to that. Most people go pro and they do it for a few years and, you know, they don't get a ride and that's it. So, and, and then and, there's, I mean, there's, there's the afterlife go. too, right, Adam? Like a lot of people or racers in general don't want to be as involved as you are post race career. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I especially, you know, being 27 years old, I mean, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things I could do. I mean, I could go back to school. I could have a whole nother career if I wanted, but if, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to go anywhere. So, yeah, as long as as long as you guys will have me, I'll be here. So wait, m- my numbers were really far off. Really? Not really far off, oh, okay. but just some of the. Some of them were. I wonder if they're I mean, that was, far off up or far off I'm down. I'm blessed, man. It was literally just off the top of my head, so it's kind of doing the math that way. But, um, all right. Uh, no, listen, it's awesome. It's it's good to see you back uh, doing it. I hope you I hope yeah. Bud's Creek will be awesome, and I'm, you'll get better as you go. And it was already great. Um, so yeah, keep it up, man. Uh, I really appreciate. No, I don't like using that word great. Let's reserve that. Okay. One. It was good. It was good. I did good. It was good. Yeah. I did good. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Wasn't he got great. off the gate well. That's what we can say. He got yeah. off the gate well. Yeah. Okay. We could do that. Got off the gate well. Uh, and Bud's Creek will be even better. And uh, yeah, listen, I'm sure a lot of people wanted to talk to you, so I appreciate you giving us some time tonight here on the Janky Radio Show. You'd be surprised, man. The only person I talked to today is my mom. <laughs> Oh, my, huh? Oh, boy. Real talk. Yeah. Uh, all right, buddy. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, yeah, Adam. Yeah, thanks, guys. Good to talk to you. See ya. See ya. Have a good one. All Later. Right. Adam Seen Cerullo, buddy. OGO uh, Power Sports bringing you that. It's nice to have him around. Yeah. He did a good job. Yeah, he really did. So. And I was, like, when I mentioned, like, the post-race career being around, not even, like, him wanting to do it, but, like, people enjoying him being here. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of those type of people Yeah. Uh, that – fans are attracted to you yeah, know yeah i think he has that persona where a lot of people like him yeah he's just oh, a yeah. normal dude i mean a lot of people have said oh i'm still going to tv when he even when he's racing and i, I was going to ask him about that and i yeah. forgot but like he had a lot of hype coming in for to have his job like yeah. there's a lot of people that are saying oh he's going to kill it right so right. i'm sure there's some pressure there as well uh eight o'clock hour brought to you by folks at renegade renegade supercross mini 50s the latest addition to the championship winning Power Sports lineup. It's an AMA legal auctionated high performance unleaded and ethanol free fuel designed specifically for the 50cc machines. Renegade, back in the 50cc business. Hmm. Pulp Mex 24 is a code to save racers that win. Pour it in. Check it out. It comes mixed with a proprietary synthetic certified two stroke oil. Oh, wow. 50 to 1 mixed. Pour it in. Does it say what it's mixed to? Nope. All right. Nope. Just 40 to in. 1? 40 to 1? Probably 50. Okay. Yeah. Is that where we're at nowadays? 50 to 1? Yeah. Like two strokes a lot different. Remember when it was 32 to 1? <laughs> 20 to 1. <laughs> 20 to 1 like when I was a little kid. All day long. 20? 20 to 1. Holy was my dad's, shit. My dad taught me, you know, <laughs> how, to, how to mix oil and gas when I was a kid. And then at some point, 32 to 1 was the norm. Do you yeah. remember when you first got allowed to do it on your own? How stressed you were? No. Dude, I was stressed. My dad's like... At I think work, da- you better fucking mix your gas ref. You blow up your engine. That's it. We don't. We don't have no money to do anything else. So it's on you. <laughs> so I'm in the garage going, oh uh, shit. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> all right, we've got a few phone calls to get to. Uh, Carson, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What's Thanks up, for Carson? Calling. What's up, Carson? Um, I'm wondering when the Mandarin's coming back. People hate on the Mandarin, dude. I thought dude, it was funny. I don't People it. hate the Mandarin? Oh, it's out there. Hate it. Dude. I mean, I'll tell them. I but, think it's funny. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I Honestly, Carson, no one knows. The Mandarin comes and goes. He does as he pleases. No one quite knows when he's going to send in a message or not. Um, so People I don't know. said they turn off the show when the Mandarin comes on. What? Yes. If the Mandarin knew that, the Mandarin would come after them. Right. Yeah. I don't, yeah, don't want to mess with that guy. No. 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 I'll, uh, I'll pass it on, though. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mandarin, dude. <laughs> He was in a cave in a with some fire. I saw the last one. He was like in a fire. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. that one. Yeah, you were here for the first time. He sent a message in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looked like he was in a cave. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, all right, Jake's on four. What's up, Jake? Boys, how we doing? Good. What's up, Jake? Thanks for calling. Hey, Keeper, I'm sorry I kind of blew you up on Instagram, but, uh, you know, today's kind of a big day. Oh, Fucking yeah. birthday today, boys. How about that? Fucking yeah. birthday. 28 years old. Happy today. birthday, oh, brother. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah, I, pre- I appreciate it. Hey. You got nothing better to do uh, on your birthday than listen to this show? Yeah. Like, well, I had some family over earlier, so I kind of missed the first half. But okay. no, man, this is it. This okay. is it. Perfect. So I went to Southwick this weekend. Mm-hmm. First uh outdoor national i've ever been to okay me and my chick went okay. for my birthday kind of weekend getaway thing i live in rochester new york we made the drive down long story short what a great fucking sporting event probably i've nice. been to stanley cup final games i've been to bills games truly i have not been to a better sporting event than that outdoor national at southwick just like being able to walk to the pits how close you can get to everyone standing yeah. next to the track. I'm three feet away from the fucking track during yeah. the race. Is there first I mean, national, other... obviously? Yeah, he says first, first national. national. Did you did you yeah. did you see Phil? Oh, I talked to Phil, dude. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> so he is. Yeah, I've been wanting to talk to Phil for fucking years. So I'm, I walk by, I walk by the club uh, rig, and it's Phil with just his compression shorts on, hosing himself down. <laughs> guys like covered in sand i'm like look at this fucking guy yeah my chick sit next to me she goes he races i'm like yeah he, she goes, he looks like he's 40 <laughs> i'm like i'm like i cannot wait i literally i was like i gotta call into the show i, I started taking notes in my phone i'm like i gotta remember some of this shit so i'm like i go to phil comes up to, he's got nothing on right and there's a guy some I don't know how old, probably in his sixties. He's standing against the club tent. He's got like Nike, you know, the dad shoes, the Nike yeah. Monarch sneakers. Probably Mike. He's like, <laughs> he's like, fam, fam. And Phil just got off the track. He's trying to clean himself off. Phil turns around, kind of smirks. He walks over in his compression shorts and gets a picture. The guy swings his arm around him. Oh, nice. They get a picture. <laughs> Whatever. So I'm like, I'm talking to Phil. I'm like, hey, I'm like, Phil, where would Steve stack up today on the track here? He's like. Steve's fucking trash. <laughs> fucking just running his mouth. Yeah, though, yeah, that's, that sounds great. That sounds like Phil. Yeah. Sound, right, sounds about right. But anyway, one of the things I want to talk about was, and I know AT said he's a bit nervous before he yeah. you know, started on his new endeavor or whatever. Mm-hmm. He comes down the track. He's in the gator with his, with his squad headed down. I was sitting right on the corner on the fence after the uh, tunnel jump yep. coming up the hill there. Yep. And so I t- all like – AC was my favorite rider before he retired, and so I was like, I, mean, I kind of made it a point. I'm like, hey, if we can do one thing today, let's try to let's try to fucking find AC somewhere. Yeah. So I turn around and I I like see AC in the Gator just breeze by right there, and I'm mm-hmm. like, no shit. I see him get out. It's just before opening ceremonies. Opening ceremonies is about to start. He gets out. He's down there with JT. He's got the mic in his hand. I'm like, pull a peacock, pull a peacock, so we can watch his his interview. Before he before he gets like around to the front of the starting gate, he starts heading to the porta potty right there behind. He's got his mic in his hand. He turns around. He goes back to his squad. He hands his mic off so he didn't bring it in the porta john with him. Yeah, yeah. He goes to the porta potty. The guy is gone for like ten minutes. He's in the porta potty. Had to take care of business. Yeah. 
either taking a shit or he was beating off in there. Keeper, I don't know what he had go- going on. Definitely beating off. Probably taking a shit. <laughs> did, he lock, so, did he lock it at least? I couldn't see the red or green I'm sure switch he over. It. He's, he's classy. He's not a gorilla. <laughs> yeah, he had to have locked it. But mm-hmm. anyway, that's that's kind of – I got a bunch of other thoughts, but you guys got other shit to talk about, and I just wanted to call in and say hello. I'm glad you that's enjoyed it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. times, much with the, yeah, was, with, up with the mass holes up there. It's good. Yeah, it was great. Also, I was going to comment on this, too. After the 250 race, I did see Deegan's bike down there. They, it was in the wide open, like right to the left of the starting gate. You could see from the corner. Yeah. And I'm assuming, like I heard them, they were teching someone else's bike down there. And I saw Duff pull up with Deegan's bike. And I sat there and watched for a little bit. Didn't know what was happening, obviously. But it dawned on me when you said that it never, I never heard him start it. You know, get it on the rev limiter. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'd be curious to know. Well, we will never know, I'm sure, but sure would like to know exactly what was going on if they were had some yeah. issue going on they knew about or what. But. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm not sure, and I just know the AMA's like found it very strange. Also, so yeah, mm-hmm. I think you know. Hey, one more thing. Yep. One more thing, and this is it. I turn around one other time and I see Lewis Phillips oh. walking down. I'm like, oh boy! I gave it. I gave it to Lewis too. He, he didn't stop or anything. He just gave me a smirk. And I'm like, Lewis. I'm like, let's have a fucking day, Lewis. Come on. <laughs> did he have? Gave did, was he carrying water? Was he carrying a bo- jug of water? He did have a bottle of water. Yeah, he's very water. worried about heat stroke. Is he? Yeah, he's, he thought he had heat stroke at Paula. It was 70 degrees out. Oh my god! So now Dude, he just Southwick carries. Southwick was fucking sixty-two degrees in the morning when I saw him, and the guy had a had a water bottle. On the he's hand. very worried about heat stroke. He's very pasty. He's, very, <laughs> he's the UK. Yeah, yeah. You, you know that's where uh, they're from. All right, all right, all right boys. So thank you, man. Go. Later. Happy Glad birthday, brother. It. Thanks, yeah. uh, All right, everybody. Paul Mech Show. Chris Kiefer brought to you by Decal Works. Uh, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Job of the week. Twisted. There you go. Twisted development full time. What is the position? Uh, they're they're seeking qualified talent. Okay. You got talent? <laughs> Come to twist. <laughs> uh, this seems like a, a, a um, this seems like a job for they well, want motor work. No. Yeah, it says they pride themselves in putting together the best performance packages that will fit your specific needs. That sounds like something you want to get for Whether your bike. you are a beginner, intermediate or top professional who needs technical edge to compete at the highest level, we have a service or package for you. Twisted Operations Manager. Motorcycle industry jobs. Twisted Development in Marietta, California is hiring an operation manager to keep law and order. Say this. This, this doesn't say this. I'm just telling you what they posted today, so it's probably the same thing. Where? On Twisted Development's Instagram. Okay. Can I read it for this commercial? Yep. Okay. Is hiring an operation manager to keep law and order among their crew, or whatever an operation manager does. <laughs> Who knows? Is that what it says? I don't know, but okay. if you do, then you're probably well suited <laughs> to apply. <laughs> There you go. Uh, salary range based on experience. So Jamie at Twisted, uh, looking for an operations manager. Perfect. I think Dave dies the East Coast operations manager. There's Florida bound. Yeah. Yeah, Florida bound. Um, is uh, is Jamie going to Florida? He he is going tomorrow. Actually. Oh. He'll be there for a little bit. And he's but gonna... they're just splitting time. Oh, they are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so check it out. MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Job of the week. Upload your resume uh, for free today. It's the first and only job build board built specifically for the motorcycle industry. Nick, uh, what's uh, what's the what's the YouTube scuttle? Are we are we still buffering? Are people angry? The guy on Twitter is really upset. Oh man, I, I lost years off my life on that one. Okay. It uh, just the YouTube gods were not working with us today. Are we back or we're still not working with us? We're back. We're we're buffering a little bit. So though. Okay. Yeah, we'll All figure right. it out. Do we blame you? Do we blame <laughs> Nick? That's his first time. So. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. First time alone. Yeah. Do you want to ask him about? Uh, well, I just want to uh, let the people know out yeah. there. Okay. That our guy Nick. Yeah. Although not basement, because he's a... He's not basement. No, no. He's no. a good-looking fellow. Talon's basement. Talon's basement. Yeah. Uh, he has a very, very, very um, attractive wife. Yeah. Like, when I saw what I saw, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how I saw it. I sent it to you. Oh, that's said, what it was. Look at Nick's okay. wife. Yes. Yes. And I was like, damn. Like... Did you follow? No. I don't do that. No, follow him. Uh, no, I didn't do that oh, yet either. you got to follow him. But I don't follow the girls. Like Yes, you do. No. Yes, you do. Not the ones I really think are super hot. I just I play it cool. Okay. You can yeah. give her a follow. Uh, I feel weird when I do that. Like people think I'm creepy, but I'm not that Nick, creepy. Though. I'm just more of like right. funny. Ha 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 ha. 
Yeah. But yeah, no, hey, good job on that, by the way. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely married up. So there are going to be a lot of pulp creepers that will follow your wife now because well, I said they that. they got to find him, though. So. No, they'll find it. They'll find it? They'll find it. Okay. So they, Yeah, they're, they're resourceful on the internet. How long have you been married? We've been married eight years now. Okay. How'd you meet? We met uh, through church. Okay. Oh. Yeah, man. oh, well, I can't even talk about it. I know. I kind of put a little water on the I'm fire out. there. but. Uh, <laughs> All right. We're backing out of that. <laughs> you know, still, you still I don't want no you? lightning hitting me. I'm out. I'm moving <laughs> away from this. So are, are you religious? Yeah. What are you? Uh, Christian. Okay. And you're in here in pulp. Well, man, I've been, I worked for Parts Unlimited for eight years. I, I've worked in some industries, man. So I've seen a lot of things. But uh, yeah, overall, that's kind of the grounding. grounding so if we have there. any faith questions, we know who Book to go to. Have. Steve. Exactly. <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of the way. It's, it's, uh, he knows what the show it is. Okay. He, I'm he, just, he, I, I hope he's listened to this show before he got here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Apparently, Nick and I met back in the day, Parts Unlimited days. Okay. I was at Mef oh, guy. Oh, yeah. No, I, I definitely know what goes on at those trade shows and yeah. MVP. What goes I, on I the trade goes shows? On. Oh, dude. What the hell's going on? What? Gnome's out or what? No. Oh. <laughs> Keeper, you know After Marx is Mormon, right? Yeah, but Marx doesn't like come off like that at all. Like, he's still Mormon, but he's Mormon. Is he? Yeah, for sure. I guess Tits is religious too, a little bit, huh? That's what we do on this show. <laughs> There's a lot of Mormons. I'm a. I, I'm. It's. It's. Yeah. Salt Lake. Vegas. Vegas yeah. is big. Yeah. So basically, are you and I the only ones that are not? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not Mormon, but. What are you? Uh, alive? I don't know. Uh, I was just born. Oh, I was just born. I'm alive. Yeah. Uh, Motorsport.com tweeted talent segment coming up as well. I want to thank the folks at Get Data, WUSA, Rocky Ridge Trucks, Intense Cycles, Wiseco Piston, MTX Braking, Troll Training, TrollTraining.com. All right. Check it out. Whether you're a vet, whether you're an off-road guy, whether you're a motocross guy, Troll Training. Jason Anderson. Yeah. I like Troll Training because it you got to be responsible enough for it, but it's an email program. They'll give you, you know workouts to do every day and do the workouts yeah you, i guess it's kind of like a babysitter you need to babysat a little bit you, you need to know the direction and then you need to be held accountable there you go factory chassis parts luxon clamps works connection pulp mx 20s code to save works connection they've got uh, 2025 yeah, our honda going now mm. so that should be soon yeah uh w usa i mentioned that guts racing atlas neck brace renegade race fuels ogeo pro filter a chair beast firepower maxima Renthal, Race Tech, X Brand Goggles, Decal Works, Fly Racing, Motorsport, and Michelin. Our guy Randy going to Loretta's. He's going. He's going. He paid his dues. Did he pay his, his entry? Oh yeah. He's he's now taking another loan out to go. We or? got Moto Mom's Mud Wrestling signs coming. I mean, he's it's <laughs> it's, it's working everything's over a production. Time. Every, everything's a production. <laughs> We're working. I wonder, on. is there going to be any Michelin work? Here's my thing. What? If this happens, do you think Davey will get mad at me? Yes. Okay. Well, I better back it down. Yeah, now. I do. Okay. Uh, Michelin Starcross 6 tires, by the way. Great tires. Mountain bike tires as well. They got the new E-Wild s- series out for e-bikes. And, uh, yeah, I've got them on my one of my tasers right now. So check out Michelin for all things uh, tires, sport bikes as well, cruisers, all of that. Michelin man forward slash motorcycle to learn more from those guys. Thank you to Michelin as well for coming on board. Uh, speaking of the new Honda that works connections, making some products for mm-hmm. you tested the 25 250. Yeah. So what'd you think? Uh, Honda's making great strides and having more comfort in their bikes. Uh, the Honda 250 has a little bit more torque and not so much what they have done with the engine, but the air box has been redesigned and there's more of a straighter airflow to the intake. So more torque, more bottom end. So that has improved. So even though I haven't ridden all the 250s back-to-back yet, we're still trickling in 2025s. I know the Kawasaki is a little bit different. Um, Aiden went up to Washougal and shot some commercials and some stuff, and he fed me a little bit of information, but that will be out soon. Uh, but Honda's done a a great job so far in their, in their bike. So the thing I was looking for with the Honda, and all you Honda guys know this, is you need more comfort. There's just not a lot there. It feels... It feels rigid, which even though the frame is the softest in class, it feels harsh. And if you watch some of these Honda videos with Lars and Trey, they explain some of that and how the energy is dispersed and why we feel what we feel, which I thought was really cool by Honda by doing that, if you're a technical guy. Uh, So, yeah, they've done a lot of work to the frame to make it more comfortable. We're going next week to Ironman, like I said, to ride the 450. So I'm going to spend a couple days there. And those two bikes share the same frame. 
And uh, so, yeah, so I'm looking for some of that comfort in the 450 as well. So it looked to me like they didn't do a lot of motor changes on either bike. But, no. But frame changes, chassis changes. It's more airbox okay. design yep. and subframe redesign a little yep. bit. Yep. So uh, So when I went to Italy, I saw Geyser's got a whole thing cut in a shroud just for cooling, Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. For just to get more air in more there. More airflow, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, their bikes are so different there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot different. But I feel like... It's going to be Honda's year in some of these shootouts in 2025 because now the engine has never been a huge issue. It's yeah. been a great engine. It's been feel. They just haven't had comfort. Um, so you're adding a little bit more straight line stability while keeping some of that cornering ability. And it could be really good. So, <laughs> Sir, have you seen Blue Crew? I have not seen 2025 Blue I Crew. I mean, it doesn't matter, even if they don't change a thing. It's bike of the year. Blue Crew needs some work. Stop it. Do you want to call Travis Preston? Do you want right to now? call Eli Tomac and ask him what his favorite oh, Yamaha was? So we're going to compare it to an alien. An That's, alien? An alien's going to tell us like how the bike is. The elite of the elite is that, telling us. That that doesn't apl- his that doesn't apply. He's on a production frame. He's, he's a subhuman alien on a dirt bike. We we can't learn anything from him cuz no one can ride like him. Look it. The Yamaha is great. Do you want to call Travis Preston? No, I do not want to call Travis Preston. I mean, he Cuz all he's going to say is it's the best bike ever. He knows it's a great bike. bike. I'm not. I, I love it. I race it. I get it. I'm just saying, a little bit more comfort wouldn't ha- wouldn't hurt. I think it's great comfort. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I think you should push your bike a little harder, and you can maybe feel it. Okay. Well, well I'll look into that. <laughs> uh, Chris Kiefer here on the show. Uh, by the way, um, we still got the tweets coming up as well. Um, the tweets. Tweets coming up. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, rake trail offset on pulpamex.com. You wrote an article. <sighs> a lot of people are confused on that. Uh, I, you know what? And it is confusing. Because sometimes what you feel, and this is the reason why I got into this. I was on uh, the plane ride home mm-hmm. and a long time to do stuff. So I was like, I'm going to type this out. You were in Spain. N- I was. Riding Triumphs. Nope. With I was Tedesco Stark. and Carmichael. No, I wasn't. I was Stark. Carmichael just said he got back from a trip from oh, Spain. Oh, good for RC. I don't know what so RC is So doing. he was in Spain and you were in Spain? I just missed him, yeah. And you didn't see him? No. I was and in Barcelona. Hot Sauce. I was in Barcelona. Hot Sauce was around. Was he? Did you see Hot Sauce? No. Didn't see him. So you. Carmichael, can we talk us. about this? This this all article? work for Triumph, and you guys never saw each other. That Didn't. is weird, right? That is so Fuck weird. You, it's weird. Yeah. Okay. Huh. I'm just all right. I'm just here, just browsing around, looking at Barcelona, so writing you, articles. So <laughs> right. I needed some inspiration, you so I wrote Barcelona. the the rake trail and right. offset article in Barcelona that, as I'm sitting that there. That is some real dedication. Thank you. That is. I appreciate that's, that's for, fantastic. That's for Pulp. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Why are yeah. you being so weird? Like. We I'm know you helped weird. Triumph, though. This is publicly stated. You said this on the show. It's it, you work for Triumph. You help them develop I production help, bikes. I help out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You're in Spain. You're shooting photos from a church. Heather's tweeting about wine. <laughs> so we know you're in Spain. Riding rake trail and offset. Okay. Yeah. It's Can not we a, move it's, this along? It's not a stretch to think that you're developing this 450 that is not coming out yet. I don't it, know. I, I'm not saying. I don't know anything. I get it. I get it. You can't say it. I understand yes. that. But just logically doing the math, it's like, well, he's probably riding the 450. I never even asked you. No. I we don't the, talk about the it. The 250 out. So 250, is it? We haven't got our <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I don't know if the 250's out. I saw it at Gainesville. I, I don't know. The good news is uh, okay. the Triumph 250, the media will have their bikes next week. I mean, dude. That's it, nice. It's, it's taken a while. It's a great bike. It is a good bike, yeah. Fun what bike do drive. I know about 250Fs? I was impressed. You though. actually liked it. Yeah, but I'm not, I don't really count. But I thought the power for my size was impressive. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you would know right away I was like, if you didn't like pretty it. fast up top. Yeah. So. So, anyway, the Rake Trail yes. and Offset okay. yes. article. Yeah. Spain. Uh, Yes. I ha- Go ahead. How's the food? Spain? Yeah. Love it. So, you love it? I love it. Beans well, and rice and no, no, it's none of that. Huh? There is some of that, but like yeah. just the difference between Europe food and here. I'm not saying everywhere, but just it's fresher. It, it is. You're it feels right. different. Yeah, like listen, I I had some great food. coffee. Is unbelievable. Eh, I don't know about that. Oh, it's a little strong for me. Oh, it's good. I can't do that. I get. But when I was in Italy, just for that race, we had some great meals. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, did you have some good meals in Italy? Yeah. I bet, dude. Yeah. How long was the dinner? It's four and a half hours. Yeah, <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> and I vent my race deck rant. Was the, about the length of the meal and, oh. and wash bays and all these strange. When I was with there. KTM, we'd go there and test a lot. And our dinners, we would be done. We start dinner at nine, yeah. right? They're late dinners yeah. there, yeah. and you're done at midnight or something. And they get up, 
balls early to go test. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't do that. I got to sleep at some yeah. point. Uh, so the rake trail and offset uh, article, it's tough for me because it's weird because sometimes when you go out on offset, you have more stability. And it always m was odd to me that when you increase offset, you're decreasing trail, which in theory should help you corner better and get more feel in the corner because it makes the tire feel heavier in corner. You have more contact patch, I feel like. So uh, I wrote this article to kind of discuss it, what it does, mm -hmm. and the feeling that I get as a rider because I've talked to engineers and people that are smarter than me, and they kind of like told me some things. I'm like, this would be really good for the consumer to read. And I don't even know if it's going to help you or make you more confused. But Right. I read it. Yeah, and did it help you, or just like, um, or you already knew it? I knew it, but I did think to myself, wait, I had to read some things twice. Yeah, and I'm like, I think people aren't going to get that. Really? Yeah, it's but, just it's confusing because I'll come back and talk to engineers when I'm testing. I'm like, here, yeah. here's what I feel, and they're like, okay, and I go, but in, in theory, on paper, with your schematics, and I'm looking at it, I should feel the opposite. But there's so many moving parts with a motocross sure. machine. Yep. That sometimes what you see on the drawing doesn't always correlate with the rider. Well, and you think about like you like you said you're increasing your contact patch, raking it in, increasing yeah. your contact patch, putting more weight on the front end. So, yes, you would think corner better, right? Right? But yes, not always. Sometimes not you're always. you're not able to get in and out. Now you're playing with fork height? Correct. You're going back to fork height now and I mean offset to me There's so many variables. There is. And offset to me was always an easy way to try something fast. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just like whoop, yep, take yep. It off. and then just hey, is this the direction we want to go? Okay, we want to go out. Let's go out another way. But right. We know this offset works. It's kind of what I remember from testing. The first uh, person I talked to about this was Dubok. Yeah. Which happy birthday to Doug. I was like confused because I'm like, well, why am I feeling this? And he's like, ah, and he's explaining it to me. I'm like, God, it's so confusing. Yeah. And I don't even know if the average rider gives a shit. Because it, I think all they care about is just feeling the bike, and that's it. You know, at some teams, I think Yamaha was one of them. They they were just like, "Look, we are going to run our forks, you know, way down, um, supercross, motocross, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we're going to run the forks down. We're going to run the rear wheel here. Okay. And they I had assume, a measurement, right? Yeah, and yeah. I assume they got that from uh, uh, Japan mm -hmm. about how the maybe how everything works. The geometry of the, geometry the frame, of the bike. right? Yeah. So then now you have your rear wheel position and you have your fork height position, mm -hmm. and that's never moving. That's never changging. Mm -hmm. And now to turn, to ride a preference, you start doing rake and, Correct. and all of that. But the height of forks and the rear wheel stay exactly where they want it. And they adjust the other pieces. And they adjust all the other pieces. Yep. So that makes sense. Also, yep. so the next article I'm going to do is I always talk about the measurement from – the swing arm pivot to the center of the axle. Mm -hmm. there, that is an important measurement. Phil gets all upset when I talk about this because, you know, he is, I don't tell anybody about that. But we, all these guys want to know what the factory bikes are in that measurement. So I'm trying to work and work through some bikes where in the production world where I find that measurement where that wheel needs to be placed to make the bike feel the best. So I'm working on that now. Yeah. So – in 2025, I'm going to have a measurement for each bike that I'm going to try to get people in and a, and a variance within yeah. five to seven millimeters if you care enough about that where yeah. your bike's going to feel well, the best. The factories care enough about it. Right. You know, but they, the consumer world, it's 50-50. Some yeah. people don't give a shit. Some techie guys do. But yeah. that's what I'm working on because no other media really talks about that measurement, yeah. and I'm going to try to bring some of that out. I never really – and even at KTM with the PDS stuff, we had measurements we had to make and make the bikes – and I never really delved into, like, why. I just assumed someone much smarter than me in Austria or, J or Japan was like, like I said, this is where the full chrome is. This is how the bike works the best. Mm -hmm. And work everything around that. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And, and what's weird is for the consumer, what I test, like in the production world, you have to make a wide variance to please a lot of p different type of people yeah. right or so it's, to it's just not one guy yeah, yeah, one yeah. track right so and, you know like when i was a when i was a local racer uh oh i got a tight arena cross forks all the way to the handlebars yeah well that doesn't you know right. that's what you do just to help you there but you would never do that on a factory team you would change the rake now right you know? so yeah it's engine it's interesting to talk to engineers about this kind of thing because they don't have as much rider feeling mm-hmm but as you learn more on their side, it helps you when you ride, I feel like. 
So I like to learn more from the mathematical side of engineering, like on all of these mm -hmm. measurements, because it's just, it's kind of cool. And yeah. if you look at every bike, because sometimes they'll have all the measurements from every bike, there's a variance that all of the manufacturers, there's a window that they all stay in. They don't go outside of this window. Yeah. So. And how do you wonder how they develop that window? Huh? Like exactly. That's, yeah, that's interesting, and, right? But it's crazy. Uh, I was with an, with one, of, I can't mention his name, but smart guy. He's been around for years. Dave Arnold. No, it wasn't Dave. But a guy like Dave, right? Probably was Dave. No, no, it wasn't. I would tell you if it was. It wasn't Dave. No. He, he has those measurements from 30 years ago up until now, and you can see how the measurements have evolved. Like, all of those things have yeah, changed yeah. so right, much right. over the years. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Huh. Yeah, it's, it's, they all go to one way. Yeah. And all of them do it. Yeah. So, like, how does that happen? Right. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe one bike comes out with something, and it's a class leader in the magazines or whatever, and everybody's yeah. like, oh, let's buy that and well, measure it. And each manufacturer, people probably know this, but each manufacturer buys all the other brands' bikes, yeah. and they use them for baseline testing. Yeah. Hey, where are we at in relation to this bike? Yeah. They all do it. Right. So. Um, absolutely. By the way, um, it's been a little while, but Eric Kripa passed away. Uh, you knew him pretty well. I, yep. I did an article on Racer X. He was a... First, he was a race team mechanic for Husqvarna. Then he was a race team mechanic for Honda. Then he became a production guy. Then a mag media guy. Mm -hmm. Eric Kripa did a lot of things he in did. the industry. Yeah, and he was uh, he was just quirky enough that I liked him a lot because yeah. he wasn't just the normal guy. Yeah, I only talked to him a few times. I didn't know him. Yeah. He was always interesting to me. We talked more about other things than dirt bikes, yeah. but when we talked about dirt bikes, he was always like a mad scientist. That's what I talked to him about, especially when it was the world of carburetors. Yep. Like he Honda sucked early two thousands for jetting. It was horrible. And he knew how to jet a CR125 and a 250 really good. Yeah. And he was just fun to be around. He was a hardworking guy. He was single, so we talked about girls and his dating. It was just he was a super fun dude to be around. Uh, I tried to set him up with Heather's mom yeah, at one time. Yeah, he said that, yeah. Heather's mom went out with him one time. <laughs> uh, also, by the way, Barnacle <laughs> Barb. I uh, I heard uh, tonight. I got news that Larry Huffman passed away. No. Yeah, Larry Huffman. Fuck. Yeah, he's, he's actually my voicemail. No way. Larry, yeah. Old announcer from the 80s and yeah. 90s. Voice of Supercross forever. So. Damn. R.I.P. Larry. Man. Yeah, yeah good uh, guy. What did he pass from? Do uh, we know? I don't know. I don't Man. know. But, uh, yeah, Larry was, Larry was awesome. Um, I did a few podcasts with him. Search him back out. In that was an icon. Yeah, absolutely. Rocky Ridge Trucks, your ultimate off-road vehicle capable of getting down and dirty. They've been a rich history. They've been building custom vehicles since 1983. Proudly partnering with the finest OEMs, including Chevrolet, GMC, Ford, Jeep, Nissan, and Ram. Each vehicle is easily financed through your local dealership, and best of all, retains a factory warranty. And uh, so say, say goodbye to the hassles of do-it-yourself customization. RockyRidgeTrucks.com. Join the Built for the Bold family. RockyRidgeTrucks.com. Thank you to those guys. Uh, and uh, check it out, man, if you're in the mood for a custom truck that retains a factory warranty. Christian, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, Steve. How's it going? Good. What's up? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask. Uh, I don't think Texas passes were out of line on Hunter Lawrence, but pretty aggressive. Do you think he was riding the line a little too much? Like, because there were a couple times where I thought they were almost going to hit, and also for Hunter could possibly retaliate, maybe? I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Uh, I, didn't see, I didn't see anything. I saw some uh, good racing. It was yeah. some aggressive yeah. racing, but I think all, all of them knew that they're yeah. pretty safe with one another, you know? Yeah, I thought Chase had an opening and sent it, you know, like yeah. really gassed it and got in there. Hunter so. tried to get him back aggressive, yeah. too, but he just yeah. didn't get in no, there. No, I, I didn't see a problem, man. I really didn't. Okay. I, I guess it's just kind of the nature of the track. It just seems like you had to make a quick cut to make the pass stick. Yeah, sure, um, sure. Uh, if you don't mind, do you guys know when A-Rate, are, are you guys going to have him back in the studio? Or? Um, Fuck my ass. Yeah, we need to. We need to get him up here. Yeah, uh, yeah I got no 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 problems with A-Rate or nothing. So I'm Trying to make babies right now, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Uh, I'll work on that, Christian. All right? Okay, yeah. It's just been a while, and I hear him on the podcast, uh, the Swap Moto one. Yeah. I'm like, I wonder if something happened there, but it'd, it'd be good to hear him in the studio. Yeah, for sure, man. I'll what work about on Seven it. Deuce Deuce? Thank you. Thank can you. we get Seven Deuce Deuce back in? Yeah, yeah we yeah. can. Yeah, we can get Seven Deuce Deuce back in. I think he's busy with the monster truck stuff. I think he would uh, love to be back in here. I texted him a little while ago. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, maybe like a month Because I called him, and he's like, Steve, don't call me back anymore. That's what he said. I'm just telling you what he call, said. He's never, he hasn't called me. So there's no, did he say he text said, I don't know. or call? Text or call. He said you de didn't get back to him. That's not true. And I feel like, I go, that's not like Steve. No, it's not true. So I think he'd want to come back up and talk. Uh, no, I'd, I'd like to. Here's the thing. 
if you if any of these guys ever text me and they're like, hey man, can I come on the show? Mm-hmm. I'm more than happy to get them on the show. I'm looking for co-hosts a lot of times, and I'm more than happy to do it. But I don't like, hey, you want to come co-host? Like, I, right. I, I, I don't know. Like, cause well, then, I think it's you're in a like, weird spot because I don't think those guys are going to be like, hey, do you need a co-host? Because it makes them feel like I'm but, asking to get on the show. But that's fine. Okay. All these guys, they're my friends. They have open invites. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine. Like, I don't know. I just, yeah. Okay. You well, know? there you go. If you hear I mean, it, seven deuce deuce. They're not. They're not like pro racers anymore. Like, if they want to come on, they come on. Right. You know. I don't know. Maybe some of them. Sometimes those guys are used to everyone going after them for a long time. Yeah, maybe because they used to race, right? And, and they would get. People, yeah. People doing that. Um, all right, buddy. Motorsport.com. Tweet at Talon segment. Let's do this. Motorsport.com. No, <laughs> oh, that's my mom. It's the Motorsport.com tweets at Talon segment. Motorsport.com, OEM and Aftermarket Parts. Great, guys. Go through the banner on Pulp Mex to help us out. Uh, free shipping on everything over 69 or 79 bucks or something. 69. 69. Se- 79. 79. So, 79. Sorry, <laughs> sorry gearhead. Uh, they got the, the purple limited rental bars in stock as well at Motorsport.com, OEM and Aftermarket Parts. And, uh, yeah, Talon, you got, you got a review, a good review the other day from, from a customer? I have a bunch of good reviews, Steven. Yeah, I find that hard to believe. What's I think I, I think I'm sitting at like a 4.8 average. You get rated? Yeah, we no. just started it recently, but Ooh. yeah, now every contact we have gets a review email. Basically, they can fill out. Is it um? Is it like Uber? Uber? But yeah. Um, probably probably not like Uber. But do you get extra cashish if you're good? No. No, oh, that sucks. We yeah. just we just get to keep our jobs if we're good. Got it. Uh, <laughs> at at uh, Pop Mech Show on Twitter, and these are the best <laughs> ones uh of the night, and the talent picks them up. All right, uh, do it for Dale, for Kiefer. Looking to improve the stink bugging on my 24KX250. Performance link, any suggestions? Hmm. Uh, there's a lot of variables here. Stink bug effect could be just sag measurement where you're at. Uh, 105 is about where you need to be. If you still feel stink bug, you can try dropping your fork, which we do on this bike. We go to about 2 millimeter fork height. Um, if not, yes, uh, linkage does help this. Pro circuit, right engineering. They have linkages for this that helps, but you will have to uh, basically change your shock spring if you go to some of these links. So Shane sent in an email. Is this the same Shane? He said, Kiefer, Kiefer tonight on the show told me to ask. Uh, a few aftermarket companies that come with different rising rate uh, cranks and pull rod mm-hmm. combos. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the rear shocks for different OEM bikes. I believe their goals are all to switch up to progressive rising rate to improve on the progressive rising rate that is already there in some way? Question mark. My question are, which OEMs have progressive rising rate linkages and why would an OEM always go to the route of a progressive rear? I don't know all of the ones that do the progressive rising rate, but not all of them do. So it just depends. I know, just for example, for a Yamaha, they design their linkage to prevent anti-squat. KTM is kind of the same way, but when you ride them both, KTM always feels ass in low. So most of the time, aftermarket suspension companies either give you a longer shock shaft for the KTM or they design a linkage to raise the rear up. On the Yamahas, I like to feel my ass in a little bit lower because I feel like the shock is so stiff and it overpowers the fork. Um, I feel like it dives and it feels ass end high all the time, so I want to drop that rear. So I haven't tried a n- linkage on the new generation Yamaha. I feel like some guys are just starting to come out with them. So is it a, a matter of change, a two of changing it to progressive spring, or I don't even know if people do progressive springs anymore. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I haven't seen them. All right. At least not in the motocross world. I haven't seen them. That was really popular back. Yeah. Two thousands. <laughs> yeah, early two yeah. thousands. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jimmy G, for you, Steve. Evan Ferry went 22-24 over the weekend. Is he getting better, and could you resurrect his career like you did Timmy if you took over? Mm, 1999, Timmy. That was a good year for him. Mm. Uh, he was Evan was in points both motos and fell, I think, both motos. Uh, no, he's definitely gotten better. Look at where he was from Paula. So Yeah, it's getting better. Uh, I know they figured out some health stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be right at the Lawrence's, I believe. I soon. heard he's already there. Oh, he's already there, yeah. yep. So, um, yeah, getting better. Getting better. Look, look at. It's gonna take a little bit. He just started. <laughs> yeah. Like, he just started. Yeah. Yeah. Um. 
This one was sound testing. We answered that one. Uh, Joe 27. Truman said that Levi had some stuff going on in the fantasy pod and that he should be better come Southwick. Do you know what those problems were? No, I don't. I don't know what Dan was talking about. Um, Griffin Malone. Is there something we can do to give the mechanics more so they aren't fighting over space and hitting each other with pit boards? Also, who's winning that fight? Is it really a fight, though? I I got a bunch of DMs about this. Yeah, who cares? Mechanics are slapping pit boards other way. Like, I, it's stupid. It, it, Most of those guys know each other. Like, yeah, it's not it's and, not a and, brawl down there. No, and it happens. Like, sometimes you'll say to the guy, "Hey, you go high, I go low." Right. You know, like because your riders are battling each other, or whatever. Um, I saw that. Yeah, who, who Dolph and, and uh, was it Christian? Who was the Honda guy? Was it, Christian? Uh, was it Joe's guy? It was Joe's guy and oh yeah, Joe's guy. Yeah, it wasn't Christian. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know what his name is. I I remember his name. I'll think of it in a minute. Okay, but all right. Here's the deal on that too. Like, I feel like half the time the riders ain't looking over there anyway, so no. it's not that important. No. Uh, Josh St. Clair, ninety nine. Uh, based off the Deeg's riding, do you think he's one of the elite guys with Chase Hunter and Jet when he moves up? And how do you think he would do if he moved up now? Oh come here on! Go. Yeah, here we go. He's gonna be good. Yes. Like if he let's just let's let's play the game. I'll play. I'll play along. He goes up to four fifty for a red bud. He's top five. Yeah. He's top five. Yeah, probably. So Yeah, Justin Cooper speeds. Justin Cooper speeds. Yeah. Yeah. If if he doesn't wad <laughs> That's right. Because he I don't know if he can get away with some of the shit he can on that four fifty like yeah. he does on the two fifty. Right, but I'm sure he'll learn. Right. He's an elite rider and he's top five right now. So is he gonna beat Jet? I don't know, man. No, he's not beating Jet. Eh. Come on. Not now, but I'm saying he, oh, he oh, could. Oh, oh, I'm not saying now. I thought you meant, well, you said Red Bud. I'm just saying I painted the pitcher, top five, okay. but later on, I think he could beat Jet. Sure, okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, MTX Braking, great mountain bike pads, uh, whether you are road biking or mountain biking. They've got red and gold compounds. they got e-bike stuff. For, I like the e-bikes. I like the red pound, the red compound in e-bikes make your mountain bike brakes better more power better modulation inspired by motocross and power sports they brought better braking tech into brake pads for mountain and road bikes mtxbraking.com code pulpamex to save mtxbraking.com available over 800 power sports dealers nationwide you're getting stronger and you're skinnier so are you ever just going to go to a normal road bike not an e-road bike yes i'm trying to work on that okay yeah yeah cool but i don't turn mine on much so then i, no, feel I know like but you're then you got it yeah, but then I'm like, look at me grinding on an e-bike with it turned off. But knowing that you have it is what I don't want you to have. <laughs> oh, well, okay. So the other day, 12 mile per hour wins. 12? Yeah. That's nothing. You're fine. Really? Yeah, you got to go. Oh, I turned it on. You did? Oh, yeah. No. I'm like, dude, head power. wins. 12, 12 in the head. Yeah, 12. 12 in the head. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't. Look, at it's, nah, 12, not that, not that bad. What? No, you gotta get twenty. Then we're talking. Dude, yeah. I was struggling. So, Where were you at? Red Rocks area? No, out here, just oh, okay. left from the house. But so I turned it on. Yeah. So I do it all heart rate, right? So yeah. I'm just like, I got twelve in the head. Yep. And I'm like, dude, I'm one one sixty, one fifty five. Okay. What's I, your max? I'm dying. Uh, one eighty or whatever. Okay. I'm dying. So. You turned it on eco. Beep. Eco. <laughs> brought it right down to like one thirty. Okay. Nice little ride. But so why like, don't you just? We're gonna grind. You're going to be 160 the rest of the way home. That's Dude. what we're going to do. Yeah, but this is just when I started. Okay. So, like, I had a long way to go Right. to, to already start. But doing. I feel like you're there now where you can do that on I a think, normal I bike. I think that'll just ruin me. It will. But oh. that's the part of what you need. Oh. You need that suffer. I got to suffer. Okay. I, you know. Yeah. But. You know how many comments I get on your physique nowadays? Like, people come to me. And say, Who's coming to you? Just like, people in like general. Just, like, what, just, uh, just in, say, in hey, Spain? Steve's were looking they good. In Spain? Steve. in Spain they did? The start guys were. They, yeah. they, they, <laughs> yeah. 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 they were big on that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Leave me alone. Listen. Leave I, me alone. Here's the thing. Don't eat and bicycle every day. Okay. This is your, this is your troll training this tip. fucking great. <laughs> so don't eat. So you're telling starve yourself and then go bicycle? What are you, what are you saying? Uh, no, just don't eat like nearly as much as you used to. That, that's, that's facts. So today, okay. for example, today, yeah. didn't have anything in the morning. No breakfast. No breakfast. Okay. Coffee. Yep. Went on a bicycle ride. Yep. Okay. Yep. Came back. Pookie had the day off. Okay. She said, 
I want Chick Fil A for lunch. Okay. So I went and got Chick Fil A for lunch. What'd you get? I got the deluxe and some nuggies. Deluxe Sammy and a nuggie. Yep. Okay. Deluxe Sammy nuggie. Uh huh. Water to drink. Okay. And then that's it. And you're done for the day. Yeah. No. At dinner tonight, I had some a few French fries. Okay. Is your stomach growling? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So it's this fucked. is your commitment. You're just gonna. It's st- fucked. It's fucked. It's fucked. If you want to look good, you're gonna be miserable. <laughs> There's no other way to do it, especially when you're older like me. Like, like so I'm a little bit – people freak out like on no, me because I'll te- – you're, you're nothing. You, you're I don't eat almost all day because I'll test, and they're like, you hungry? I'm like, I'm, not, I'm good. I don't need anything. And they're like, dude, I don't know how you fucking do it. I'm like, so I don't really eat until I get home. I might have like a bar, a protein shake during the day. So you will never really eat like – I can't eat while I test because I feel weighted down. I'm just like, eh. Okay. So I'll just graze a little bit on like bars or protein shakes and stuff like that. Okay. But I'm just saying, people are coming to me and saying, I, "Who are these people?" Just in general, fans. They just they just, just fans. They love to see what you're doing. Lewis got a big kick out of it in Italy because a lot of people said. How that. many people knew Pulp in Italy, like in the MXGP world? Oh, a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like foreigners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, um, Harup. 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 Yep. Yeah. Never met me before. Okay. I never met him before. Yeah. He's like, oh, you've lost a lot of weight. So he follows. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I'm like, cool, man. Where's he from? Danish? He's a Danish? He's from Denmark? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, all right, man, cool. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. How, how far are we going? What? With the weight? What are we doing? Uh, yeah, I'm going to get down to 140, 130. <laughs> <laughs> be great. Fuck. Pretty soon he's just gonna not eat it all. DNR over here, it back. DNR. dick and ribs. Oh, yeah. Was it? No, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. But how much do you weigh now? I, I'd rather not. You know. Oh. What? Let's. Everything's out in the open. Besides that fucking number. Let me get to the number and then I'll say. What do you mean? Let get me to the number. So you have a number in mind? Kinda. What's the fucking number? I'd like to get to two hundred. Okay. Where are we at? Just we're at. We're not. We're above that. Okay. All right. You know who knows? My suspension guys know. Do they? Yeah, I had to tell them. You know. So your factory guys yeah, know. My, my factory guys <laughs> know my way. So we we can connect after the show. This is what I did for ten years, Steve. What? Fitness, He's fitness a trainer? nutrition coach. Yep. Oh. There you go. You got an inside line. Yeah, but the problem is, is I, I I can't have any nutrition. I can't eat anything. No, that's false, right? That's false. Yes. Thank you. Because you got to eat to kick your metabolism going, right? If you don't eat, that's not good. You know, it's, you know what you're going to be called? Skinny fat. <laughs> really? That's that, what Amart called me. Amart called you that? Amart called me skinny fat. You're not. You're because I'm not shredded like Travis. Yeah. But like I have some loose skin. I'm getting older, right? But I'm skinny. He's like, oh, yeah, you're skinny fat. I'm like, what? You're not fat at all. There's nothing about oh, it. Oh, no. I'm, Amart said I'm skinny fat. Oh, wow. So that's what's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to be skinny fat. Okay. You're never going to lose the title. Hey, as long as he's got skinny in there, he's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, right? All right, Aiden Irvin won while we're on topic. Steve, would you rather do your favorite EMTB loop on an acoustic or ride Glen Helen for 30 plus 2 on your 1990 YZ? <laughs> Fuck that thing. No, I'd rather ride 30 plus 2 on the 90. Oh, we got to do that sometime what, again. Huh? Figure it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving that 85 back. It's sitting in uh, my shop. Well, no, don't. We need to do it again. The yeah. public needs to, needs to know about it. After Loretta's. Fuck. Hey, July's fucked. Dude, you said June was fucked. It's, <laughs> it's all fucked, dude. You said June's fucked. It's so bad. It's so busy. Unbelievable. FMIP 222. No, I didn't want to hear it. I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I'll do it. Directly I, towards me. I don't even know what he said, but I'm out. I think you're going to be surprised. The 450cc class is extremely tight with the top three separated by a mere three points as we approach the mid-season mark. Given Hunter's consistency, Chase's second moto surges, and the uncertainty of the condition of Jet's shoulder, do you and Chris have any updates on Life Swap? <laughs> there it is. It's a zang. Uh, no updates. But we're going to work on the, uh, <laughs> we're gonna work on the, the 1v1 part two. Yeah. So, you know? Since he thinks I cheated. You did. You, you, you jumped the start. Dude, you're not going to beat not, me. Now, we're not going to do on the new 125. We don't need to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's a wrap right, there. Okay. Yeah. It's still on the 80 and the, the 90. You got to get that thing fixed. It's done. What do you mean? It's done. So what was it? Okay, yeah. Tell everybody. Since I'm a fucking cheater, go ahead. 
Well, I didn't. It wasn't something I necessarily did. What was it? It looks like the power valve wasn't snapping open as much. It looked like it was moving. It was working, but not like what it should have. <laughs> so. Yeah, f- it's basically so, it so didn't fucking work. It did. It was working. Oh. I got video of it. I have video of it. I'll show you on video after the show of it working. Just not like what it should work. We don't think. Did Berluti do this? Yes. And okay. So I'm going to talk to Berluti because I feel like I get the answer from him. Talk to Berlut. So at my own time and effort, okay. I investigated it. Uh-huh. I looked into it, fixed it, okay, ready to go. So not only did I beat you, but I had handicap as well. You didn't beat me. I beat you on the 90. No, no. Overall, I'm talking oh, about. Oh, okay. Well, you jumped the start on the 80. Overall, I beat yeah. you. But yet, handicap YZ 125, when I said, hey, the 85 is faster, mm-hmm. and that holds to be true because of that power valve on the 125. You know what? There's, there was no ill intent here. There was no cheating on my part like you. Uh, we will have this again, and we will see. So this must have been this. When we did the video for Racer X, it had to have been fucked then, too, because it was dog turd then. <clears throat> again, I didn't ride the bike. I didn't have the cover off. But I told you. It may have not been working properly. Okay. But I just want to let you know, mm-hmm. and we're, we're clear on this. Yeah. I told you. On the Racer X video, it's which slow. it yeah. was something's up and it slows dog shit. Yep. Okay. All right. Chase Turfworks, uh, if you're Lars, what advice do you give Joe Shimoda to help him get out of this pattern? I don't know. I don't think Lars thinks there's a problem. So he won a moto. <laughs> yeah, I saw the tweet. That. Was he really mad at you or no? Yeah, he was. He was. Because <laughs> he, Joe, I didn't even realize Joe qualified 24th. Oh, so, shit. So I don't know what happened. Who knows? Yeah. Didn't get a clear lap. So Lars thought that that's why I said, hey, Joe's riding really well. Oh, sarcasm. Got it. Which I've been known to. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like, like, I get it. Yeah. But I honestly, I picked him in fantasy. So when he was 35th after lap one, I was like, fuck my life. Right. And then, dude, he was on it, ripping through guys. And I sent the text, Joe's riding really well. What was his response? He didn't respond at all because okay. he was in the middle of the moto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he responded, you're a dick. Uh-huh. And I'm like, what? And then I put it all together. It was... Th- he thought it was from earlier at the 24th qual, <laughs> and I so I took the timestamps yep. of the tweet and the moto and said, "Look," or the text yeah. and the moto. I said, "Look," the, the text was sent mid moto when he yep. was ripping through the pack. Yep. Do you think JT and Weech had my back? No, they buried me. <laughs> but sometimes I wonder when you tweet some of these guys that are, are managers or riders, and the race is going on, they just look at their phone going, "Mother, like." Steve's yeah, probably. Texting me yeah, probably. Right yeah. Like you text Christian all the time, and he's such a nice dude. Like on race day, he'll text you back. Yeah, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, don't text back. What? what why you, not? I don't know. What, are we like, saving lives here? We we got uh, brain cancer. Like, curing brain cancer. Hey man, can you go to the whoops any better? That's what the shit that you send <laughs> send these guys. And I'm like, gosh, dang. Yeah. It's brutal. It's not brutal. It's funny. Ha ha. I know, but some of these guys, even though they know you're joking, yeah. in the back of their head, are going. Yeah, it's probably, I need to do something about that. <laughs> uh, Z with Snooski 43, Chris with a CH. Don't know who that is. Clip him. When will you be testing the Mako 360 bar mounts? I switched from twin walls to a fat bar, and the 360 bar mounts, it made a huge difference for me. I've been getting a lot of people that what I need are, to test this thing. What, what is it? It's just a bar mount made by Mako, M-A-K-O. Mako Brako? Is it, is it but Mako? Yeah, is it, M-A-K-O. Yeah. But they're like rubber mounted. Right. right? But I've seen them and never used uh, them. They're different looking? Rubber mounted. Bar mounts? Wow, that's... No, but no, the way they're, it's... they're it's, different. Yeah, they're different. So I saw it's a like picture a of them. It's a four-post thing? Uh, okay. No, it's almost like a... How do you spell it? I'm sending it to you. M-A-K-O 360. So I... Uh, I don't want my bars to rotate 360. Look at how, these, how this works for me is like I can't test everything... So if a company reaches out to me and says, hey, Chris, would you like to test our stuff? 95% of the time, I will agree and test it. So they have not reached out to me. Granted, I have not reached out to them, but I have got enough people that have hit me up over the past year or so. It says I should try it, so maybe I bucks. should. 400 bucks. Right. 
they're big in off road. I know. I think the KTM they might not. I don't know, but I know a lot of off road guys use them. Okay, so there's there's a dampener that sits inside the bar, okay. inside the mount. Okay. You know I, what I'm saying? No, I don't. No, you have to show me. Well, so. I can't flip okay. this monitor. So it's just your bar. You wrap. It's like it's like a, like this, right? Yeah, you wrap a, a collar around your bar Correct. and you put the bar inside the mount. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, I'd love to test it. I haven't tested it yet, but I will test it, and uh, yeah, we'll do it. There's some bikes that actually could, like the KX450 is a vibrating son of a bitch. So if this helps some of vibration, I would love it. KTM vibrates. I would love some of that. So that's yeah. arm pump. It says. Yeah. Well, that's a tagline for a I lot know, of things right? here. So. What about those? What about the, 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 the less arm pump? The <laughs> fucking the, the, the screw. Do you things. remember the Instagram I did back in the day? No. To what was that guy that had that? I don't know. He was a nut bar. I took a, a C clamp. Oh yeah. And I told I walked in the house. And I'm like, oh, oh. And she's like, oh, let me help you. And I, she put the C clamp on. I'm like, oh, that's so much better. And the guy got really pissed <laughs> off at me. <laughs> Those kind of came and went, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Randy RGR88. Disagree if you wish. Top three keeping it real interviewers: Chase Sexton, Jet Lawrence, Hayden Deegan. No, that's not bad. Yeah, they're all yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, Blair parked. Kiefer is JT a five. Uh, no, JT's not a five. I think JT's a uh, he's he's like a seven or eight. Is this is this a, a uh, looks thing or is this I, I would, I'm, that's what I'm going off of? Well, I was kind of thinking the energy like Steve's a five. Right, like that's what I was thinking. Oh yeah, I, well, in energy wise, yes, he's always a five. But looks wise, he's better looking dude. He's a good looking dude. Um. I'm a five, right? Yeah. Like, you know. No, but here's the deal. Most of the time, you're a five, but there are some times where you're you're spunked up, and I like that. I like that, Steve. Okay, thank you, man. Yeah. Uh, Ranham 84. I'm still not whipping my dick out. Why not? I'm just not into that. I don't want to play that game one time where and everybody's going to – I'm already going to get a bunch of shit for this, but I don't care. It'd be funny. Funny. Okay, this is not serious, but funny – to have a bunch of your friends' dicks, pictures of them, right? It'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, be, I mean, I'm already dying. <laughs> right? I'm already dying. Just take a picture. Let's say you take a picture you, of your are junk. Are you Eddie Murphy, like back <laughs> in the day? Ha, ha, ha. Take a picture, picture of your junk. Yeah. Take a headshot. You, yeah. And you got to match them up. Yeah. Guess, guess who's cock to the face. That'd be fun. <laughs> no, Nick, do you have any thoughts on this? Welcome uh, to the show, by the way. I, I'm in. I'm in. Oh, you're Thank in. you. Thank you, yeah, Nick. I, well, I, I feel like I, I scared you off there with the church <laughs> you thing. You did but scare yeah, me off a little bit. <laughs> I had answers ready for you, man. You I, was, I was ready for ball. it. It would just be funny. Cause you no, I don't think could so. Could you imagine if some dude had a hanger, like a dog? I don't think they yeah, Greg, could you imagine? The main right. Event. And then you'd have to like, dude, who has that thing? Like, that is a shaft. And then it's some dude you would never know. Okay. The cock they have there is just amazing. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, Ranham 84, unlikely, but what if Jets MRI comes back horrible and he's out? Who do you guys have for the 450 title? I think I'd go Hunter just because Sexton seems up and down. Yeah, I agree. Yep. But, um, but Hunter, I think we're when we talked about this earlier, Hunter has a lot of speed. He doesn't have chase speed. You don't think? No, we just you agreed uh, earlier. I do agree, but I'm like, I, I don't think he has the length of speed. I think his raw speed initially is as good, but I don't think deep into the moto it's not as good. I don't know. It's my it's my okay. thing. Sugar Shane seventy nine. Uh, regardless of technology or era, who is the best person you have seen in starts? Life on the line. Who would you bet to get a whole shot? Alessi for me. What was what, read the question one more time? Regardless of technology or era, who is the best person you have seen in starts? Your life is on the line. Who do you bet on to get a whole shot? Prado. Prado would work Alessi on starts, I feel like. Really? Dude. Prime Mike Alessi? Prime Prado? I mm. mean, he's great. Mm. Okay. Jut 127, what's a worst look? Vial throwing away another moto win or Nick Romano fading into oblivion? Rough for Romano right now. Whew. He's got to be hating life. He went backwards. Oh, yeah. He's come backwards a lot this year. Um, yeah. Is he riding next year? Nothing? Not there, I don't think. But that's, I mean, 
I think I would hire him, wouldn't you? Club? Sure. I don't know. You know what I heard today? A groomer? The rumor? The groomer? <laughs> and the groomers? Ru- no, it can't. Never mind. Okay. No, no. No, no, because it can't be true. Okay, I didn't say it. I heard Thrasher to beta, but Thrasher has a deal. No, yeah, Thrasher, that's, that's false. Yeah, he's got a deal. Yeah. Right, so th- yeah. I, that's why, I, as soon as Do I said Do we know that, why Colt bailed? Just didn't like the buy. Okay. Yeah. So he's going to HEP. You know that? Yep. Okay. But, and Benny still has another year? Are yeah. We, he's yeah. good? Yeah, Benny's good. Benny's coming in the co-host. Oh, good. Yeah. How's his arm? Uh, Fucked. Still? Uh, well, I mean, he's back bicycling and stuff, but. But we're closed up and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we know that Beta is going to have another guy? Do we know who that guy could be? They're going to hire another guy. I don't know who it is. Okay. Uh, Phil's warm heart. Mm. Kiefer, coming from a two-stroke, how can I reduce engine braking on the 24YZ250F? Would an aftermarket ECU be better than the Yamaha tuner? And what engine modifications can be done without sacrificing reliability? Yes, uh, ECU, you know, if you want to spend some money, ECU is better than the Yamaha Power Tuner. The Yamaha Power Tuner app will work. I have a Kiefer Free Feeling map up on my website that actually takes a lot of that engine braking away. But if you want to further that along, then I feel like you have to go to a different ECU. But there is a map that will help that. It's up on my website, and you can check it out. Um, And what was the second part of the question? Uh, Best modifications without hurting uh reliability yeah vortex i mean it's to me i know i don't know much about the get on the yz 250f side i just right. i have tried the vortex and it's it's uh some of the best power gains you can do without sacrificing reliability and ECU, if you want to do ECU engine G- ECU gytr uh yeah because it's a plug and play system like gytr is really good about having a good durable like mod I know the criteria that they go through when they do these GYTR heads. Um, they put like, I don't know how many, 50 hours on these things, and they pass. So uh, you're going to get a little bit more torque. But honestly, like if you just want something quick, easy, and get some horsepower, then I would go to a Vortex or there is an Airbox mod. You can put a 450 Airbox or Air Boot on the 250, and you get a lot of that torque. Okay, but get is good too. Yeah, I have just haven't experienced. I know. On it. I, Dan wants you to try some more stuff. But uh, well, I don't, again, I don't know what's going on. Dan but doesn't send me nothing unless I call. So, Dan, if you're listening, send me whatever you got. I'll try. So, it. Dan said that the partnership with Honda, since because of the starts and because of the Lawrences, yeah, get stuff's really been. I bet. Yeah, and I think it's improved over the older stuff. I tried so. to get on my YZ450. Mm-hmm. Great, it was really good. Mm-hmm. So the stuff that I've tried mm-hmm. is good. I just haven't tried it on the 250. Honestly, yet. I've ridden your bike. And this might go for anything, but like an ECU and fuel mm-hmm. and like a good muffler. Yep. It's huge. It's pretty good. Yeah. Like for an average guy. Like yeah. that's a big difference. I've been trying to push Leave this along. Leave your motor alone yeah. and just do that. Do you remember when uh, Big James was quoted yeah. saying. Uh, ECU. Yeah. And yeah. there was like talking shit. And this was like a l- many years ago. Yeah. It's true. Like that's a huge difference. Like I'm, I'm my yeah. kid's not racing without the ECU and suspension. Like, right. it's facts. Yeah. All right. Future headlines from Sugar Shane 79. Storied Southwick spurned Sexton season or accomplished Australians annihilate Americans. I'll go uh, annihilate Americans. I, I mean, I think Sexton will be continue to be up and down. I don't think he said it uh, it, it spurs him on, right? Is the yeah, motto, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it spurs him on. I think Chase could go 3-1 again this weekend. Yeah. You know? Yep. So, uh, Donner MX 723, where does a healthy RJ stack up in the 250 championship? Yeah, right in the mix. I don't, he's not beating Deeks, but he's right there. He's VL, he's, he's high miss level, right? Like, RJ has a little bit of Deeks in him. He's a little bit of Deeks. He after does, that. but I don't think he's raw know, speed. No. Yeah. All right. Last one from Dirt Shart. Christopher, what's your predicted top three in the 25 450 shootouts? Ooh, 450 shootouts. Ooh, well, I don't even know what Yamaha has out yet. Because oh, just wait. You don't even know either. Oh, I know. Do you? Oh, yeah. Okay. I did hear that that will be out here in the next week or two, the information. So uh, We will have the new bikes for the Thunder Valley Ride Day. Yes, we in, will. In August. Are we driving together on that? Uh, I don't think we're driving together. Why? 
because Galdi's coming with me. Oh, so I just got fucked for a well, comedian. All but right, see where I'm hold at. on. We don't have enough room for... Three bikes? Yeah, we do. Your kid? Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. E-bikes? Because I'm, go, I'm going early to e-bike. Okay. The that's kid, fine. e-bikes, my dirt bike. So you're taking the Chevy? Yeah. Okay. And well, Galdi's going to I guess Greg and I are. I mean, we'll, we can drive together like a caravan. Oh, we can. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shootout. Let's let's do this. Let's go. Even though I don't know Yamaha, I'm gonna say, gosh. Yamaha won. It's gonna be close. Yep. Yamaha won. Yamaha KTM new frame, updated frame, I should say. And then I'm gonna say Honda third. Motorsport.com. Tweet a talent segment. Check it out. Motorsport.com. OEM and After Park is the number one online uh, ordering place in the world for online dirt bike parts. Uh, Chris Kiefer here in studio. All right. Um, Dude, this, are we early? We are. Hell yeah. What are we going to see at Red Bud? Give me three things we're going to see at Red Bud. Lot B. No, <laughs> I, I mean results on the track. <laughs> okay. Uh, results on the track. We're going to see... Joe Shimoda win an overall. Oh, wow. He is good at Red Bud. Uh-huh. He is. Uh, number two, we are going to see... Uh, Jet going to go 1-1. One, one. Okay. And last, I'll say... Deegan increases his lead even further. Okay. Over the competition. Over the competition. Even though Joe wins the overall. Yeah, I would. I would. I think I agree with that. All yeah. of that. Uh, maybe not Joe winning the overall. But everything else. Um, should be good. Should be a good race. Uh, and you're going? Yeah. Okay. Joey Savacci, Phil Nicoletti, Kyle Webster, Adam. Best interview tonight. I'm gonna say Joey. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, Nick, what do you think? Oh, hands down, AC. Okay. Yeah. Talent. I like Phil, and I apologize to apologize for talking shit about his starts last last time he was on. Did you? Yeah. I said, uh, he asked how the show was going, and oh, I was like, yeah, oh, we're yeah. just warming That's up. Right. We don't pull the whole shot and fade yeah, like yeah. he does. Yeah. I just like Joey telling uh, Phil he's going to crank his steering in a little bit. He's and Phil saying there. 15 years later. <laughs> <laughs> that whole conversation was good. That's yeah. great. But yeah. if you guys would have been there, uh, when he came up to me, he's like, hey, and he was really serious. Where was, was like, this at? Uh, in Georgia. Oh, okay. And uh, you're such a dick. What? You know what? Um, he's like, Came up to me, he's serious. And if you would have saw what he was wearing, like I, I thought he just ran a marathon. Because he's got these short shorts and he's got those Oakley blades on that cover the yeah. nose and shit. And he's got like a tank top. I'm like, you just got back done running? He's yeah. like, no, it's just what I'm wearing. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. And he's like, all right. And he's like looking around. Did you see? <laughs> Did you ride jet? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, what do you think? I go, the steering was really. St- okay, that's what I want to know about. Like, and he was just all in. Just on that it. was it. Yeah, yeah. He said he's, he said Osborne 15 videos. Yeah. So Zach's geeky like that, too. So oh, yeah. I, I can see them, too. Doing yeah. That. Just talking to each other. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Uh, great. Nick, uh, way to screw up the YouTube feed. First show by yourself. But, you know, it's all right. Good job, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. That yeah. was a rough one. Uh, no, thanks, man. Thank you. No, thank you guys. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Internet just didn't like us today. Yeah. Do we? Uh, so how often is he in? What's the deal? I don't know, man. Uh, here's the thing. Here's how. Here's how I work. Okay. Okay. You want to talk about how I work? Yeah. Here's how I work. I pay these guys up front oh. for the year. Got it. And then they don't show up. So whatever he's making, he's going to pay him. So it's coming out of Marx's deal. No. Oh no. 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 I'm just that nice of a guy. So you're adding to it. Moto 60 show, tits and marks paid up front. They ne- they show up half the time. And so when they don't, you're still paying another person? No. They have it so that the one guy does both. Oh. And then now I paid marks for the for the year. Okay. And then all of a sudden he's not in and Nick's here. Right. And then I got to pay Nick. How does that work? Shouldn't, I don't know, man. Shouldn't marks pay Nick? I mean... I guess I'm just that nice of well, a guy. Well, I can't talk shit. Did you pay Mark for the, our, our... Yeah. Okay. No, I did not. I did not either. Oh, no. I paid him. I thought you meant, did I pay him for you? I haven't paid Fantasy. Yeah. I, I need to pay him. You suck. You're terrible. Yeah, I'm bad. So, I don't know how much Nick's coming in, Nick. I, I don't know. Well, Mark's is... Yeah. Did, did, is, did. As much as you have me, and you okay. can pay me in t-shirts. I'm fine with that. No. No, too many people in the moto industry don't get paid money, so it always pisses me off, because even I got burned a few times. 
I, and I hate that. So everybody gets paid. We at Pulp, we pay. I didn't get paid for the longest time, remember? Remember I came in here and just said, nope, I'm good. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I wanted to prove my worth. Okay. Well, you did, and now you're on the payroll. All right. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks, Nick. Thanks yep. for coming in. Uh, Talon, good job. Hey, I uh, got paid in advance, and I still show up, so you're welcome. Good point, but I feel like only because Tits makes you. If you had someone else who could come in more often than Tits, I, I might stay home too. See, but. there we go. It's a great job at Pulp Mex. You get paid, and then you don't have to work. Hmm. It's fantastic. I've had friends be like, can't you just call in sick? And I was like, you, you can't really do that. It no. doesn't really work like that. No, it doesn't. I feel like it's, it's not an easy job, but it's an enjoyable job that why would you want to miss it? I like hanging out with everyone i mean right. we always have someone cool in studio and the worst part is driving up here but past that it's enjoyable yeah no i like it yeah well when you move up here <laughs> dark well, when are you gonna ride again dude i've been trying okay i've been trying all right because it's hot as balls now well yeah and the uh, my local track's not been open western's out western's been out the Mesquite's water, shut water down. truck water truck's mia there's always a water truck issue with the, something yeah water truck's <laughs> gone so it moves western's been shut what about dry lake bed uh track so what is it dry called? Dry Lake Bed. Uh, south. What's Gene, by the by the Magic Rocks. Sandy Valley. Oh, Sandy Valley. Yeah. Uh, yes, I was going to go there Friday and then just can't just kept living your life to go there. But <laughs> just kept living your life. Th- they are they are open at night now with the lights. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's something. That's let's go do a night night sesh. All right, let's do a night yeah. sesh. Yeah, I'm down. I asked uh, Sean from Decal to go. If he would have said he was in, I would have went. That'd he, have been cool. He couldn't go. You see Sean Jammin? There's an Instagram of him, him and the band jamming. Really? Yeah, it's pretty sick. Okay. Um, I so I don't know what I'm going to ride next. Um, I need to. I yeah. Wish you were going to Indiana. Would have been nice for Honda test. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Lars would. Lars was going to be there. Lawrence's are going to be there. It would have been fun to have you. It, it would have been planned if someone would plan it. We could have brought the show on the road like we did with yep. Triumph. Yep. Would have been great. Like we did with Triumph. Could have the Lawrence's on the show. Yep. But no one planned it. No one talked to me. Thanks, Ryan Dudak, for nothing. No. Ryan asked me. I asked you. You said no. No, but it was too late. Everything was everything was done. I couldn't. What's I, done? It was three weeks I ago. I got two dudes flying in for the Monday show. Who after, is it? TJ Albright and Devin Simonson. There you could have postponed their flight. Like you no, could've. no. It's everything's planned. They they took their time. To, like All right. This is riveting. It's a good point. Uh, well, just it's a wrapped up show, so I thought I just why not? Get a After dark? No. We're done? Uh, I, it's jet lag time. Wait, I got one. I got one. Let me read this one. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm here for the gangbang. I do miss After Dark. We had some really good times, you know? I look back on those times and I'm like, God, that was fun. We let loose. You know what, boys? We let loose back in the day, and I feel like we're a little rigid now. Our frames are a little tightened up. We're not loose. I feel like we're too corporate. E- we're too corporate find, over here at Pulp MX. Email now. That's oh, great. Let's go home. It wasn't even a bad one. Um, like it was. The uh, problem is with After Dark, it, it. They all come down to talk to your wife. Talk yeah, to your it's just like. Yeah, no, if uh, you actually asked sexual questions, like different things, I'd be down. But like. I don't know. It just seems all like the same stuff nowadays. I'm with you. Um, hold on. Let me just quickly look. This one was, it wasn't even bad. Look at that. I watched the Nickelback documentary. Anybody else watch that? Oh, no, no. I would watch it. Okay. What's it, is it, it, is it about like sort of them being hated or? Yeah, that too. But yeah. how they started oh, and yeah. like all that. Yeah, it was good. All right. Dude, I can't. Okay. Me. Okay. Watch out, Steve. Wait. Maybe it's Racer X email. Hold on. Oh, Racer X getting after dark questions. No, Big no. boobs. Oh. You have them printed out. <laughs> there you go. No, I don't. I don't know where it is. It's something about somebody uh, in high school. Their okay. wife was hot. Yeah. And now they're as an older guy. They're looking back at their photos, high school photos of their wives. Yeah. And is it okay to say that they're hot back then or something? Yes. You know. I it, it look at. I think my wife is still hot. Yeah. But I look at her when she was younger, and I see this whole other side that i remember that's fresh and new and young and you're like and god yeah and yeah. innocent and like just how fun it was back then and it, it's it's still great don't get me wrong but it's just it's a different time right when you're with someone 20 years yeah that luster has kind of worn off at some point you know so anyway okay uh brian stone by the way edwardjones.com uh Ed, brian stone's an old privateer made a bunch of main events 
Really fast rider. Sounds familiar. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah Missouri guy. Cowie guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cowie guy. Yeah. So uh, he is now a financial advisor, and uh, Brian Stone will help you. He will help you understand the impact of short-term events, how to prepare for the long term. Edward Jones gives you the tools for a reasoned, disciplined approach to investing. So uh, contact Brian Stone, 816-761-4066. Brian Stone, 816-761-4066. All right, thanks to Brian. Thanks, Brian. I can't find that email. I don't know. I kept it. I, it was a good question. Um, it's all good. We got we got the gist of it. Oh, here it is. In your face? What? Right in your face. That's what you're looking at? Yeah, I'm an idiot. Uh, idiot. Fuck my ass. Okay, ready? Yes, sir. My wife and I were cleaning out storage room and I came across some old photos of her from back in high school. She doesn't look much different these days, so I threw the question out to some of my friends. Are we as grown adults allowed to call the high school version of our wives hot? It seems more like an ethical question, even if you know that, even if you know that you from ten years ago would have thought she was hot. Does that make you a creep by acknowledging no. it? No. I the back and forth between my friends and I led to the conclusion that Kiefer needs to weigh in on this. No, it doesn't make you a creep. Like, look at when people say you're a creep, or that you just know what kind of person you are. Like, we have fun on the show. It's it's ha ha ha. Um, but I obviously know my audience when I'm out. I'm sure anybody that knows me knows that I'm different when I'm in public. Uh, but looking at older photos of your wife, young and innocent, is common for men because it was young, fresh, and new. Just kind of like what we said. I have a picture of Heather when she was just out of high school in my office. What about Pook in the T-tops with the fox gear yes. and the sports bra? Look at that. Look at that picture. Yeah. What is that? When you see that, what do you think of? I think about how I was faster than her old boyfriend. I knew Are you being serious? Yeah. Do you look at older photos of, of Pookie and be like, oh, my God, I'm, those were great times, like fun? No. Nothing. Because I think we're having fun now. It's fun yeah, yeah. Now. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, you're yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, doesn't yeah. mean that you're not right. having fun now. I'm right. just saying. But it's different when you first start dating, right? All these things you didn't know about your wife and you're getting to know her and all the things like your first kisses, your first everything. Like, it's just different. Yeah. No? No. I'm I think a, about that. I'm a five. Really? Yep. Like, I think about, like, dumb shit Heather and I used to do when we were younger, like, uh, sitting on the, the the driveway on on top of her car, looking at the stars, you know, talking. And you doing did these. that? Yeah, yeah. Dork. And we had the music on inside the, the yeah, it was cool. Okay. Uh, Sounds gay. And just, that's the kind of stuff I look at. So, no, we change as adults, and I think we get used to our spouses, and I sometimes we lose a little bit of that spark. And I think sometimes looking back at that, recreates the spark for current okay. times. All right. That's my thing. Okay, we'll look back on it. Why don't you ever have anything, like, to add? Because I'm a five. <sighs> That's it. You, anybody over here? You've been married eight years. Nick? Yeah, I, I think I uh, I think I kind of married the high school nerd. Okay. So she was a late bloomer for sure. Uh -huh. And, yeah, I mean, she was cute back in the day, but she wasn't, you know, she wasn't the class smoke show. She's smoke show, right? Thank now. you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Good job. I think if you're like friends with the person or you know, like if you know them now and you're seeing an old picture, you could be like, oh, you were you were hot back then. But you can't like if they have a high school age daughter, you can't be like, oh, well, you know, I don't know. Like if they're like older, you could, you could throw it back and be like, oh, yeah, you were like hot back then. Like in your situation, I think it works because you haven't been together that long. So you can look back at older photos and be like, dude, who's that girl? Right. Because you didn't know that girl. Right. Well, I did actually go to high school with her. Yeah, but did you know her, know her then? I didn't know her, but I knew who she was. Okay, did you know that guys that dated her? No, she didn't date anyone from her high school. She was smart. Did you ever get the batting order before you were with her? Uh, Yes, I know the complete list. You do? Yeah. Is it something that you had to know, or is it something that she told you? A little bit of both. I, I definitely I had asked, to know. but she, yeah, I'm more on like the I wanted to know. Right, I need to know. Not that I judged her or anything, but like I yeah, yeah. wanted to know. Yeah, exactly. Nick? We yeah we didn't start dating until I was like in my late twenties so at that point I didn't care you know as long as she's cool as long as she's down but you didn't care the batting order before no. you no okay no not at all Steve do you care no <laughs> Jesus no I uh, don't I don't I don't care yeah. all right let's go yeah. home then all right sounds good uh, thanks to uh, everybody for uh, watching and listening appreciate it thank you to Joey Savacci Phil Nicoletti uh, Kyle Webster Adam Cincerello, uh Kiefer thank you thank thanks you it's fun. Up. I'm glad uh, your time in Spain with the 450 Triumph was, was great. No, it's start. And Carmichael and Tedesco and everything else was great. Um, fantastic. Start. Um, when am I on again? I don't know. We need to figure that out. Okay.
Well, after Loretta's obviously probably. What? Yeah. Dude. It's it's literally a month away. Okay. That's ridiculous. Uh, thanks to Roto. Thanks to Swiss Corps. Thanks to Moser. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks to Marks. For what, though? Dude. For what? Dude. Dude. Marks. Dude. I, I, I'm being serious here. What? I'm going to ask a serious what? question. Are we getting an updated app at any time? Do you know if we're getting – this is a serious I, I question. I do not know. I do not okay, know. Okay, that's no. all I needed. Yeah, if yeah. you don't know, then, then tell me that. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks again, Nick. Thank you, Talon. Appreciate it. Thanks, Greg, for hanging in there. Thanks to Pookie as well. And, uh, yeah, next week, Devin Simonson, TJ Albright, Privateer Show. Should be fun. All right. These guys are going to be really funny. I'm looking forward to having them in. I don't know much about them. They're, they're good dudes? Yeah, good guys. Okay. And uh, should be great. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. See you next week. He's just in my ass. Wow. Not, not, well, Jesus. Oh, not in. Sorry. There's something I want to get off my chest. <laughs>